Well, over 15 million people own a copy of this game. Out of those 15 million, 50,000 register to play competitively. 1,000 played in this tournament online in the qualifiers. Out of those 1,000, today we have the best 32 in Europe. One of those players will get the opportunity to do... No, that's not for me to take the joy. The E-Champions League knockouts start right now. Great feed. Oh! Incredible stuff. Stop it! Nicely done. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's what he can do. The group stage of the E-Champions League delivered the drama. He would have been having nightmares about that if he got knocked out. He is marching on to the knockouts. Nicholas's reign as champion still looms large. Making it look so simple, so silky from Nicholas. Athenon has emerged and looks to claim his first title. Anders Vergang, the player unbeaten. Five wins, zero losses. It's still early days. The icons of FIFA Esports still have something to prove in London. The Champions League, it's one of those tournaments that you want to be in the latter stages, you want to be at the grand finals. Go undefeated and claim a spot in the finals. Lose and, well, things get a lot more interesting. Go home or play the best FIFA of your career. That is heartbreaking. Istanbul is calling, but who will answer? It's time for the knockout stage of the E-Champions League. Yeah! Come on! Caps, what a journey it Cheers. has been. What a journey. Hola. Gravison, <laughs> as a competitive player, how important is this trophy, the E-Champions League, in the calendar for these pros? I think it's the biggest tournament out there. you got to win the ECL, you got to be like Real Madrid, you got to be like Bayern Munich, you're going to be one of those European top teams, so you got to replicate that in FIFA. So i got two jobs for the people here. i got to tell the people how to make FIFA easier for them to understand. But I got to tell you, I want you to learn Spanish today. <laughs> so I'm going to oh. some quick words, some gracias, some vamos. I got to translate that for you. My Spanish is good. Uh, Mike, I feel great about the vamos. I'm on that. I understand <laughs> it perfectly. Your FIFA is very good as well. As a former player yourself, what is this tournament for you if you were competing? to get your hands on that ECL trophy? Well, everything's been elevated. And we're talking about prestige. I look at the prize pool as well, what it means to the competitors. You talk to them, they're a little more nervous than usual. And it's going to come down to how do you handle those nerves and then being able to rise to the occasion. It might sound a little bit route, route one or route one, but superstars are going to superstar. And we're going to find out today who's going to be in that final eight. Yeah, we will find that out. Before we get underway, if you've not joined us for the E-Champions League, this perfect opportunity for you. It's the Just Eat pregame show. And our very own Brandon Smith will catch up to date with the ECL so far. The E-Champions League. The top 32 players in Europe survived the group stage and are eyeing up a spot in the finals. To get there, they'll need to display their dominance in the double elimination bracket over two days. On day one, all 32 competitors will face off in the first round, with the winners progressing in the upper bracket and the losers dropping into the lower bracket. The 16 players in the lower bracket will be put to the test to try and avoid another loss. The eight winners will advance to day two, while the remaining eight are eliminated. In the upper bracket, the round of 16 will turn up the pressure. Those who suffered defeat will drop into the lower bracket and face off on Sunday. Those who remain will proceed to the upper bracket's final matches. The undefeated players will then battle it out in day one's concluding round, with four competitors securing their spot in the top eight finals. On day two, elimination awaits all those who taste defeat win and survive. Three rounds of KG FIFA action will determine the final four and set up the ultimate stage for the E-Champions League finals in Istanbul on June 7th. 
So we know the brackets that are going to be in action. However, let's have a little look and a deeper dive, Mike LaBelle, at the players who will be competing. And of course, all the players start in this upper bracket, undefeated at the moment. And the first matchup jumps off the page for me. When you're looking at Yilmaz and Dolan Mike, I can't wait. Stingray had a fantastic year last year. He's looking to replicate that form. You've got Nicholas going up against Danny Pitbull, who just won the E Serie A. Is there a man in better form? you got the likes of Tom, you see Umid, Tex versus Alibali. If that's not a main stage game, I might be a little bit disappointed. You see, as, as the, the, the bracket continues, we've got Peixoto and Hezers. I'm really looking forward to that opening matchup. You've got the likes of Neat, who is a favorite if you're talking to Gravison to win the tournament. <laughs> it's time sure. for him to burst through. And then we've got Obrin, the Italian, who was on point last year. And then, of course, Danny Visser going up against the Wonder Kid, the Phenom, as Brandon was saying, with Vergang. And we'll see Anders in action a little bit later on today. Gravison, it's not all roses, because we go down to the lower <laughs> bracket. If you lose a game, how important is it to stay out of the lower bracket? It is really important, because if you lose early, you're going to have to win like six, seven matches. So it's a thing about having momentum on the lower bracket, or maybe getting tired. So you got to avoid that. Yeah, that mental fatigue does play a factor, Mike, when you, you've got to play, what is it there? Five rounds of action to get yourself into that top eight placement. In theory, it depends when you drop down, but it's going to be a grind. Nobody wants to see themselves in the pink bracket, and definitely not early on. That lower bracket's going to cause problems. And you see the prize pool, $75,000 for first place, second place getting $50,000, third place getting $30,000, fourth place $20,000, so forth and so on. But maybe the big takeaway here is every round you get more money, and the top eight are guaranteed $10,000, and they're competing in Istanbul. It's good money. It's really good money. Uh, the top eight is where you want to be. Well, we've got 32 players. We have got a reigning, defending E <laughs> Champions League player in our books right now, Nicholas 99 FC. Gravison, I understand you spent a little bit of time with him this week. How is Nicholas feeling, first and foremost, coming he's, to this? He's feeling confident, he's feeling motivated. And if you talk about Nicholas, you gotta talk about majors and consistency. Because when he reached those levels, he's always doing stuff. But he's not that good cooking, I gotta tell what, you. That, that's what I was gonna say. I know you stayed there, you spent some time with him. What's on the menu? I heard it was Chef Grab that's cooking up for, for mean, Nicholas. Chef Grab has to be paella and tortilla <laughs> patata, for sure. You know me. On the other side, Mike. <laughs> How, how important is it? You can see some of his highlights from the groups. For him to start well, we know he's going to be taking on Danny Pitbull. It's a long, long journey if he goes down. If we're talking about any other player, I, I might stress the importance of starting on the front foot, but Nicholas might be the most composed FIFA player we've seen of all time. Agreed. I was thinking about this oh, so many matches. I talk about, I think it's a 50-50, and then he wins the game. And that happens time and time again. He's, he's earned the nickname as the Iceman. His heart doesn't move. He's never nervous. He always feels calm and collected. You very rarely see him react. I'm sure that he'd prefer to stay in the upper bracket, but if he drops down, he'll grind through that. Yeah, he is a grinder, he is the Iceman, and he is also joined by our very own Brandon Smith right now for his thoughts ahead of the ECL knockouts. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Yes, joined by the current E Champions League winner in Nicholas 99. A lot of hype coming into this one, obviously defending champion. You just about got over the line in February. Um, looking for a bit of a, an easier road today? Uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward for today. Also, I, I'm so happy to be here, you know, if yeah, I'm going through during different stages. So yeah, let's see, let's see today. I have very tough match, my first match. So yeah, let's see. And did it change your preparation coming into this tournament, knowing that the player you're playing against about 72 hours ago was lifting silverware in Italy, E Serie A champion? Uh, no, for me, you know, you, you have to analyze uh, your opponent, you already know. But yeah, I'm just trying to focus on myself. I try to be better. I think my performance in the second stage was really, really bad, was really poor. So yeah, I'm here to uh, to try something different. Well, there you go. You heard it from the man himself. The current E Champions League is back in London to try something different. We can't wait to see him in action soon. Always so composed is Nicholas in interviews, off the pitch, on the football pitch as well. I've had a chance. He's a very good CDM. Um, <laughs> didn't have a greatest of group standings, Mike. Well, that's kind of terrifying because he's still here. He didn't get knocked out and he said he didn't play well. And on brand as ever, 20 goals for, 17 against. He gets the results and he moves on and now he has a reset here in the next knockout stage. A player that is on the tip of everyone's tongue. He needs no introduction. <laughs> Anders Vergang. He gave was him the, an introduction. I did, because he deserves it. And that's why, Mike. He's on the other side of the spectrum. Three and two, Nicholas. Five and all, oh, Anders. We can see some of his best moments. What, what does he do so well? You've played against him, Gravison. 
the thing, the first thing is step overs. Back in FIFA 21, when no one was in the step overs, he kind of took it in, and we have all see as step overs now. And the thing he has is timing. I don't think you can train uh, the the timing, but he has it. He simply has it, and I think he's one of the best players in the world right now. He's the player to watch, in my opinion. Player to watch, player to beat. He has been perfect so far in the E Champions League, and he is also joined right now for a quick pre-match comment with Brandon. Smith. Cheers, Jets. Yes, Anders Vergang, the man that everyone wants to speak to at a FIFA event. He made his pro debut back here in February, and it's safe to say you uh, you delivered, uh, Anders, here in London. 5-0 and in the Swiss stages, the highest goal scorer in the tournament, 33 goals scored. Were you happy the last time you played in this tournament? Yeah, for sure. I'm happy to be here again, and I know that I have to perform as good as I did last time to go to eight, but I also know that I'm good enough to do it. And we saw a lot of celebrations, a lot of animation from you. Are we expecting a bit more of that today from you, Anders? Well, if I win, it can happen, but yeah, we will see. We will see indeed. Anders Vergang, excited to get going again here in London. Back to you, gents, for now. Thank you very much. I'm so, so excited to watch Anders in action. Uh, he'll be in round two of fixtures. Mike, he was perfect in the group standing. He's electric. He scores for fun. You see the 32 goals for, the 16 against. And don't let that fool you on the interview. He wasn't yelling. He wasn't screaming. But he will get emotional. Yet. He will pop off. He will give you reactions when he's on the big stage. Yeah, so excited. Grav, you, you want a quick comment on, on Anders? 5-0. and oh, What a player. I, I love the stats, I love everything, but I love celebrations. And yes. I, wanna watch <laughs> I think we get everyone in here doing the under celebration if he is successful. <laughs> well, we've talked about two of the favourites. I don't think it's a favourite conversation without mentioning Donovan Hunt. You may know him as Fnatic Tex. He's not gone about it the smoothest of ways in the ECL so far. He got through, and that's all that matters, Gravison. Talk to me about potentially what went wrong in the group standings and what he's looking to turn around here in the knockouts. I think when we spoke to Tex in the interviews, he's not, he doesn't feel of the edge of the edge of elimination. He's not playing at his best. When he is in the knockout stage, he's going to play at his best every single time. So I'd say it's just his time now. He, he knows he's in the upper bracket first round, and I think he's going to be really good now. Yeah, I, I can't wait to watch Tex in action. And before we get his main stage game underway, Brandon Smith has caught him for a quick chat. Yeah, cheers, Rich. I always get a different answer when I uh, ask you this question, Tex. How are we feeling today um, after maybe a bit of a nervy Swiss Swiss run uh, back in February? I don't know. Ask me after the first game because that first game, I got a hard bracket today. I got Oli Body, and then if I win that, maybe Omut. So actually, not after, not after the first game. Ask me at the end of the day. End of the day, we'll ask you. Talk to me a little bit about February. Um, it seems like in the Champions League, you like to entertain us in the Swiss rounds. I remember you went 0-2 and, and came back last year, and then this year you left it to the last game. You just like entertaining us? No, I hate it. I want every game to be like 4-0. If I lose, let it be 4-0. If I win, let it be 4-0. Do you know what I mean? I want some free games, but uh, we'll see what happens today. Yeah, I don't think there'll be many free wins here at the Champions League. Uh, Tex plays against Oli Bolly in round one, and we're looking forward to seeing him in action. He is everyone's biggest opponent. Even now, without winning a trophy in a few years, Mike, he still is the big game for a lot of these players. And coming into this, you could even argue that Ali Bali's in better run of form, performed better in the previous E Champions League. Of course, there has been some time in between. Uh, but the reason that Tex has looked at like this is because of the consistency and the innovative nature in a lot of his gameplay. He's been getting results time in and time out, so it shows you that he has that ability. When Tex plays his best, I don't know if anyone can beat him. That's kind of the question mark. What maybe, text are you going to get? Maybe an Argentinian guy, because we saw, <laughs> we saw Nicolas, we saw Matias Bonano. But yeah, text, obviously. Grav, talk to me. You are in this space right now. You're still competing. Well, I say competing. Uh, you're still oh, trying. Oh, 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 wow. Oh, oh. <laughs> that was unnecessary. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'm the host. I'm throwing caps at everyone. <laughs> How important is Tex? Is he still the big dog? He's still the guy to beat in yeah. the space? Yeah, of course. When you reach this kind of okay, tournament, you want to win. But it's also important to win matches against players like Tex, Nicolas, because it's a title by itself. So it's one of the players to beat. But obviously, Oli Boli, 4-1 in Swiss format, that's not going to be an easy match for him. I can't wait to see these games unfold. We've heard from three of the favourites. It's now time for two of my favourite people to take over the reins. Brandon Smith and Ryan Pessoa will be your commentators for this first round. 
Thank you very much, guys. Yes, we cannot wait to get this Champions League day one knockouts underway. But before we do that, I believe someone's been feeling a little bit peckish. Just slightly, Ryan just slightly. A little bit peckish. Uh, we have got a Just Eat delivery uh, coming in today. I don't know what you've ordered, Ryan. I mean, lunch was fine for me, but clearly you wanted something else uh, today. Thank you very much. Hopefully we won't be seeing... Uh, you get through that for quite a while because <laughs> yeah. uh, you've you just had lunch, Ryan. Uh, but speaking of this E Champions League, let's just talk about it. 32 players are here from what was 50,000 once upon a time. We got it down to 1,000 in February. 64 competed. As Richard was saying, this is the this is the biggest FIFA tournament in Europe, Brian. So many stack players, so many big names. I just spoke to three of them. It is so hard to call and predict which way this is going. Isn't it? Absolutely. And we, of course, have a huge matchup in Emre Yilmaz up against Dallin Mike. Yeah, what a game this one plans to be. Emre Yilmaz, what a player. 5-0, and oh, another one of those names to keep an eye out for. And speaking of Emre Yilmaz, he caught up with Turkish Airlines to give us the latest coming to this year's E-Champions League. I am here with the man who was 5-0 and oh in the group standings. Emre Yilmaz, perfect record. How do you feel coming into the knockouts? Yeah, I'm feeling very confident uh, for, the no for this tournament. Uh, I'm feeling very hungry to win and play the games. And look, ECL final in Turkey, in yeah. Istanbul. What would it mean to you to lift that E-Champions e League trophy high above your head? Yeah, Istanbul is like a place where I feel home. So it's like a dream for me. Yeah, I look forward to it. Maybe, maybe you can be the one. Are you gonna, yeah. are you gonna win it? For sure. For sure. Well, Emre, best of luck in the tournament, and I hope to see you in Istanbul. Thank you. Well, speaking of confidence, Ryan, look no further from Emre Yilmaz. If he keeps yep. playing like he is, he'll be on that plane to Turkey, won't he? Absolutely. I believe him. I believe the confidence as well. He's got the ability. He's shown it. And of course, his opposition is Dallin Mike, someone else has also shown it across the years. But he started off zero and two, finishing three and two. He's ranked the lowest seed. How 32. is he ranked the lowest player in this tournament? Exactly. Somebody that's been incredible um, throughout the years. From his first to um, tournaments, he's shown his ability to compete with the very best. He'll need to do that today, though, up against Emre Yilmaz on a rich, rich vein of form. Yeah, what a player he is. Multiple Foot Champions Cup winner. I spoke to Nicholas. I said, you got a tough game ahead of you. And yes, I have, Brandon. Nicholas against Danny Pitbull. Nicholas, does he need an introduction? E-Champions League defending winner Group stage, he did lose a couple of games in there, but still pulled himself through. And in his words to me, Ryan, he said, look, I wasn't good enough in the groups. Absolutely, and he needs to be a lot better if he's coming up against somebody like Danny Pitbull, a rich vein of form. Of course, winning the E Serie A a couple of days ago, so he's going to be coming in with a lot of confidence. He's, he's going to be backing his ability. We see there with his record of four and one. He's ranked seed number eight as well. And of course, his only loss was against Anders, who was 5-0 in this tournament. Yeah, cheeky winks to the camera from Danny Pitbull. He must be buzzing right now. He's Serie A champion. But this is the big one, Ryan, that we are going to be keeping most of our attention on. Tex against Oli Bolly. How is this, you know, a matchup so early on to the knockouts? This is what you'd see maybe in a qualification match between these two. Absolutely. It's a, it's a massive game. Tex coming in as rank number 20, um, 29 coming into Oli Bolly ranked four. Um, in the, the seeding, of course, he went 4-1. and one. His only loss was against Anders as well. But for Tex, he was 2-2 two and two on the brink of elimination. He needed to win that final game to progress into this stage of the E-Champions League. But we just look at his accolades. A approximately won over $600,000 competing since FIFA 18. A multiple foot Champions Cup winner. An E-Champions League 2022 semi-finalist. And of course, the champion in the E-Champions League Invitational in 2020. So he's basically done everything there is to do other than a few slight things in the scene. Yeah, he was a part of the, the last eight, wasn't he, in Sweden last time out. Speaking of Sweden and speaking of Swedish FIFA players, he's the only Swede left in the tournament. It is Oli Bolly of Team Makers, another superb FIFA player. Look at the, the accolade list he's had from FIFA e Club World Cups to just consistently placing in the top 20 players in Europe. He is here, there and everywhere when it comes to big major tournaments. Unfortunately, to say that, Ryan, one of these two are going to be falling to the lower bracket today. Absolutely. It's key to mention, of course, winning three games in the winner's bracket secures your position in the final eight in Istanbul for the E-Champions League. But winning the first, or sorry, losing the first round, you have to win five rounds after that to progress into the next stage. That's a lot. Winning five in a row, it's, it's going to be tough. 
Yeah, I mean, we say it's easy. Three games, it's not going to be yeah. easy, is it? Three games and you're in Istanbul alongside the top eight players from Europe. You can see the countdown on the screen. That is how long we have got before the Champions League knockout stages kicks off for day one here in London. By the end of play today, four will qualify for Istanbul. Eight will be eliminated and 20 players will remain to fight again tomorrow. There's a lot on the line and there's a lot of FIFA to be played. Tex against Oli Bolly will be our first major match up here. Plenty of games going underway. I think there's eight games per round taking place and they all kick off right about now. We can't wait for this one, Ryan. Yep, absolutely. It's going to be interesting to see the personnel changes from the last um, tournament in February. Has anything changed? The formations, the matter has shifted slightly. So I expect to see uh, a few players playing with the 5 4 one 3 4 2 one um, a little more defensive formations, but for Tex, I think he's going to be wanting to put the initiative straight away onto Oli Bolly. He's going to be on the front foot, and this is going to be an exciting game between two juggernauts in the FIFA scene. Well, well, well. Here we go. The biggest FIFA tournament that Europe has to offer is back again for another 48 hours in London, where we go from 32 down to just eight. It's going to be one hell of a journey to get there. For that final eight, we'll travel to Turkey. We'll travel to Istanbul on June 7th. It's a battle against the best. $75,000 for the top prize. $281,000, the whole prize pool. Serious chunk of cash, but there's just something about this tournament, isn't there? Just to be the best player in Europe, Ryan. Absolutely. is. It's, of course, similar to its, its football counterpart in the sense that it's probably the most prestigious cup to win as a player in the, in the FIFA eSports scene. You just take a look at the formations used from both of these players. It looks as if Tex is playing with a flat back four, whereas Oli Bolli utilizing the 5-4-1 or the 3-4-2-1, it looks like. So it's going to be hard to break down the defensive structure for Oli Bolli. And just to explain that for those at home, Ryan, obviously meta changes the game, continues to unfold throughout the year. Pros, of course, will adjust to that. Five back seems to be the main conversational point at the moment. What we mean by that is a five back that goes into a three also could just sit as a back five. Here's Tex looking to build his first chance of the game, went to corner. It's, it's going to be, at times, a game of chess, isn't it? Absolutely. It's about just making the right choices in the right areas. You don't seem to get a lot of goal-scoring chances when up against the five here, but Tex has started very brightly, very offensive with his skill moves, choosing the right um, skill moves in those areas, but it's good defending from Wally Bolly. Well, let's speak about the foot squads in action too. There are restrictions to be followed here. You are allowed to use any foot hero and any icon in the game. But alongside that, Champions League promo items. There's not going to be a great deal of them, but there will be a few sprinkled round in some squads, won't there? Absolutely. We can see there um, Alaba being used. I think it's the first time we've seen him throughout the competition, um, even since February, because, of course, the UCL items in-game, they do have the dynamic features, of course, if the team progresses into the next stage, they get upgrades relating to that. So he's somebody that's going to be used a lot more. I'm going to see Fafana as well, another centre-back that I would expect to be seen. We see Tex using him next to Lucio in, in defence there, as we see Olibody for the first time building up here. What can we see from the Swede? Tries to work his way into the box, and able to do so there. Pull it was the driving force, to win the ball back nicely. Alawira, one of the best for heroes that pros absolutely love this year. There's no surprise why. The Saudi Arabian winger. Just full of pace and everything you need for the ultimate in-game FIFA item. Speaker for heroes, Marquisio pops in alongside Yaya Torre. I think Torre is being used at right back as well, which of course is a it's a clever pick, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, it really is. I even saw Danny Pitbull earlier today before we kicked off. Leon Goretzka, Champions League item as a uh, as a right back, so. Expect some interesting selections. Here's Ronaldinho, Tex, still waiting patiently for the first goal in the Champions League knockouts. Alawiron, nice feet. Happy to drive Oli Bolly, isn't he? And just look for a couple of intricate skill moves. Absolutely, and again, when Tex is around the area, it's, it's frightening, to say at the least. He's always seeming to make the right decisions, but I think that's the, the positive of playing a defensive formation like the 5-4-1 is that you have that extra body in defence to, to sort of close the gaps a little bit more so you can't really step over into space because somebody's occupying that, that position there. So it's it's very difficult for, for Tex to break through, but he's very confident in his game style. And I think over the course of the game, we'll definitely create a lot more chances if he keeps doing it. 
Keep in mind, every game over two legs hit in the Champions League. Speaking of another game that's underway, Dulamike against Emre Yilmaz. We'll check into this one very quickly. Well, we have just seen an opening goal in the game. It is no surprise the young Dutch player that is just loving his FIFA right now. Emre Yilmaz, one goal to the good. Absolutely, a green time, the finesse shot there, just on the edge of the box there for Emre Yilmaz to take the lead against Dullan Mike. Back to this one now. Tex holding most of the possession, just trying to unpick this back five. Which, as you can see from Oli Bolly, doesn't need a coach, doesn't need anyone around him. We're hearing there's been another goal in that Dullan Mike game, surely not a second for Emre Yilmaz. He's gone for the second man press, and Dullan Mike needs to switch on now, otherwise it's going to be a very similar story to the Swiss rounds. Absolutely, that's a gift from Dullan Mike to Emre Yilmaz. I believe that could have been straight away from the, the kickoff as well when defending. He's just given a chance there. Here's Oli Bully. Ball back inside. Well, he might not have had all the possession in the world, Oli Bully. But he doesn't need it. We can attack like that. We'll see it again. He got down the byline. Just put on a plate for R9. And now Tex finds himself 1 0 down. Yes, it was great build up play from Oli Bully towards the byline. You can see the, the commitment from Tex there with Lucio just to try and make that tackle and give away a corner, but he mistimed it and then Oli Bolly was sort of gifted a chance there for an easy pass, but I think that's against the runner play. I don't think we've seen many chances from Oli Bolly in this first half, but again, when they come your way, you have to take those chances. Well, last time we were here, I remember a similar conversation about left backs. It seems like that Cap de Villa is patched over the worries that Valverde once sort of did a job at. Yep, absolutely. I think he's a staple in the team, Cap de Villa, for me. I think he has to play. Um, as you said, one of the options, or very few options that you could utilise in left-back. I think the, the, um, the cause for concern for a lot of the players has been the right-back position. We've seen some players use, we've seen Yaya Toure use there, we've seen Valverde, we spoke about Park Ji-sung as well. He's got an item in game. Certainly lots of options, isn't it? Speaking of Tex Ryan, it wasn't that long ago in London, you actually played against him. It was a nil-nil game, so it wasn't too much to go for in, in terms of goals being scored. But what did he take from that game against Tex? What's the tendencies that a player like he normally just offers or the questions he'll ask of you? It's a difficult one to, to analyse, if I'm being honest. There wasn't really much in that game in terms of chances for either of us. It was just a 5-4-1 a up against a 5-4-1, really. It was just very defensive. There weren't really many ways to, to break through the defensive line for either of us as we see the last attack there in that half from Oli Bolly. Well, half time. Tex may have had majority of the ball. But Oli Bolly didn't need all the chances in the world. One or two went down the other end and was able to get himself one goal to the goods in our featured matchup. Keep in mind, three wins is all you need to qualify for the knockout stages. It will be a very difficult three wins, though, in the upper half of the bracket. There's a long time left to be played in this game, but as expected, quite a slow start against the five-back, which is going to be so hard to break down. Tex is trying to go against the five-back meta, playing a four. Yeah. I think it's surprising, if I'm being honest. I thought as if it was almost a given for most players to, to match a 5-4-1. If you're going to be playing against it, it's very difficult to break it down. Of course, you have to, to worry about the full-backs overlapping, um, or the wing-backs, I should say, overlapping, because they you don't really get the the tracked runs from your wide midfielders, so it's, it's hard to defend against when someone plays it properly. If you had to say, out of there was 10 players in a room here at the Champions League, how many will be playing five backs? I'd say nine. Nine? Genuinely nine, yeah. I'd be shocked if... Just because it's that much of a disadvantage if you don't play it? Yeah, I think I feel like a lot of players are more comfortable playing maybe a, a 4 triple 2 or a 4 3 2 one However, if somebody's playing a back five or a back three, you sort of want just to match them, just to nullify their, their offensive threat. We're back on the way here. Oli Bolly runs that one out of play. Keep an eye on the scores coming in. We mentioned there's eight games taking place in this round. Here are the five games that are taking place backstage. And here's the updates for you. Umit leads Rafsu two goals to one. Stingray Jr. leads Ayn Mertel two goals to one. Gio Bundy finds himself 2-1 down to the, the veteran of FIFA. I say veteran, he's been in the seat for quite some time, the stranger. Marwan, the Moroccan, 4-1 up. If you're an XL Tom fan, unfortunately, trails two goals to one as it stands right now. Those games are all in the first leg. Plenty of FIFA. Let's check into Nicholas Danny Pitbull for a split second. 
That's nil nil at the moment. 60 minutes into that one. As expected, that's probably a. Uh... Oh, to be fair, Danny Pitbull spoke to him. He's not playing five back. Oh, he's not. He I might have changed in the last half an hour, but he's not playing a five back. And he's playing Leon Goretzka as I said, as a, as a right back in the back four. Yeah, I feel as if that sort of would favour Nicholas a little bit more. I feel as if he would not seem to go to a five back. Then if, if he tends to be playing against somebody that is using that, as we can see. I believe this is another attack here from Emre Yilmaz. We can check in there. As Emre Yilmaz finds a third goal in that game. Keep in mind, those are our featured matches on the main stage. Dullamai, oh my days! We blink for a minute, it takes goes and scores! And that's the reaction you can see from Oli Bolly. Just a puff of the cheeks as Alawairan. Just smashes that into the top right-hand corner. I don't know where that goal came from, but Tex back in the game. Yeah, that's surprising. I'm not sure if it was green time. We weren't able to tell just as we, we kept pan back into this game, but that is a shot you'd, in my opinion, opinion be a little bit upset about conceding. Of course, Olibody, you saw the grimace on his face there. Um, probably reactions after conceding that goal. It's a weird one to concede. It's a, it's a tough one, but of course, it's a huge goal for Tex to equalize to get back into this game. Bit, bit unlike Tex as well from, from him, Ryan. He just was like, I've got to try something from the edge of the box. Here's R9. Speaking of R9, uh, the trophy titan. Chance to, to use him yet? or um, I haven't used him yet, of course, but I think well, this could be a chance here. First time ball over the top from Tex. Hello, Ira, looking for a brace for Tex. Tries the ball roll round. This could be a chance. Back to R9. The goalkeeper movement couldn't stop him. As Tex flips the game on its head. It's all came from Alawira and it's a great ball over the top. That's the only way you're going to catch this back five out. If you can just time the ball over the top to perfection, Tex did that. Alawira was in a bit of a tumble, somehow still kept the ball. And speaking of R9, what I wanted to say, Ryan, was that I saw him get bought for like 15 million coins yeah. a week ago. He's a serious player. So 97 is pretty much like using the prime icon moment. Absolutely. It's, it's coins I don't have at my disposal, unfortunately. But of course, he's somebody that is going to be a staple in everybody's team in this tournament and that's what you see in those moments you can just trust him on either foot in, in the area bit of a rushed shot there from only body but going back to that goal from Tex there I think his decision was sort of made up there from the goalkeeper from the goalkeeper movement I should say from Oli body sort of predetermined where he thought Tex would shoot moved him quite well I say slightly early and sort of made a choice for Tex but again you have to take the opportunities when they come Another little lofted ball over the top again. Yaya Toro. Unconventional position at right back. Is there any news from this game? Nicholas against Danny Pitbull, the current E Champions League winner against the man that just won the E Serie A in Italy. It's Nicholas on the hump. With seven minutes left to be played. We go into a pause there. We'll leave that one for the time being. Surprising nil nil in that. Um, it's, it's difficult. Here's Ginola. That was a golden chance. I feel as if, if a green time shot across goal there, that could have been the chance Oli Body was hoping for. But when it comes to Nicholas playing, he seems to be involved. I don't know how to explain this, honestly. He's involved in a lot of 50-50 games, but comes out on top genuinely 99% of the time. I don't know how he does it. He seems to, to make the most of those, those games. Towards the front post. Can't clear that one away. We hear there's been... More action in another game. We'll give you the update on that in a second as Oli Bolly is building patiently from this corner. The air and Huller interchanging superbly well. Let's go and check out the uh, the moment then. Emre Yilmaz against Dullamite. Please say Dullamite scored a goal. It's not getting worse, is it? This is only in the first leg. Emre Yilmaz, Alawiron just gets over that one and does enough to put him 4 0 up. That's a massive statement already from. Emre Yilmaz falling up against somebody like Dullam Mike in this stage of the competition isn't easy to do. And of course, there's still a long way to go in that game. He could make it worse, or of course, Dullam Mike could try and stem a comeback. No disrespect to Dullam Mike, but could you say, let's just, let's just switch on to the lower bracket, or, or is there still a lot of time? There's still a lot of time. You can't give up yet. Uh, it's, it's going to be tough to come back in any game, let alone against somebody like Emre Yilmaz, who doesn't really tend to give up a lot of chances. He doesn't really give up three goals. You have to work for, for every chance you get. So. If it's me, I would honestly say just maybe try something different. Maybe the formation isn't working, personnel isn't working. So there's still a little bit of time just to get a goal or two. Tex 
Hunting for a third in this game. Alawiran tries to unpick the holes in the defence between Vieira and Lucio. Well, I can't believe this. We joked about it being over. Is it over or is Dillamayk? Got himself a goal. It looks like he has. It's Dillamayk on the chance here. There's 12 minutes left in this game. R9 just does a job down the byline. About time from R9. Puts on the plate for Hullet. Dillamayk, you're right. Not out of the game yet. 4-1. He does trail. Yep. As of course, we've still got the second leg to play. So a three-goal deficit is a, a mountain to climb, but there's still time to, to try and get back into it. I think for Texay, just going to be looking to get the last attack in this game, kill the clock down slightly. It's going to be one minute added on. He's going to be happy just to keep possession until the clock ticks down. If he can generate one last attack. Ronaldinho goes out for a corner, but the referee will play the corner. As additional time is done and dusted. R9 Hullet, Ronaldinho back to R9 again. This is the last chance of the game. Will Tex be able to score a goal? No, he won't. And that will do us at the halfway point. Well, let's head over to Richard Buckley, who I believe might have a word off the back of that game. He's sneaking up for an interview. Is he going to get one? I am. I'm sneaking up indeed. Um, Tex, quick comment, please. Thoughts on the first leg? I've played good. He's just in a five back, isn't it? So it's hard. Um, it's you go to the mate. Enjoy yourself. Um, Ollie bolly has got his headset on and he's doing some tactics. He's watching the goal back. I'm a bit scared. Ollie, can we have a quick quick chat? Yeah. How are you feeling, mate? It's a tough game, of course. He's very good. Uh, but yeah, I think I can turn it around. And uh, obviously, he's just left us. Anything anything different going to be happening in the second leg? Any formation, tactics, anything like that? We will see. We will see indeed. Brandon, Ryan, back to you. Thank you very much, Rich. Yeah, good to a little bit of insight there of, of how these players are feeling at the Champions League. It was an interesting game, wasn't it? Oli Bolly maybe didn't have all the possession, Ryan, but then took his chance perfectly well. We yep. looked away at a different game for him. We came back and Alawiran's trying shots from the edge of the box, which I think Tex had to do because, as he's just said, he's playing against the five-back and there's not, there's not much room, is there? Yeah, absolutely. I think that game... I think it's a fair 2-1 result um, for the first leg for Tex. And I think it's sort of going to feed into his game style now. He's in the lead against the five-back. He can just keep possession a little bit more. And for Oli Wally, just needs that, that chance early on to try and get back into it. Absolutely, as we said. Still a second leg to come up in that game. It'll be massive as well, as we said, just to edge closer and closer. We are going to go to our first break here at the E-Champions League. When we get back, we will resume that match between Tex and Oli Bolly. We'll be back in a few minutes. E-Champions League continues live from London.
Well, welcome back to the Champions League knockout stages here uh, live in London. You join us for our first matchup. We're at the halfway point so far as Tex takes on Oli Bolly. The full-time result of that first leg was Tex leading by two goals to one. Myself, Brown, is with Am Ryan Pessoa guiding you through our first round of action here. It wasn't the only game that was underway, though, was it, behind us? Of course, um, uh, we have a lot of featured games going on. Of course, Nicholas up against Danny Pitbull is a huge one. We last left that when it was at Nil. And we were able to take a look at the results, though. though. Emery Yilmaz winning 4-1 one against Dallin Mike, which we were able to see some of the replays in there. Stingray up against Ima Towers 2-2. Two, two. Gio Bundy 2-2 two, two as well, up against The Stranger. Nicholas and Danny Pitbull nil nil, but there's a huge result here. Marwan 5-1 up against Van Basten in the first leg. Yeah, well, Marwan is uh, it's quite a surprise package. The Moroccan international takes on Van Basten, leads by five goals to one. We must say there is three games on this main stage now, but there is five taking place just in another room here at the Champions League. Hence why these results will feature in during the games. Keep an eye on the top-hand corner of your screen. But yeah, it looks as if all the goals are going in in the games that we're not looking at. Um, <laughs> yeah. It normally always seems to be that way. But Umit, Rafsu, seven-goal <laughs> thriller, yeah. Umit, 4-3 up. How good is it as well to see Rafsu back competing at his best? Yeah, Rafsu's a, a veteran. He's been around for a number of years. Actually, at the first event I ever qualified for back in FIFA 17, we played against each other. So that's a, a long time ago. How, how so did that go? I won. You won? I won. He won. He's won the other one since then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, we'll keep you up to date with those other games that are taking place. Keep in mind, as we said, at the end of play today, four will qualify for Istanbul. Eight will be eliminated and 20 remain in the tournament. Looking for those final four spots tomorrow. Winners bracket, losers bracket. It's all in action here at the Champions League. Back on the way in our featured matchup, though. Wally Boyd will kick from left to right. Against Tex from right to left. He said to Richard, Ryan, that Wally Boyd might try something a little bit different. Yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if he... Do you think he comes out with the five back or no? Yeah, I would definitely, if I'm him, still come out with the five back because he triggered a, a German cross there. We trigger one of the midfielders, as we saw there with Bruce Willett, making that darting run into the box, but defended well there from Tex. But I think for Oli probably start as he left the second leg in that back five, try and see how the game goes, gauge it a little bit more. And as the game progresses, maybe then he could look to tweak a few things if, if the scoreline remains the same. Tex on the up for a third goal in the game. See how he plays this one out. What I'm looking forward to most uh, today and tomorrow, Ryan, is seeing how many players will be given a go a job at right back. Yaya Torre on one side, Valverde on the other. Anyone else on that list that we could expect? Goretzka maybe? Yeah, Goretzka, I saw a few players using Hullet or testing out Hullet in right back, which is a, an interesting choice. Of course, he offers the, the aerial ability defending the back post crosses, but use that, you lose the presence in midfield, but driven pass in there from Texas to try and breach the defensive line for Oli Boli. How much of a game changer is that driven pass as well? You see pros do it all the time. It's so important. If you can just get that, that, that passing channel from centre mid to an R9 and you can do it quickly, you can just catch your opponent off guard. Absolutely. You can use it to turn directly into a reverse elastico or the, the drag heel to heel, which is obviously very utilised in and around the area to create those chances, those angles for the shots across goal. But driven pass is, of course, a key feature, as well as the, the Travella switches of play. We'll see a lot more... Um, as the game progresses on. Oli Bolly. Tout will be looking for a cross into the box. Tries his best to work in. Got to be careful on the counter-attack here. This is where Tex will be out to get. It's a running race between the two for heroes, Lucio and Alawira. Fortunate enough that Lucio can't come out on top. That's twice now he's, he's made the, the same triggered run there. Tex defended well both times from Oli Bolly. He seems to manually track the run, which is, of course, something that you have the luxury to do so with the three centre-backs. You can bring one out of posi out position and still have the, the structure of a back four. Well, R9 is still on side in that passing move. So is Marquisio. Back inside, R9, massive save from Van der Sar. That save's made up for it. It's made up for conceding the first goal. I thought that was almost a, a foregone conclusion. I thought that was going to be the goal from Tex to give him the, the two-goal cushion. Great build-up play there from from Tex, but there could be a quick response there from Oli Bolly in terms of the attack here, but defended well. Of course, the UCL item in for Fana. I think he's going to be a staple um, amongst a lot of the squads here that we'll see today. I saw Danny Pitbull look towards the Chelsea uh, defender. Alawiren again on his own! Oh my! 
think the cameraman thought the tech score because we did <laughs> so, as well. So did I. He timed it green. It looked like it was flying to the top bins. Just to get the timing of that so quickly. So unexpected. Another day that goes straight into the top bins. Absolutely. I think that's the, the special thing um, Tex has because he, of course, can utilize the skills in the area. I speak about it more as this attack actually comes to a close there. He can utilize skills in the area, quick passing, quick turning. He can also shoot from long range. He can cross the ball. He can do first time um, through balls over the top as well. So it's, it's very difficult to mark as we, of course, take a look at the other game going on. This is live, still nil-nil between Danny Pitbull and Nicholas. Going into the second leg now, 20 minutes have been played. Well, it looks as if Danny Pitbull lied to me, because I don't know if he's playing a five-back or not. It looks like something on those lines. Maybe if they have a chance towards the back post as Nicholas opens up his account 20 minutes into that game. That was a live goal. That has just gone in to the right-hand side of us now. Finally, there's a breakthrough in that game after 110 FIFA minutes. Nicholas will be happy with that. I was actually in the backstage area and I was watching Nicholas and his coach watching the East Serie A earlier this week, trying to break down Danny Bipple's gameplay. Just shows the level of preparation coming into this for a player of Nicholas's quality. Back to goal, Wally Bolly, can he beat his man? He nearly did there with R9, but just got a little bit worried and came back the other way. Yeah, I didn't think he... He thought the, the turn would have been, in, been enough to, to get past Texas defence there. It was, and he turned back thinking he'd have to do that little bit extra, but it wasn't needed. And that's, a, that's a key chance. Of course, it didn't lead to a shot at goal, but it's just something that maybe Oli Bolly could take positives in. As we see the pass, Hello. I think this is offside, just about there from Tex. Just offside. It's Tex there. Who will be playing who? I'll tell you what, I tell you what, Ryan. The winner of this will play the winner of Umit or Rafsu. Massive. You get a big game every round do at the Champions League, don't you? It's a massive, massive game. Again, as you said, those those type of matchups you associate being grand finals, let alone um, in the next what, what would be the round of of 16 in the winners bracket. So it's a it's a tough, tough game for whoever wins, but of course whoever loses is gonna have a if it's Umit against Tex, that's, you know, they're both top eight last time in the Champions League. Half-time here, Tex still does lead Oli Bolly by two goals to one. I think we have some updates potentially from elsewhere. Also in the other games, Nicholas was leading by just one goal. But first and foremost, what's happening over here? Second leg, Emre Yilmaz, as we know, was already 4-1 up. He made it 5-1 after 12 minutes. Not looking great there for Dula Mike. No, it's not. It, it seems as if he's just cutting through his defence at will almost. Every single chance we've seen from em Emre Yilmaz has resulted in a in a goal there up against Dula Mike. So that's a huge one. I think he's he'll be confident to see out that game, in my opinion, Brandon. Being 5-1 up now. Um, it's a massive score, like, isn't it's it? It's massive. It's a statement win, of course. Winning up against Dula Mike, who is, again, we spoke about how, how well he's done throughout the season and the, throughout, the, throughout the years in the FIFA scene, but... He seemed to start slow with the E-Champions League, especially this year. We've noticed the green time shot there blocked. Let's look at him being 0-2, and two, turning it around. And again, he sort of started as he started the previous phase. Corner played quickly there from Tex. Ronaldinho and Marquisio back to R9. Can't quite find the animation he was looking for. On the Emre, Emre Yilmaz game, as he does lead five goals to one already. He's, he's just scored again. This is five minutes after he scored the first one. Pull it. It would have to be involved, wouldn't he? The team bullet player. Gave it to R9, the two icons linking up 6-1. The winner of that, which you might as well say is Emre Yilmaz now, will be playing the winner of Stingray against Aymer Tau. Here's Tex, back to goal of R9, just offside. Lots of big games that will be taking place in the upper bracket round two. Here at the Champions League. It's worth noting as well that there are 16 players that haven't kicked off yet. In the next round, they shall do that. The likes of Anders Vergen will be kicking off his match. Texas loving these long balls forward. What is the keeper doing? 
oh, makes sense. <laughs> just <laughs> offside. Yeah. Keeper sort of fancied it, then, then, he, then he didn't fancy it. There's just something to, to watch out there for Oli Bolly. You see those, the passes over the top. Tex isn't afraid to, to play them at will. Alawire, and it's just got everybody for pace, isn't it? Ginola, haven't seen huge involvements of the French for Hero as of yet. Chattavia, Alawire, and this is nice again from Tex. I think there's been a, a slight change with Oli Bolli's formation. Instead of using the 5 for 1, I believe he's using the 3 4 2 1, or maybe he's got his left mid and right mid on in a 5 for 1 on balance or stay forward. You can see that there. They're sort of resting on the the defensive line of Tex, just to see if he could spring counter-attacks as quick as possible. But I think he might even need to change a little bit more as we see. There's there's only 30 minutes or so left to play in the second leg. And of course, he's down by one goal. Let's have an update on the Nicholas game against Danny Pibble. We see him go one the up in it. I believe by the looks of it, he went two the up. 26 minutes into the restart there, Nicholas finding uh, his goal-scoring form. Yeah, it's a, it's a Nicholas special. We know how good he is from set pieces. He always seems to, to conjure up something, whether it's a, a direct free kick or an indirect one or a corner, whether, whatever it is, he seems to always find ways just to, to maximise his chances from those situations. And it's another one, green timed as well, to give him the two-goal lead. Ginola, pull it, R9, or I should say R10. If it was R9, he may have scored. There's uh, Ronaldinho, somehow does not even get that on target. Yeah, that's a that's a tough one to, to take for Texter. I thought that was almost a, a guaranteed goal there from Ronaldinho. Yeah, you expect those ones to, you have to score that. It's Ronaldinho, yeah, right? Yeah, you expect it. I think even for Texter, lean back in his chair a little bit, you expect that to find the back of the net, but yeah, it wasn't meant to be. Yeah, not meant to be there, as we said. As we jump into a pause menu between these two players. We'll keep you up to date with the scores in the other games as soon as we can. Remember, there's five more matches taking place backstage as well. The likes of Umit against Rafsu. The winner of that will play the winner of this game you can see in front of your eyes now, Tex or Oli Bolly. That'll be in the upper bracket round two, where you'll just be two wins away from an E-Champions League grand final. Subs have been made for Oli Bolly. And speaking of those results right here, they come on the scores. On the doors now, Stingray, 5-2, he leads against Imertal. Gio Bundy, 2-2 against the Stranger. Marwan, the Moroccan, 7-2, he leads. Unfortunately, XL Tom still 3-2 uh, down against Anton Antonio Radega of Germany. Oli Bolli, trying to find an equaliser there. 7-2. Look at the run again there. I think this, this one's definitely on side here. Can bring Which this down. Is. Alawara for Tex, loads of time! But Van der Sar deserves huge credit there. And so does Oli Bolly. Just to be patient in the save, that should have easily been 3 1. Maybe it will be now. R9, back to Hullet. Ball just won't fall kindly as Oli Bolly lives to fight another day. Really, should be 3 1 down. Absolutely, it should have been a goal there from, from Tex, but. I think it was good goalkeeper movement there from Oli Bolly, just bringing his goalkeeper back and back just to, to close down the angles there as well. Here we go. Chinola. Just dinked in to the path of Di Natale, who gets a nod off the bench. Di Natale might get another effort out here. Just bundled off the ball there by Captain Villa. Ten minutes to play here. Corner to come in. Just see Hullet there being moved towards the front post. Expect maybe some sort of like flick on at the front post potentially. There's Hullet. There's the flick on. And for a split second, there was nearly a bounce that was going to favour the likes of R9. I've seen that corner a few times now. Just sort of seems like a, a little bit of a hidden gem. Alawiron, every single time, is there for Tech. So much pace. Final seven minutes. Does Tex want another goal? Or does he just want to see the game out? 
So much pressure. Oli Bolly could be 3 1 down again. Vieira's just there in the way. Game starting to come to life now. As Oli Bolly throws bodies forwards, this is where the gaps appear. Alawira, loads of space on the far hand side of your screen. Ginola, great ball, and no, oh, he's just offside. Does it get to the point now where the game plan changes? Tech's just got to look after the ball. Yeah, absolutely. I feel as if if he gets possession now from this, I think that could be all over unless we see a, a mistake from, from Tex. And that was another switch there twice now in a couple of minutes from Oli Boyle. That didn't result in what he intended. It's a great play from Tex. Just slowing the game down a little bit, just making sure that Oli Boyle has to drag players out of position if he wants to retrieve possession. Approaching the last few moments of this game. Two minutes added on here. Tex just needs to keep possession in the final third, just kill the time down on the clock and he should... Here we go. ...guarantee himself a spot into the next round. Clever, composed as ever, as Fnatic Tex gets his first win in the Champions League knockout stages. Two more of those and he'll be on his way to Istanbul for this year's e Champions League knockout. After being 1-0 down in that game, Ryan, flip the game on its head. And in hindsight, I can assure you when they'll be looking through the footage of that game, could have been three or four one. Yeah, absolutely. I felt as if he could have scored a few more. But of course, another game that's going on is Nicholas up against Danny Pitbull. This is live. We left it, of course, where Nicholas scored from that corner to make it 2-0. There's been no change since then. Nicholas looking for a third as we jump into this one. She said, Ryan, goal is in the first leg. And two goals in 30 minutes. From the current e Champions League winner. Jola back to R9. Ronaldinho, the power shot from Nicholas. That game does jump into a pause. We will try and see what's help happening elsewhere as well as looking across the board. Still a mic against Emre Yilmaz is still underway. We'll give you an update as soon as we can alongside. The other matches that are slowly but surely unfolding here with the Champions League for Danny Pitbull. If he was to lose this game, he's just got to pick himself back up. The great thing about the 32 that are here, Ryan, they do have a second chance. If they go to the lower bracket, you do have a sort of second lifeline. Absolutely, and we saw in the East Area him winning games in the, the loser bracket to come up into the final to, to win the East Area. So that's a, a little boost of confidence to show that he's done it before. He can do it again, but it's going to be a, an even tougher ask now playing up against Nicholas, who... This is his competition. He plays so well. It seems as if every game, even if the tide seems to be against him, we saw even the first match against Goal Poultry in February where it felt as if he could concede. He just seems to, to hang on and get those goals when they matter most and get the performances in at those key stages in tournaments. And it seems to be no different here. We're back underway. 22 minutes. Away. We're finding a winner in this one. Nicholas, happy to keep possession, happy to take more time out of the game. So far, so good. Oh, it's clever from Hullet. Poor from Danny Pitbull again there. This could be a chance on the counter-attack for him. Nice ball roll scoop turn. Aggressive defending from Nicholas. Tries to look for a third goal. There's the run of R9. Nicholas doing so well just to open up his defensive Danny Pitbull. Oh, brilliant feed from R9. Play a lot teased. Done so well. And very nearly, unfortunately, an own goal. How hard is that to defend? You must be thinking on the opposite side of that, Ryan. What do I do? Is he play lock in? Is he just driving towards me? Yeah, and the fact he play lock backwards down towards the edge of the box as well. You sort of have to, to be aware to mark that passing lane, but then you have to worry about the, the pass into the middle. He could cancel the play lock as well and, and just potentially go straight for goal. But he's so diff difficult to mark um, Nicholas in those areas. He seems to... <laughs> he's just making the right choices at the right moments all the time. He's very, very difficult to play against when you're down down by two, you know that you, you can't make any mistakes here. This could be a bit of an attack that was 
played out in the end. There is still Enro Yilmaz against Dula Mike underway. There's updates in that and there's goals. Goals is the key point there. There's been a few goals in that game. As soon as we can, we'll give you the update there. Well, by the looks of things, again, double game player at the moment, which is beautiful. Emre Yilmaz is in the lead in that game still. And uh, there's not long left in it at all. Six minutes away. Nicholas looking to get back under. So his usual winning ways. And I'll tell you who he'll be playing against. Gio Bundy or the stranger in the round two upper bracket there. What's crazy the thing, Ryan, we've still got 60 more players to get underway. Anders has not even kicked off yet. I'm excited just for the, not even just the, the gameplay itself, but the the expressing of emotions, the celebrations, the just everything that he brings to the table. As we see the, the clock ticking down here from Nicholas. He knows it's done. There's two minutes added on here. He's got a corner, oh, sorry, a goal kick for Danny Pitbull. How does he pick himself up from this? After such a high this week, it's, it's difficult for, for Danny now not to get in his own head. You know, he's playing against a player of Nicholas's quality. It's going to be a tough game. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be tough, but of course you have to, to realise that no game is a given. And especially when you're up against somebody as the, the talent of Nicholas, you know that he's won the competition before. He's performed well in the FGS this year, ranked amongst the best players in Europe, and he will progress into the next stage. Of course, Danny Pitbull is not eliminated. He still has the, the li lifeline of the loser bracket. But from this position, he has to win five games in a row, Brandon. Five in a row wow. to secure himself. You're literally playing Elimination FIFA, aren't you? Yeah. Every single game, Elimination FIFA. And the worst part of that, Ryan, it, it basically means you've got to play FIFA tomorrow as well. You have to be playing FIFA tomorrow because of how the lower bracket works. After a number, as you said, five wins back to back to back. It will take you through to tomorrow. It's going to be a very long and draining weekend of FIFA, but it will be worth it if you've got a ticket on the plane to Istanbul. Nicholas said it last time, defensively also, such a solid player. It's a clean sheet for him in the, in the bag there for the current E-Champions League winner. He's going to be full of confidence. Yep, absolutely. He knows that he's just an extra step closer towards securing his spot, his spot in the top eight again, similar to what he'd done last year. But his performance, we didn't get to see the, the whole performance, but... You can just tell it's a complete performance to keep a clean sheet against somebody like Danny Pitbull. So, yeah, it's a huge, huge result for Nicholas. Yeah, we didn't give you all the highlights of that game, but Emre Yilmaz, we can confirm, was the winner of that. Emre Yilmaz, Ryan, great to see continuing that run of form from February now into eight points of the knockout stages. Yeah, absolutely. And Team Hullet, they always seem to just find the gems always in the FIFA scene. And Emre Yilmaz is, is another one of those who honestly could go the distance, not even to secure top eight. I think he could genuinely, he's that good, he could even win the whole thing. So... It's going to be a, a huge, huge um, result for him. A huge boost of confidence to beat someone like Dylan Mike, who um, needs to pick himself back up. It's a, it's a big loss to take. Um, we don't know the final score, but we know that there's been quite there, a few There was a lot more. of goals. Yeah, there's been a lot of goals conceded there for Dylan. Yeah, he have to pick himself up, as you said, lower bracket now for him. There's still five more rounds of action to come here in day one of the Champions League. But for now, it's over to Richard and the guys on the stage. Thank you very much, Brandon. Great breaking down the action right there in the commentary position. Ryan, you were all right as well. Uh, fellas, great, great first round of action. We've seen eight matches. Come to you first, Grav. We'll start with Nicholas, because that was the last game that we just saw there. Just doing the business. Doing what he does best, winning those 50-50 matches. The Mike just talked about it like an hour ago, and that's it. He just wins those kind of matches. But I got to talk about set pieces when we were talking with, about Nicholas, because every single leg, at least he scores one goal from a set piece, and what, that's what he did. I think that makes a huge difference in these knockout matches. We always talk about margins, and that's one of those separations that gives you that edge. And then we know that Nicholas can close out games, and it kind of sends a message to the competition as well. Coming into this, you would argue that Danny Pitbull, most informed player, yep. winning E-Serie A, not only did he, he lose to Nicholas, he didn't score. He didn't have anything to take away from that. That's tough to bounce back, and he has to go, no, go to the lower bracket and have that, that battle that we talked about that nobody wants right now. Yeah, what's he got, five games in front of him now? if he yeah. wants to get a top eight finish. And you Nic start thinking about that. Yeah, you do. Nicholas just does the job, even when he's at 50%. <laughs> like, it, it baffles me that he can be so consistent and, to us, not even play that well. We've got the opportunity to have a look through some of the best moments from that first game of action. We're going to go to 
in, in my opinion, the rivalry. Nicholas versus Tex. That's the gold conversation. Tex is the man in focus right now. We'll have a look at his moments of this matchup. Mike, talk me through what we saw from Tex, because, again, it was rough sailing. Uh, the uh, waves were up. To a certain degree, that's what I expected. Tex, if you know well, is a little bit slow to get started in FIFA competition. It's always been that way. This is the go-ahead goal here. Beautiful, beats the back line. Still has a lot of work to do, pulls it back. Maybe a little bit of good fortune there, but catches the goalkeeper out of position. Uh, but again, now you got to go up against Ali Bali, potentially first round in the lower bracket. Who wants that type of situation or that type of position? But I don't want to, the, the game didn't necessarily go different or feel different than what I expected. I thought the Tex would get the win. He did that indeed, and it just took him a while to get going. You see, again, brilliant goalkeeper movement there from Vandersaw able to, to cut the angle a tad bit. Yeah, and the thing is, Tex used to be like a skier, like kind of punishing if you press too much. Now it's different because he just does simple X passes. So he punished the second man press of, of his opponent because he second man pressed with the two center backs too much and he, he punishes that so well. And a, a Tex that maybe isn't as flamboyant, I will say, is that an even more dangerous player? because you know he's got it in the back pocket. You know, he's got the, the, the elastic hole pitching wedge to pull out of the bag, but he's got these other clubs as well there. Well, I think he's actually unfairly been labeled. Like, we, we see the skill moves, we talk about them, we rewatch them, they create these moments throughout FIFA history, especially throughout the ecosystem and so forth and so on, but he's always been fantastic defensively. Always, at every point. And that's another reason that you have that consistency. I don't want to be a walking cliche, but defense wins championships. And he wins a lot of the low-scoring affairs. Not every game is pretty, but of course, we do remember when you get that razzle, that dazzle, that shimmy, that shake, a little bit of that extracurricular. And I remember FIFA 19, we always talked about Tex, what you said, like the four-time Elastico against Tuga, those kind of things but we never talked about his defense scoring like zero one two goals and he keeps doing it every single year and a man whose sheets are always clean <laughs> nicholas 99 <laughs> fc um he did the business how again. do you know that <laughs> we've, got, I, well, you just know that. Look, we've got a good friendship in nico um Grav, mm -hmm. talk me through what we saw from Nicholas. We didn't see that many things from the first leg. Nothing really happened. But I think Nicholas is kind of confident in those situations because Danny Pitbull, when he's nil-nil in the first leg, he's got to be like impatient because he just wants to score goals. And that's what we saw in the second leg. Two quick goals by Nicholas and just he, he managed to keep the possession. Medio, medio, medio. See, yeah, I've got yeah. the Spanish. I got, it, I got it ready to go. I'm ready. I'm on deck. I've got one Spanish phrase in me and it's sing gluten. <laughs> That's what I want Spanish phrase. Mike, <laughs> talk to me about Nico. He looks, he looks dangerous. He looks like he's, he's got a bit of a chip on his shoulder to say, I'm going to do this back to back. I mean, at that point, too, I think you start making the case for, is he the greatest FIFA player of all time? I don't say that lightly. We've had a few different players come into that discussion. But, again, you talk about the consistency, and it's terrifying to go up against Nicholas. In that game, you go into that second leg, it's nil-nil. You already feel like you're losing because you know how he gets down, if it's going to be a first-to-score type of scenario, and the way that he closes out matches. It's just like another day in the office. And it's so difficult because any small mistake at this level – that costs you everything, and then you can't get that momentum back. Yeah, and I want to talk about a potential third round match between Nicolas and Embry. Oh, he's tell building. Me, tell me. He's building. Potential, potential. Because <laughs> I, I think Nicolas playstyle against Danny Pitbull's playstyle plays really well because Danny Pitbull is kind of a real fast attacking player, and he just. Nicolas feels confident in those situations, but against Embry, a more mechanical, more tactical, more on the wing, more German crosses, I think Nicolas could be a little more. I don't know. I'm not that confident. I feel like I'm on a game show because <laughs> let's bring Elmer Yilmaz out. <laughs> <laughs> right, come on down. Uh, unbelievable performance from yourself. You are now 6-0 in the <laughs> E-Champions League here in the uh, London studio. How does it feel? Yeah, I'm feeling very confident for now. Uh, we worked hard on this game against Dylan Mike. We analyzed him with Team Gullit. So we worked hard on this game. So it uh, pays off. And first off, congratulations, of course. Thank you. I want to build off that. What does that preparation look like? What can you tell us? Because all we see out of the, the, the whole at camp is results on results on results. Yeah, it's like a lot of practicing and uh, watching your game back and watching the game of other players, like, for example, Nicolas, Tex, watching those games at Team Gullit. Hmm. I want to quick ask you, because I was just talking about this, do you think your game style suits well against a potential man against Nicolas? Uh, nah, Nicolas, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. Uh, I think uh, I like to play against a player who's at, who can, uh, who's of the attack, but Nicolas is so good in defending, it's so hard to score against him. Emre, ten months ago, we were in Copenhagen, biggest, mm. one of the biggest tournaments of the year, 
you finished in the top four. Yeah. What's changed from then being a semi-finalist to potentially now winning the E Champions League? Nah, I don't think of that. It's just round for round for me. Just every round is different. And uh, yeah, I'm just working on that. And Emery, can you walk us through some of these goals? Because you scored a lot of them. Yeah. Mm. Uh, this one, a uh, weird finish. It was uh, not green time, but it's a good goal. And that's weird for you because you're always green time. No, no, no. I'm the one who's never green timing. <laughs> well, how come you never. say that? I saw you. You scored like four goals green timing. Yeah, uh, today, today. <laughs> <laughs> Just today, only today. Um, talk to me, uh, Mike mentioned it about Team Hull as, as an organization, as a club. Yeah. How, how nice is it to be part of Team Hully? I mean, look green at time. <laughs> Just throwing that out there, green time. First time, green time. <laughs> These goals, I'll be honest, and sorry, Dolan, if you're listening, you made him look like, yeah. like an amateur player. You, you dominated this game. Yeah, but for mm. me, it's or I dominate the opponent or I get dominated. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last, last question for me. Do you think, like Ole Lito won the Prem a couple of weeks ago, yeah. do you think you have what it takes to win a tournament this year? Yeah, it's it's very hard to win a tournament because Ole Lito is always uh, so consistent, like three, four years. So I want to be like that consistent and uh, win trophies in the future. 6 nil, he's managing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, you saw the stats. An incredible performance, Emre. We know that you're very busy, yeah. so we will uh, thank you now <laughs> yes, uh, thank you. for coming. I'm, I'm still blown away by the goals, <laughs> the, the green time finishing. Yeah, we saw the highlights, the yeah, green no. time everywhere. <laughs> no, hey, I'm no, just no. saying, from our position, everything's getting green. He's like, I never do it. I was like, what do we watch? <laughs> we watching or play a different game? <laughs> Always red. <laughs> Emre, thank you very much. Yes. Good luck with the uh, future rounds, and we hope to see you soon back on the main stage. Yes, thank you. And an incredible performance, fellas. Um, do you think he can do it? I mean, last year, he showed all this potential. He was really a rookie on the scene, and then that built the expectation. Now you have expectations harder often to play with that, and he's lived up to it thus far. Still a lot of season left to go, but... Yeah, he certainly I, has Graf. I gotta say, top four, World Cup last year, this year potentially, top one, Champions League. I think so. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, Mike. Mm -hmm. I know you enjoy this bit. This is all about Mike LaBelle, this moment, and it's all about MasterCard as well, because it's the MasterCard <laughs> moment of the match. It's picked by Mike, it's analysed by Mike. Take it away. I didn't score the goal. I'm just breaking down what I watched, and we're going to look at multifaceted attacking here. We're looking at Tex and the go-ahead, and you're going to see this over-the-top through ball that's taken advantage of by a lot of the pros here, and it's all about triggering runs and targeting matchups. So you're going to have a first-time pass uh, to Dino, and then he's going to hit that first-time pass over the top here, and you see the back line's a little bit flat, and you already got a player that's triggered. You've already made that run. Therefore, you're able to take advantage. It's so hard and so difficult to get past some of these defensive back lines. We've seen a lot of back fives now instead of a back four. Then you have a little bit of good fortune. You got a surface and I love this play as well because all the pros look at the goalkeepers you have to take a glance up you see the goalkeeper recognition he scoots him over he's gonna go the other direction R9 of course converts and in this case for Tex this was the go-ahead this is what allowed him to push forward and cause an upset and I would call that an upset against Ali Bali just based on form yeah that was our mascot moment of the match right there Grav the bracket is starting to take shape. Talk me through what we've seen so far for everyone else at home. I mean, obviously, Emre Jimmerf winning 8 2. Sting that match is going to have well. so many goals. Giovundi winning 7 7 6. Nicolas progressing as well. And then we got to talk about Marwen against Antonio Radelja, who upset it top. Mm -hmm. And then Umut against oh. Tex. Are we watching that live? I want to watch Umut that live. Versus Tex. It's it's what dreams are made of. It's actually my You could dream write a better night. script for that. I, I don't know. The, the bracket's the bracket. I can't wait. Yeah. Uh, this is what's happening in the lower bracket, starting uh, to formulate Ooh. right there. Those are elimination matches, Mike LeBell. That was because of Rafsu, eh? That was I, because of Rafsu. I can't believe it. Yeah, <laughs> Rafsu, if, if you've been following the competitive scene, has been around for a long period of time. Going up against Ali Bali in an elimination match. One of them has to go home, and they're going to go home early. You got Tom down there as well. You got the stranger, another OG, I would consider, in the competitive world. And Danny Pitbull, who we just saw lose on stage and, and not get a goal um, under his belt. And this is going to be quite the battle back. You got to try to forge some momentum. But the reality is some of the best players in the world are going home early. Grav, talk to me. You've been in a lower bracket before. Many times. <laughs> <laughs> me, me too. Me too. We know the, we know the lower times. bracket. Grav starts in a lower bracket. Um, how do you now recompose yourself? You've just suffered defeat. You've got to get back on the horse and you've got to start galloping. You, you just can, cannot take that many times because there's like, I'd say, I don't know, one hour maybe or a, half an hour. So you got to just 
in my opinion, you gotta go to the toilet, maybe clean your hands, wash your face, kind of get away from this competitive scene, okay, this competitive kind of uh, momentum, and then if you're like, you just gotta do some breathing, you gotta analyze your opponent, and then you will, you come back and you play, because if you just go straight to the game, it's gonna be tough for you. I've always said in competitive FIFA, your best attribute might be short-term memory because there's always going to be adversity and ups and downs, and I can't get the, uh, the image out of my head of him galloping on a horse right now <laughs> as he battles through the lower bracket. He's a champion. Momentum. Yeah, a little yeah. momentum. One, one player who has momentum <laughs> and could be a champion, he's after the break. It's the one and only, it's the wonder kid, the Danish superstar himself, Anders Vergang, is on the main stage. Make sure that you do not go anywhere. Leah and Ryan will be keep keeping you up to date with how Anders games progress.
536 games without losing. It looks to be a double for RB Leipzig, but who has got the goal? Is it Vergang with it? A couple of step overs, of course it is. There is so much anticipation in the air for Anders Vergang's. I know they will win every match. Looking to do something historic after be 4 0 down on the triple. Oh! 4 0 to 4 4. Who is captain? You're Umit. I'm the captain. Go, oh, yeah. captain over there. Hello everyone and welcome back to London, England to the E Champions League knockout stages. We saw some exciting matches in that first half of the first round. We have eight more to go in the first round. Lots of excitement expected. Talk us through the first matches that we saw. Absolutely. We saw a lot of goals in a lot of the games. We saw Emre Yilmaz making a statement up against Dalamak, winning 8-2 to progress into the next stage. Of course, that doesn't mean Dalamak is eliminated. He falls into the loser bracket where he will play another game. He has to win five on the bounce now to progress into the final eight. But of course, the other matches, we saw Nicholas victorious against Danny Pitbull. We saw Antonio Rodeja getting a, a victory over XL Tom. We saw Marwan winning against Van Basten. So many big games and big results. Big results indeed. I think I'm um, talking about Emre a little bit. Obviously, one of the only two to go undefeated in the group stages to start his tournament this weekend with a scoreline like that. I think that'll give him a lot of confidence. What do you think? Yep, absolutely. So theoretically, he's 6-0 and in this stage of the, the E Champions League because he's won the first five in the previous phase and continued his rich vein of form in this stage as well. Of course, we have to mention the, the main feature game we spoke about is Tex, what, what was Tex versus Oli Boli. Tex winning that game two goals to one. It could have been a little bit more for Tex as the, the game went on. A few more chances opened up, but Oli Boli didn't do enough to come back into it. Maybe change a little bit of things too late. Maybe he left the game uh, a little bit away away from him, but he didn't create enough, in my opinion, to come back into the game. But he's somebody that I rate as one of the best players in the scene, even practicing against him, playing against him in tournaments. I think, for me, he's one of the best players. Well, he's got a lot to prove. Still lots of time for him to come back in his future matches. But taking a look at the rest of these matches today, Ryan, walk us through the fixtures we can expect in this second half of round one. Yes, we have huge matches going on. Of course, the three featured matches we will be highlighting, of course, are Deeper Sholto up against Hezers. That's a huge matchup. One of my favorites coming into this as well, an underdog in my opinion, in Nick Sneb represent, representing Team Footwiz up against Montaxa, performing well in the East Area a few days ago, reaching top four in that competition. And of course, the main featured game today is going to be Danny Visser up against Anders. Of course, Anders 5-0. Danny Visser with a record of 3-2. and two. So that's going to be a huge game. Can Anders keep on his, his rich reign of form as well, progressing on into the next stages of the E-Champions League. Or will there be an upset? I would definitely say it would be an upset if Danny Visser um, wins that game. But of course, I mentioned already the uh, featured matches. Hezzas up against Di Pesciotto. That is going to be a massive, massive game. Yes, definitely. I think um, Pesciotto going 4-1 and one in the group. So not a bad record. Only one loss. Looking to kind of maintain that form, I'd imagine, today. Um, Hezzas going 3-2 and two in the group. So a very common score line that we've seen. Yep, absolutely. And of course, for Pesholto, he's ranked seed number three coming into this tournament. His only loss was against Emre Yomas, who we saw winning 8-2 in the first round. Of course, we look at Hezard. You spoke about his record being 3-2. and two. He was actually 0-2, and two, similarly to Dallin Mike coming into this. So he's very familiar with having his backs against the wall in these competitions where every game for him was a must win. And this is going to be something similar. Going to be seed number 30 in this tournament as well. So that's going to be something that, for me, I would say that is an upset. Hezers has performed really well over the last couple of years from coming into the scene, and he's one of the players in the Italian scene as well that is very, very well known. Speaking a little bit about, about Pesciotto, in uh, the E-Champions League 2022, he actually topped the group stages, number one, um, and ended up going out in the knockouts to Michael Fisher. Um, but speaking a little more about our Stage two game between Nick Sneb and Montaxer. Another great matchup that we're about to see. Absolutely. Both these players were three and two in the Swiss format. Montaxa ranked number 14 in the seeding. Top four in the East area recently. Of course, he's a player that he grinds the game a lot. He's always ranked amongst one of the top players in the division rivals where you have to use that to qualify for the FGS tournaments in Europe and of course in and around the world. And he's always performed really, really well. In my opinion, one of the best players we have in Europe up against Nick Sneb. I mentioned having a three and two record. He was two and two and solidified his spot in this phase, defeating Matthias 10 goals to three, which was a 
a massive, massive score then, especially up against the runner-up in the E-Champions League last year. And of course, coming in at seed and number 19, I think he's somebody to keep an eye on. He's definitely very, very skillful around the area. And I know the meta's changed a little bit more. There's been a lot of players playing the five at the back formation, but I think that game could have a lot of goals. Definitely. I think it's always important to remember players like Nick Sneb is so young. So to have the composure and the confidence that he has to perform at that level is impressive. Absolutely. And our main game, of course, is Danny Visser up against Anders. Danny Visser with a record of three and two. He was one and two, so he managed to win two on the bounce to get that record and to progress into this stage. But of course, we've already spoken many a time about Anders. Five and all record, seed number two, scoring the most goals in the Swiss format as well. And of course, very, very well known for his, his attacking style with the step overs, the skill moves in the right area. And of course, his celebrations on the stage, his emotions, he's not afraid to show how he's feeling at that moment as well. Definitely. I think Danny Visser, formerly known to create a lot of content as well around FIFA, also plays professional FIFA. Um, but I think, how do you think his mental will be going into a game like this against someone that was 5-0? It's a tough game. Of course, playing against anyone in this competition is going to be tough. But for me, playing against someone like Anders is, he's sort of an unknown quantity in a way, just because of course he's performed well. We saw him coming into prominence because of his foot champions record. He went. 535 games, I believe, was unbeaten. So that's a, a huge record to have. But he's shown that he deserves to be at this level. 5-0, defeating a lot of the top players as well to reach this stage is, is definitely not an easy thing to do. No, and I think Brandon mentioned this before earlier that, um, you know, someone of his age, with his experience, to have a weekend league record like that, to be, you know, essentially the only one to have that record, but to come in to his professional FIFA debut and go 5-0 and in groups is... Unheard of, maybe? Yeah, absolutely. And I think he has a lot of confidence. He backs himself. Even as you hear from a lot of the players, he doesn't really play a lot of practice games like in the in the warm-ups. He seems to just relax. He knows what he's, he's coming here to do. His game style, for him anyway, he's sort of very confident in that and he trusts it. And I think that it's going to be a tough game for, for Danny Visser to overcome. But yeah, he should believe himself and he, he could do it. But it's going to be very, very difficult. Well, it'll be a good game to see indeed. I'm excited to see what kind of celebration celebrations Ander will come up with. But we are going to take a quick, quick break. Don't go anywhere. We will be back very shortly with the round two intensity.
Hello, guys, and welcome back. We are just minutes away from kickoff between three very exciting matches. Our main stage match, of course, being between Anders and Danny Visser. Predictions? Ooh, that's tough. I think it's hard to go against Anders, but again, you have to show respect to Danny Visser. He's a great player as well. But with the way Anders performed in the, the prior stage to this, I feel as if it would be wrong to go against him. He scored a lot of goals, of course, the top scorer as well in the competition so far. And I feel as if he's going to continue with that. So I think I'm going to have to lean towards Anders taking it. What about you? I think the same. I would like to see a few goals so we can see a few celebrations. If you were a FIFA player, which you were, yes. <laughs> which you are, what's your go-to celebration? Uh, are no, you like no, no active? Celebrations. None. Nah, we're skipping it. We're skipping Just the celebration. Anders is different though, which I think I like the most about that. I feel as if you should be emotive with it, but I just, yeah, I'm just skipping the replay. I'm sitting <laughs> Calm, back. Calm, cool, yeah. collected. Yeah. Well, last in last time in February, we saw a few of the, we saw stoic yeah. for a few minutes, a half, first leg even, and then we saw some emotion get into him. So I'm excited to see what we can expect from him. Talking about Danny Visser a little bit, obviously going three and two in the group stages. I think that, like we mentioned, going up against Anders might be a feat for him, but I don't know in that, obviously I'm not a professional FIFA player, so I don't know what it's like, but maybe you can tell us I think in some ways that's motivating because, you know, if he manages to come out on top, that's a huge upset for him and adds a lot of confidence to his game. Absolutely. You could say that there's no pressure in a way on Danny Vissa's shoulders here. Of course, everyone would expect him to lose this game because of how Anders has performed. But I think it, you have to give respect to Danny Vissa because of what he's done throughout the years as well. He's been performing really, really well at the highest level. And of course, he spoke about how much he does a lot of content as well outside of just competing. But he's somebody that you have to give a lot of respect to. But again, it's just hard just to go against somebody like Anders. But I think there's some solace in the fact that Anders started a little bit slow in the first time we saw him. He was down by a few goals and he managed to turn it around. So maybe if that happens again, Danny Vissa could maybe hold it out and see um, see the game through and perform a little bit better in that, that game than his Anders' previous opponent did. But we're going into the game now. Yeah, the countdown has begun. 10 seconds to go to kick off our main stage game. Anders up against Danny Visser. A lot of excitement soon to come. Let's talk a little bit about how they are setting up for these matches, requirements with their foot squad. Walk us through that. Yeah, of course, there's going to be, a, I think, a few changes we saw in the, the earlier um, section of round one. A lot of players were Using the staples in their team, I think you're most likely going to be seeing the likes of Lucio guaranteed in the squad. You're going to be seeing Ruud Hullet. Um, Arnaud Ronaldo, of course, I, I think is a, a guaranteed staple in the squad as well. But of course, there's some Champions League items that have come into fruition since the, the last phase of the E-Champions League. The likes of Fafana, of course, he has his UCL live item. Alaba as well. Of course, those items are um, entwined with how the actual football in the Champions League is going. So, of course, if the team progresses, they get upgrades. So, of course, those upgrades could put them into the team, especially if you're playing a, a back five. Alaba and left centre-back is perfect. Listen, I'm not going to try and infiltrate this uh, this show with my Real Madrid propaganda, but you know how I feel about it. Yep. Anyone that has Alaba in their team, we're here for it. We love it because they're going all the way. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. We are just about kicked off for this main stage game between Anders and Danny Visser. I never answered your question about prediction, but I'm going to go on the side of Danny Visser. It's not a, it wouldn't be unheard of. I don't think it would be a, a it, it would be a shock, but I think that he's definitely got the ability to do so. We spoke about a lot of players playing uh, the five at the back formation and the five, four, one, or the three, four, two, one. It looks like both of these players are going to be doing that. Well, what's interesting when you get to this stage of the competition is, you know, these are the best of the best. And from these 32 best, it's a potential shot there from Danny Visser, but defended well. Gets the possession on the corner. This is a good start. I like how we're saying the closer you get to the final, the better, the better players you will uh, encounter. And I think that, you know, the further we get, the higher the stakes get. Absolutely. I think for... For Danny Visser, he would have known that every game is, is sort of a must win from that position of being one and two. So coming into this, I think nothing will change as well. But of course, our other featured games going on, we do have Hezzas up against Deepa Schultz. We have the luxury of being able to check out the replay, Leah. And this is the goal here that we're going to be seeing. Building up play. You can see the triggered run already there from Miles back in his half. It's Hezzas in on goal, and it's a powered shot in to the middle of the goal. But the movement from Bichotto moved the keeper out of the way there. But it's a bright start for Hezzas. Great start. He's going to want that to gain some confidence going into these uh, two legs. Anders with the possession now, looking to try and find some space to get a shot on goal. 
but doesn't quite get the shot away. The space is closed down by Danny Visser. I think one thing for Danny Visser when you come and get up against somebody like Anders is genuinely, in my opinion, anyway, I feel as if Anders is the best player in the world at step overs. When it comes to any angles, exiting it or using it for a speed boost, he always finds the, the right move at the right time and it's very difficult to play against and he's ruthless as well. He's not somebody that will will rest when he's three goals up or four goals up. He'll keep on scoring, he'll keep on celebrating, but it's Danny Visser on the attack here. No, I'll go ahead and say that Danny Visser's had a, a very bright start. I think that, you know, he's... We're still only 16 minutes in, but he's had a, a few more chances than Anders. But do you think this is tactical from Anders? Just kind of, you know, reading his opponent, reading the play style and see how he's going to want to continue to attack? Yeah, absolutely. I think when you're you're coming into the game, it's a two-legged affair, so you could have, you could utilize the first moments just to gauge what your opponent's doing, and that's going to be a chance there. Looks like I spoke Anders. too soon. Yeah, that's a great chance there from Anders, building up with the step overs, playing it in there, and it's a left-footed shot across goal to give him the one goal lead. Not too much of a celebration so far. I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed, but I'm sure maybe the second goal will see some. There's a chance there. It was a a commitment there from Danny Visser to try and block the shot there, but it wasn't able to be blocked. Just finds it like through the legs as well, so that's a, a tough one to concede from Danny Visser there. But for Anders, it's a, a perfect start. I think that's the thing about Anders and his gameplay is, is he capitalizes on chances that he gets, and if his opponent, you know, might have more possession, might be a little more intense in the build-up, Anders will just, you know, take what he can get from any chance he gets, and score and that's what he did. He's maintaining that position outside of the box. He's got pull it, passes it through, takes a shot on goal, 2-0 Anders. It just looks easy. <laughs> it, it genuinely looks easy. I don't know. It just looks so easy there where he hasn't done anything spectacular there. It looks as if it's a very simple goal, but he's done enough there just to make the movement, the passing there, baiting Danny Rissa into trying to cut passing lanes that of course, you have to be committed to, but there's just so many options going forward for Anders there. He's twisting and turning, he's utilizing of step overs in the right area, and it leads to a, another easy goal there. So it's two goals to the good in the first moments of the first leg for Anders up against Danny Vissel. Well, you could see it with the, the shake of his head after scoring that second goal that it was easy for him, as you said. But all to play for, lots of time left for Danny Visser, and I think that the first, I mean, again, I'm not a pro player. There's, it's a lot different under the lights when you have your coach behind you, when you're competing for you know, a place in the E-Champions League final and the prize money that's on the line. Um, I just play weekend league in my office in my home. Um, so it's a lot different, I'm sure. But for him to kind of feel out the way that Anders plays or how he's approaching this match, how he's setting up, what his tactics are, do you think that maybe that will almost help him continue in this game? I feel as if for Anders, as I mentioned already, how, how ruthless he is. He seems to thrive under these, these situations where you have to remember he, from when he was young, I'll speak about him just as his attack comes to a close. I believe he would have been 14 or so when he was on that record in Foot Champions. So he's already used to, to having a lot of people viewing his games online. He was streaming that, that, that live every single week. So he's very used to being under the limelight and having that pressure. This attack comes to a close, of course. We do have the other featured matches we spoke about. One of my favorites is Footwiz Nick Step taking the lead there up against Montaxa just on the edge of half time there. So that's a big lead there. We saw the replay, the goal there from Nick Step to take the lead. It's a perfect time to get it as well, yeah, just before half time. Exactly that. Building up some momentum for the second half. It's funny, you mentioned Anders, you know, having that Foot Champions record that he had streaming for several thousands of people at 14 years old. When I was 14 years old, I was literally making potions in my backyard, I can't lie. Um, so <laughs> different different, uh, different experiences for sure, but a huge accomplishment for him. And, and to be able to start his FIFA career at such a young age, he's got the world ahead of, ahead of him in the future. Another chance from Anders here. Janola on the ball, great timed. Far corner, no celebration again for him, but 3-0 up before halftime. Wow. Yeah, he's dangerous, I'll be honest. And you spoke about how he's had a lot of viewers in the past and it still does, of course, but he's had a target on his back from minute one and he utilizes, again, the step overs into the green time that shot there from Ginola on his left foot across goal. But we have the pleasure of having the latest scores here so we can keep you up to date. We see here, Auburn leading 2-1 against JRG in the first leg, of course. Joseph down three goals to one against Daniel Seven. 
Ketadalo as well, another player from France, a fantastic player up in his matchup. We see Neat, two goals up against Pepe. Neat is another player to, to keep an eye on as well. I'm sure Gravison will have a lot of great words to say about the young Spaniard as well. And Lex up against Levy Finn. That is a huge match as well, two fantastic players. I think both go under the radar here as Danny Visser tries to build up. It's a great heel to heel drag there in the box, but a good save from Anders' goalkeeper there. You mentioned before Anders just kind of having that, you know, nonchalantness to his game, and I think that's what we're seeing. I keep forgetting that it's not even the 40th minute yet, and, you know, we've seen three goals from Anders. I'm interested to see how Danny Visser will kind of refocus at halftime and, and re perhaps invent his gameplay tactics or game plan rather for the second half. What do you think he needs to change going into the second half? It's hard to say because changing formation sort of fall into to Anders' hands here. Playing a back four would allow there to be a lot more space. You have to think, because see the three goals when there's there are three defenders or three centre backs there in position to try and defend those spaces and that's what worked out for him. So I don't think changing anything drastic right now is the play. I think he could just sort of play it down a little bit, try and get a goal back into this game. And even if he could end the first leg down by three goals to one, for example, there's still a long way to go to try and stem a comeback. And this could be a chance here, building up. That was good. Goalkeeper movement from Anders. Almost was three to one. A few chances for Danny Visser. So I don't think he should be disappointed necessarily in that performance in the first half, but lots to play for in the second. Yeah, absolutely. That was a bright spot towards the end of the first half there, just to create that chance. If you had green time, that I feel as if that could have found the back of the net despite the goalkeeper movement, but he just wasn't meant to be there for Danny Visser. But as we mentioned, he's still got the second leg to play. But for Anders, this man here, he's just started as he as he left off. Of course, the, one of the only players, one of the two players alongside Emre Yilmaz to have a 5-0 and record coming into this. So he's unbeaten and he's already three goals up in the first half against Danny Visser. Have we seen anyone in professional FIFA history go completely undefeated in a tournament? I'm sure there has been a, a few cases of that. Yeah, there must be in the, in the past. I don't know off, off the top of my head, but there have been, of course, fantastic performances from a lot of players in competitions that have, have become victorious as well. It would be a, quite the storyline, especially for someone so young and, and so talented. I also noticed that obviously Danny Visser and several of the other competitors this weekend have coaches alongside them or player um, uh, player guests, but Andrews is alone. And I think that that's even more impressive to, to be able to maintain that composure. Taking a look at the little bit at the top of your screen, the score lines from the other games. Because we mentioned already, it was Lex up against Levy Finish, still 2-2 in that game. Neat conceded now. He's still winning 2-1 up against Pepe. Obrid is still leading in his game alongside Daniel Seven as well, who's also winning. Keta Dilo as well. So it's always good just to keep an update on those games. Of course, when we do have those, the information, I'll manage to relay it across. And of course, our other featured match on the stage is Hezers up against Deeper Shelter. We do have a replay here and an update. Is Hezers going to make it two goals to the good? We can see the goal here building up. Slowly but surely, with his centre midfielders, a driven pass and then another driven pass across there. And it's a very easy finish for Hezes, a cross goal there to find the back of the net. Two goals now up against Deepa Shelto. A little fun fact about Hezes, and in my depths of research, I found this fact. So I'm not 100% sure of the validity of it, but if it's true, it's very cool. Hezes was actually a former competitive Call of Duty player. Really? Okay, that's yeah, that is FIFA, impressive. That is impressive. Right? Yeah. Being able to just balance or have the, the skill set to compete in you know, the eSports is a massive feat as well, but he's showing his, his FIFA talent today for sure. Chance here. But defended well by Anders. What's interesting is it's one thing to be very good at one video game, but to be very good to compete at a professional level for two, especially Call of Duty eSports, impressive. Just one of those people that are good at all video games. Seems that Anders has slowed down the play a little bit. He's 3 nothing up. Do you think he wants to score more, or do you think he's happy with this lead? Yeah, of course. Anders is going to look to to find the spaces here. And of course, as the time ticks on, you know that Danny Viss is sort of going to be forced into making a play in terms of 
pushing more bodies forward, being a little bit more susceptible to counter-attacks because you have more bodies going forward. We get a quick pass in there from Anders as well. But it was a good step forward there from Danny Bissa to, to cut out the danger. We've seen a little bit of shift in the gameplay, though, whether that's from the side of Anders or from the side of Danny, not looking to perhaps attack as fast and, and concede from misplaced passes. Another chance from Elowiron here, but doesn't quite get the power on it that he needed to put that in the back of the net. Yeah, it was a, a build-up play that you sort of is, is synonymous with FIFA 23 nowadays, just looking for that ball into the box. He's headed it down there. It was a, an early bit of goalkeeper movement there from Anders just to sort of predict where that shot was going to go. And it, again, it was untimed or it wasn't timed green, so it wasn't a huge success um, rate to, to get that goal. Maintaining some of that possession. Misplaced pass there by the left back. Danny Besser regains some of that possession. He's looking to penetrate that, the lines of Anders, but can't seem to find the space. Anders is really good at reading. And could this be a chance here from Ronaldinho? Continues the pressure, but ends up going out. Yeah, Anders is getting a bit more <laughs> emotive right now, as you can see. He's still up by three goals, of course. The pause was queued there from Danny Viss. I think there's going to approach a time now where he might want to just change a, a few bits of his game style going into this game. Maybe it's personal. I don't necessarily think he needs to change anything drastically tactical-wise. I think there's, there's a long way to go. He doesn't need to, to go to a back four, maybe try and approach this, this latter stage with the mindset of he has to score in order to, to try and get back into this game. We've seen bigger comebacks than a three-goal deficit before, so he's definitely capable of doing it, but it's going to be tough to, to try and shut out Anders for the rest of the, the remaining time. Definitely. I mean, we said perhaps an unlucky matchup for his first game, but not conceded in the second half so far and has a full second leg to play. Um, maybe he can rethink some changes for that second leg. And then worst case scenario, he drops to the loser's bracket, which will allow him to have one more chance at staying in the competition. I think there has been a change, though, in, in formation here. It looks as if Danny Viss has gone to a back four, I believe. And Anders has remained in his, his trusted back five. You mentioned perhaps that wasn't something that you would have maybe done yourself. Yeah, actually, corrected there. It's hard to say because his players are moving around, but I think he might still be in the, the back four. I'm not too sure, but either way, he still needs to to try and generate one attack this game. Even if he could leave this leg with only a deficit of two, that's going to be a, a huge boost of confidence thinking that he can come back into this game. Of course, having a two-goal lead is always a cliche statement of it being dangerous to, mm. to defend. So it, it will give him a, le a lease of confidence that he possibly doesn't have right now because a three-goal deficit, as I said, against Anders is going to be difficult to it's overturn. He's got some possession here. That was a good ball into Alawiram, but... Again, Anders read that well and, and regains that possession from his back line, looking to build out the back. And be dangerous on that counterattack. That rhymed. <laughs> <laughs> Last moments of this first leg in our main featured game. It looks as if Anders is just going to be happy just to keep possession. Doesn't want to give up the ball here to, to potentially concede but we'll just keep it just to, to wait for the last attack here because if you can just get another goal here with this, the final attack of this game, it wasn't meant to be there. There could be an attack actually, but that is going to be the end of it. The first leg, Leah, three goals to the good for Anders. It's been a, a calm and composed performance. Definitely. Well, a really good start for Anders. And like we said, Danny Visser still has a second leg. We are actually going to hear from Richard because hopefully he can get a few words from either Danny or Anders and see what they have to say about the first leg. Yeah, thank you uh, very much, Leah and Ryan. Great commentary. Uh, just going to step in with Anders. We're watching back this uh, very dominant performance. Anders, quick comment, 3-0 up, cruising. I mean, the game is not over, there's nothing to say. I'll just keep focused. Focus, that's on his mind. Danny. Quick one, tough first game, but another leg to go. 
Uh, exactly, yeah. Uh, I think I started really, uh, really bad, and uh, of course conceded three goals, which is uh, well, <laughs> quite a shame. But uh, I, I, I created some chances, and I think uh, there's a lot to play for in the second leg. Very best of luck, mate. Um, we're just going to have a, a quick look. I can see Nick Sneb and Montaxa getting the game ready. Let's go for a... Let's, let's, we'll, we'll, try, we'll try Montaxa. I was spending a little bit of time with him in the uh, East area. Okay, quick comment. How, how are we feeling? I'm feeling good. Uh, I'm, playing, I'm playing well, but uh, I need to do, to do more um, offensively. But uh, I'm, on, uh, I'm, on the, I'm on a good way. Very best of luck, mate. Um, Guys, back over to you. Second legs getting underway. Thanks a lot, Richard. Well, listen, <laughs> Ryan and I were in stitches listening to the interviews on the main stage. Because yeah, I, fear, <laughs> I actually fear for Richard's health here. Andes was, was staring him down there. But <laughs> managed to get a couple words out of him without <laughs> anything else. But yeah. <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm. At least he got words. Yeah, exactly. You know, he didn't get fully aired. Um, well, you guys, we are just about to get into the second leg, but before we do that, we are going to take a quick break. Don't go anywhere because we will be right back. No matter what you call it, football transcends all languages and unifies us. The UCL Global Native Jersey stands for exactly that. The jersey will officially launch on April 25th, and you'll be able to also collect this jersey in EA Sports FIFA 23 Ultimate Team. Make sure to pick one up at stores or in-game and share the moment using the hashtag Global Native to unite with other fans of the beautiful game. You can now pre-order the jersey exclusively on the official UEFA Champions League online store by scanning the QR code below. 
Welcome back from the break. Of course, we saw our featured matchup there with Anders. Three goals up against Danny Visser. We also saw a slight interview from him. <laughs> I don't think he was happy with the, the game so far, even though he's up by three. Definitely not happy with Richard as well. But yeah, there's still <laughs> the second leg to be played. And of course, he's still in control there. But of course, we do have a results page. We can keep updated with the other games going on there. We already spoke about our featured game. Our other two featured games, of course, with Deepa Shoto up against Hezers. Pashoto down by two goals to one. And alongside Montaxa up against Nick Sneb. Of course, Montaxa leading two goals to one. So he's turned that around. We, of course, didn't get an update there. But let's look at uh, some of the results from the other games. Looking at Shoto Ball and Daniel. Daniel leading four goals to one. Keter Dilo and Kamal. A draw, all square at 2-2. The same with Lex and Levy Finn. Neat still leading, but has conceded two now after the first leg. Of course, Aubrey three goals up against JRG. Of course, there's still the second leg to be played now with these games. So of course, there could be some upsets on the cards here. There could be some comebacks on the horizon as well for some players who are down in the dumps there. Being three goals down, of course, doesn't necessarily mean that it's, it's a game over situation. We've seen comebacks in the past there. We've seen players who are down by four even come back, but down by five. So of course, there's still hope there to be seen to come back into those games. But somebody that's in the lead on the other end of the spectrum is Anders, of course, where he's not happy. He's not happy at all. And it goes to show how how high he had, or well, how, how high his standards are. Despite being up by three, he's not content with his performance. He knows that the game could be brought back from Danny Visser in that second leg, but is there going to be any changes here from Danny coming into this? I think so. I think maybe a mental switch, knowing that, you know, it's, it's not quite do or die for him at this point. He still would get the second chance dropping to that lower bracket, but I think we'll see some more perhaps composure. We kind of saw that in the second half where he didn't concede after yep. conceding three in the first half. Uh, maintain a lot more of that possession. So I think that he's going to have to make yep. some tactical changes. Absolutely. You spoke about composure. There were a few chances he got into the area. He had those opportunities to score. He didn't have the green time finishing at his disposal there. Maybe he's just, just easing into the game a little bit more. And those chances, if he took a, a little bit more time, because of course the goalkeeper movement from Anders sort of gave the, the chance there for Danny Visser to maybe opt towards the, the shot across the other side of the goal there. But again, just a little bit more composure there and he could get some, some goals in this game. Well, we are off in the second leg between Anders and Danny Visser. Anders, of course, leading three goals to nil. 6-0 and oh at this point. This could technically make it 7-0. and oh. There's a chance there from Anders in the first four minutes of the game. What do you expect from Anders in this game? Exactly what we just saw there, the, the chances. He's going to be going forward. He's going to be confident in possession. And he's going to keep on trying to create. And that's exactly what we saw there. Almost a, a chance there on the five-star week for Ovar. And you'd expect that to at least hit the target. But it wasn't meant to be for him in that situation. But he's building up here again. There's his infamous step overs that we talk about so much. He's had a chance there with Ronaldinho, but defended well and read very well by Danny Visser. Maintaining that some some of that possession, looking to be on the attack, find the spaces in order to get that ball in the back of the net for the first time between the two of these players. Yeah, Danny Visser loves to, to trigger the runs there from his midfielders. Just those those runs into the box, just to give the option of of what we call the German cross. You don't necessarily have to play the pass over the top, but just use it as a bait just because your opponent has to to track the run, which is, I think, a key component having the, the five at the back or the three, four, two, one, is that you have the three centre backs to try and um, just suss out the danger a little bit more. You can afford to drag a player back and still have at least four players in defence, plus the midfielders, of course. So, yeah, I think it's very, very useful to defend that. Definitely. We, we can see both of these players being perhaps much more decisive in this game, not wanting to misplace a pass. Ronaldinho straight through, green time. I see, I see it coming. I see the emotion coming. I think one more goal, we see a celebration. What do you think? Yeah, I think that was a, a trademark Anders goal. They're just building up across the pitch. He just wanted to get the ball to a five-star skiller in and around the area. And of course, Ronaldinho was that man. The step over, the green time shot there across goal. Of course, a slight bit of goalkeeper movement there, but I don't think, even if he went the, the, correct, the correct way, I don't think it would have been enough to, to stop that goal from going in. And now it's four goals up a bright start in the second leg for Anders. It's tough to take. Danny Visters, I think, being, again, so early in this first half of the second leg after conceding three in the first leg. Not a great way to start, but crazier things have happened. Yep, absolutely. There's still a little way to go. It's going to be 
a tough ask for him to, to try and get back into this. That's a bit of composure that he needed with taking it down there. But again, the goalkeeper movement and, of course, the, the untimed shot there wasn't enough to, to, I guess, challenge Van der Sar enough there. So I think Anders is comfortable with the way he's defending. He knows that he's sort of in the head of Danny Vista with the way he's defending and moving the goalkeeper. He's moving it to the obvious places you'd expect there. As we see the build-up here, a little bit of luck there just to keep possession for Anders. The step-overs again, the, the step-overs there, and it's going to be... I'm not too sure if that's a corner or a goal kick, but of course, one thing that is guaranteed, there's going to be a pause there from Danny Vissa, and it looks to be some sort of change in terms of player personnel and formation because he needs to get back into this game. I think like we spoke about in the first leg, it's not quite do or die, but he's going to want to do something. He's going to want to change something. I think even listening to the interview that he had with Richard um, after the end of the second leg, he's not fully deflated at this point. And I think that's important to maintain some of that confidence, motivation, I guess. This game started at nil-nil, you know, so kind of forgetting about the last one and going into this, hoping to get the best out of it. I wouldn't say he's playing poorly. Either. He's just had a little bit of a slow start, been unlucky, and Anders has just been the better player. Yep, absolutely. You see the, the triggered runs there from Danny Vissa. It's going to be a key component, again, to try and just push as many bodies forward just so that Anders has to trigger the run. He has to manually track something, which could open up more space there, but it just wasn't meant to be. Of course, as we can see, some of the, the updates going across the screen that we saw. Some updates, I think Neat was up four goals to two instead of the 3-2. The this could be a chance here for Danny Vissa. I think this is... Oh, my Lord. Is that, was that offside? It must have been offside to pull it back. It has to be. If not, then... That would have been a really unfortunate whistle <laughs> at that moment if it wasn't offside. It was close, though. It was definitely very close. I thought he was on, and that was through. But a good chance. A good build-up. A good final pass. This is the space I'm talking about. Danny Vissa has to change formation. A bit lucky there from Anders to get through. Great composure from Danny Vissa at the back, though, because after that unlucky bounce, still ma managed to defend that confidently. Speaking a little bit about, and this is perhaps a silly question, but for those that aren't aware, chance here some... Oh, I don't know if that... Was that the right pass? Probably not. Um, for those that aren't as familiar with the mechanics of the game, timing a shot versus not timing a shot and the likelihood of scoring that goal. Of How course. important is it to time? It's, it's very important at this level to green time. The majority of shots that you find, of course, even the ones that are necessarily not in the box, you've got the ones outside of it. I think that's even more important to time. As we see, it, it could be another chance there. It wasn't time green there from Anders this time, but as we say, just, just timing Trevellas from the edge of the box for next shots we saw. I believe it was Nicholas scoring that goal up against Danny Pitbull in the first round earlier on today with a green time finesse shot. Just timing it just gives you the, the higher percentage of, of chance for it to go in. The first time ball over the top there from Danny Visso. And it's well defended from Anders. Anders being rock solid at the back, I have to say. He was a, a paid actor for us there by red timing that shot <laughs> as we were talking about it. But yeah, Anders has been solid at the back, not letting him get, get through. And I've said it several times, but reading Danny Visser and his build-up play very, very well. Nearing the end of this first half of the second leg. Danny Visser down one goal to nil and four goals to nil on aggregate. What would you do in a situation like this with 45 minutes left? I think for Danny Visser, he has to change in terms of his his tactics. I feel as if maybe the, the upping the depth a little bit, but I think he would have already done that with the pause that he queued in the first 20 minutes or so of the game. So just having that set up, of course, having a, a constant press tactic available is also very important. We see some of the runs here could lead to a chance. And it wasn't meant to be. That is the end of the first half. 1-0 in this leg when it's four goals on aggregate for Anders. And it seems to be smooth sailing so far. We're going to have to see a huge upset for there to be any sort of, of comeback here from Danny Visser. We also saw a comeback associated with Anders earlier on in this FIFA season. It was, of course, in a 2v2 competition, but... They were down by four goals against Team Footwears, him and his teammate. And they came back to draw the game. So you never know. There could be four goals in this second half. But I just, I highly doubt 
there's going to be a comeback here. I, I would be shocked, to say the least, if, if Anders gives up this four-goal lead. It would be a great story. It would be. It's going to be a tough ask for the, to even get a couple goals back, let alone for, for Danny Visser. But if he's going to start, he needs to start now. Start as he means to go on, and that is not the way by giving away possession. The idea was there, but just the execution wasn't perfect. Anders taking advantage of that and looking to capitalize on this counter. Hullet is through with some space, and I'm shocked that that's gone in at that angle. A little bit unlucky and hits him with the gritty. Do we get a celebration from Anders? Not quite. Yeah, I'm not too sure if that was a pass or a shot. If it's a shot, of course, it's great reactions in terms of you know that he's moving the goalkeeper, so you've, you've reacted in time to shoot near post because, of course, he's committed there and he's given you the chance to shoot. Or well, I'm not sure if that was a pass to Ginola in at the near post. I'm not actually sure. I couldn't tell the difference if it was a driven pass or a shot there. But either way, it's found the back of the net for Anders. 5-0 up. And he will be progressing into the next stage, in my opinion, anyway. I don't think there's going to be enough time for there to be any sort of comeback. We haven't seen anything from Danny Vista to show that the comeback is capable. Well, at this point, there's not a lot to lose. So I think that, you know, going a little more attacking and being vulnerable, perhaps, was a potential chance there from Danny Visser. But again, Anders wanting to capitalize on that counter. Three on one situation. I think nine times out of 10 for Anders, this is a goal. But will it be this time? And he takes it out of bounds. Of course, with this game sort of reaching a, a stage where it's almost a guaranteed conclusion, of course, we can look towards the next stage for Anders. We saw Oban when we had an update. He was three goals up against JRG. He, this, that is going to be his opponent in the next round. That is a huge game. Oban, of course, the Italian, he has a, a lot of accolades to his name as well, and he's been fantastic this season. Of course, one of the other featured games going on is Montaxa up against Knicks, and we left that where Montaxa was 2-1 to the good, and it's going to be a chance there from Nick Snev to try and get back into this game as we see the building up here. He's managed to retrieve possession, the step over and the shot across goal into the top corner for Nick Snev. Was this a goal from Denny Visser here? Another one from Anders was. I think it was this allowed. I think that was a yeah, this loud goal there from Danny Visser. We just came back in time just to see that chance there, but. The goal from Nick Snebb was almost a carbon copy of the one that we saw from Anders. Anders on the break here, looking to take that shot with our nine, but not green timed and deflected out. Maintains that possession though. Lots of time, 30 minutes still left in this second half. Like you said, I think the con conclusion is very clear, but it's important for Danny Visser to continue focus because he still has that second chance. Absolutely, he's still is in this competition. He'll be up against the loser between Oberyn and JRG. And that pass there, oh my god, oh. <laughs> that's going to be a goal there. That is a, well. an odd goal to concede. But it's going to be 5-1 now. Again, I still believe that this game is done and dusted. I'd be shocked, but it's maybe just a little bit of confidence there. Especially confidence knowing that Anders can be vulnerable at the back. He can make a mistake, especially with how rock solid he's been at the back and defensively, I think it's still early-ish. If I'm being an optimist, you yeah. never know. 25 minutes to get four, just to equal. I, I, yeah, I can't see it happening. I'll be completely honest. I, yeah, um, for me, this is cemented in as a an Anders victory. I think that's just just about the side. Yeah. Great vision. It's Tony Cruz esque through the middle. You can almost see the hunger a little bit in Danny Visser. Because as you said before, Ryan, having a deficit of fewer goals, it was a good term, but heavy touch. Our other featured game on one of the stages is DP Shuttle up against Hezers. We left that. Hezers was 2-0 up. Of course, ended the first leg 2-1 up. And then there's going to be another goal here from DP Shuttle. Of course, this is a replay. We can see the building up here. The skill moves, the step overs, the shot across goal. And that was to make it 2-2. And of course, there was another goal. Three goals to two now for Deepa Sholto overall on aggregate. This is the second goal in the second leg. Just intricate passing in and around the area. First time, the shot in at the near post this time. Composed. He, yep, he takes the lead, as you can see there. His coach behind him in Samuel Lumina, another player that's been around the scene for a long time. And this is another 
chance here for Anders. A ball roll. He's dwelled on the ball a little bit too much. They're potentially put off by the goalkeeper movement from Danny Viss. About 15 minutes left to go in this game. Anders likely looking to seal the deal with one more goal. He hasn't fully sat back and, and maintained some of that possession. Another pause queued up. <laughs> the way he's sitting in his in his chair. Calm, cool, collected. Yeah, he's relaxed. Business. I think he knows that the, the game's done now and he's happy and content in his formation. He's <laughs> he's relaxed knowing that he's secured his spot into the next round of the E Champions League. Round two, of course, you'll be able to see Anders performing later on. Seemingly up against Oberyn as well. And this is going to be the corner attack here from Anders. Because the game isn't done. They'll be hoping just to keep his record of having the most goals scored in the tournament. And that is going to be another one to add to the numbers there. Number six, six goals to one against Danny Visser. I mean, there was a reason why he was the, the top goal scorer in February. And this is it. Six goals? Nuts. Slight bit of luck there. Maybe the tackle was from Danny Visser there. Got a bit unlucky with that tackle and it wasn't able to retrieve possession. But again, it's just another goal from Anders. We've already spoken about how prominent he has been in front of goal, having the record of the most goals scored coming into this second stage or the next stage, sorry, of the, the Champions League. Danny Visser maybe looking to have a consolation goal towards the end of this second leg. Almost gets there, almost a mistake in possession from Anders and that back line, but works out of that pressure quite nicely. Triggering some runs there, hoping to find the space with R9 and find the space he does. Wow, okay <laughs> then. Yeah, he's not happy with that either. He wants to get more goals there <laughs> on the scoreline just to, to try and get back into this, or not get back into this, sorry, to try and get more goals to add to his accolade. There's going to be another chance there, just wide of the post there. <laughs> and he's getting a little bit fed up with that. But I think that speaks volumes in a player when you're up six goals to one on, on aggregate and still frustrated with the chances that you're missing. He holds himself to a very high standard, and I think, you know, I've said this several times, but at his age, I think that that will set him up for a lot of success in the future in FIFA Esports. Good. Three on one, Ronaldinho with the green time shot. A little bit of goalkeeper movement from Van der Sar. <laughs> See the theatrics from Anders as well. Danny Visser looking to maintain some of that possession to see if he could get that final attack. It looks like Anders might have it and might even have a goal. And he does. That's another, that's another one to add to the list for Anders, another goal to add to the tally. Because this one is, isn't a, a goal that sort of cements anything. It, it was already sealed, done and dusted. He progresses into the next stage. But as I spoke about earlier on, before the game even started, his ruthlessness in terms of him not letting up, regardless of the scoreline, regardless of the opposition, he will just carry on scoring. It's got to be frustrating for Danny Visser in his first match of the day. Not how anyone wants to, to start the weekend, but Anders does proceed seven goals to one across two legs. Yeah, it's a big result for Anders, of course, continuing how he left off, but going into another game, one of our other featured matches, we left it as Di Pichotto up against Hezers. Pichotto was leading three goals to two. I had a celebration around me just over my shoulder there, and there was an equalizer on the last minute for Hezers there. And as we're going to go into this game, they are in extra time here. So we're going to jump into it live straight off the bat. 3-3 three, three on aggregate. Two goals to one for Pichotto in this leg. Pichotto looking to get a shot on goal here. Had some space, but read well. And defended solidly by Hezers. A good back and forth game this one has been. Absolutely. It must be painful, of course. In the eyes of Pichotto can see so late on them. This could be a chance for Hezzer's green time just wide of the post. Of course, those headers are manually aimed, so just slightly too far of the post. The other side, of course, of the post, if that had found the other side, it would have definitely resulted in a goal. You know I've not scored a header all year. 
That doesn't surprise me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a skill issue. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Fischotto on the attack here. Takes it just out of bounds. That's possession that you don't want to give up from silly mistakes at this moment in the game. Of course, as we said before, the winner proceeds in that upper bracket. The loser of this matchup will drop to the lower bracket. But is still alive in the competition. It's a triggered run there. It's going to be whipped in straight to Rude Hoodie. He's going to head this down. Safe hands there from Van der Sar. Tentative end to the first half of extra time. And of course, this is going to be an all-important game here. No one wants to drop to the loser bracket this early on there, especially in a game where it's been this close. But we've come into the game at a perfect time, Liam. Are you pro-penalties or anti-penalties? In what way? As in, would I prefer to go to penalties yeah. in this case? I'd want to play to, to try and get the goal. Of course, penalties is a, a resort where it's the last moments of... Um, of extra time and I don't have possession. But of course, I'd be happy to take penalties because he yeah. could score. But of course, in these situations, you want to try and get the goal here. You want to make sure you can get it done in extra time. And so as a player yourself in a position like this, going into the second half of extra time, tied on aggregate, of course, what kind of changes are you making? What are you doing in this in this moment? Nothing glaring, in my opinion. I wouldn't change anything. This could be a chance here. Pez is the touch there from Alabama was just a little bit too heavy, but I don't think either of these players will look to change anything unless they concede a goal. There's no need to... Fix what's not broken. Yeah, exactly. Unless there's the huge gaps opening up, you can see that Fischel is playing a back four. Unless he, he seems to think that he's not defending well enough, maybe he wants to change something he's more comfortable in or, or just as comfortable in. But again, I just don't think any of these players will look to change anything. Shoto on the attack here. Has the possession, looking to find that space in the box. Park Ji Sung is a, a hero that we haven't seen. A chance here from Alawiren. Tries to square that across the R9, but saved by Van der Sar. That was a beautiful driven pass there. He was going to look to, to recycle it on the edge of the box, but just drilled in there towards the byline. And it was, of course, good keeper, or a good um, save from the keeper just to stop that pass going across for an easy finish there, which would have definitely resulted in potentially the winner there for Deepa Shelter. But there's going to be time here. For Hez is he could even look towards just to keep possession just to kill the clock down but I think he's just going to try and try and play on it in case there could be an open gap that he could take advantage of. Well, Hezers on the attack here has a possession. Extra time always flies by so time is running short for the French and Italian internationals. No one wants to make the first mistake or be the one to concede that first goal because at that point, it's game, set, match. Of course, we approach the last moments of extra time. Hedges has kept possession for the last few moments, of course, not wanting to give it away, wanting to guarantee us the last attack here so that even if he does give away possession, there's not enough time for Deeper Shelter to respond. Is there going to be enough time, though, or enough space opening up for him to, to try and get an attack? He's given it away, and those are the problems of keeping possession for that long. Sometimes you... You give away possession, but it's well defended there, just about. Penalties. Goal into a penalty shootout, the first one. Penalties give me so much anxiety, but Pichotto is up with his first penalty. Easy, calm as you like, top right corner. Second, for Hezers, has Eusebio at the spot. Can he score it? He doesn't. Straight down the middle, but saved by Van der Sar. Pichotto going to go for another corner. This is a big goal, and it is. He takes the advantage into the top right corner. Hezers needs to score a penalty now. He's going to opt towards to go to the middle again. He goes to the right, the same side, 2-1. Shoto up with R9, wanting to kind of solidify that lead, but saved by Hezers. Hezers now needing to score this goal with R9 to be square. He does. He does, and we are level, of course. A penalty has been saved each. 2-2 two -two here. Can Deepa Shoto find the corner? He does. But it's still a great save, great re read there from Hezers. He can score here now to take the lead for the first time in this penalty shootout straight down the middle. The decisive penalty now. Back and forth like this game has been. Hullet looking to score, does. But Hezers looking to maintain his lead. And potentially take it, and he does. Hezers comes out on top in a game that was back and forth the entire time. I didn't even know the first penalties who was going to take that. But Hezers does and proceeds in that upper bracket. Pichotto drops to the lower bracket.
Yeah, penalty shootouts are always tough to concede and always tough to lose in. And there was also another penalty shootout going on. We'll be able to update you about shortly in our other featured game. It was who is next up, up against Montaxa. So, of course, when we do have availability in terms of results, we will let you know. But, yeah, two penalty shootouts in two of our featured games. One blowout scoreline. So, yeah, basically all we could ask for. It is all we could ask for. A lot of excitement. That's what we expect at this level of the competition. I said before, penalties give me anxiety. Yeah. I can't imagine. On this, on the people are watching. No. I think for just as a player, you just want to time the penalty perfect and just aim for a corner or aim down the middle. As long as you get it on target, it's sort of a, a luck system. There's, a, there's an element of luck, of course, with penalty shootouts. You just have to get it on target. I think the keeper saves it. It's part and parcel of the game. But if it goes wide, you'll be very devastated that, that you've missed that. But yeah, it's a huge win for Hezzers. Easier said than done for me, I think. But <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, we are going to hear from Rich, Mike, and Grav about these last few matches. So let's see what they have to say. Thank you very much, guys. Great stuff on the commentary position. Penalties. Uh, we, we actually had two penalty shootouts there in our featured matchups and pretty dominant performance in all. Let's start with Anders Vergang. We, we, sort of, we saw the majority of his game. Mike, I'll come to you first. You're a big Anders fan. He's just doing the business. He's just doing the job he needs to do. I think he needs a nickname. I was just trying to figure it out. Do we have the step over king, the connoisseur, the aficionado? We've been all going Spanish, the maestro. Maestro aficionado. Yeah. Like what is it, <laughs> Bicicleta? Bicicleta. <laughs> How do I do it? I don't say it in Spanish. That's a six. Okay. All, right, all, right, all right. That's all right. That's I'm all doing right. my best here. And these were the <laughs> other results um, that currently took place in the bottom half of the winner's bracket. Let's turn your attention. Daniel, 5-1 victory against Jataba. Levy Finn, a player that's just going under the radar, a serious, serious player, and a good friend of yours as well. Let's talk about Neat. 4-2 mm -hmm. win, Graveson. Yeah. How's he looking? He was looking good. He was using 4-3-2-1, uh, going in the wind with Kafu. I think it's the only player out here using Kafu as an icon, because you can only get three of them, and pretty much everyone is using Ronaldinho. But he's using Kafu, and he's, he's actually playing well with him. So, yeah. 4-2, second round now. Um, for the losers, mm -hmm. Mike, I'm not coming to you for, for any particular you're just gonna, reason. Not, not for the winners, <laughs> you're going to come to me for the losers. Um, right. Okay. How are they looking to bounce back? For two reasons. One, you've just lost on penalties. Two, you've just lost eight, nine goals. My first response was going to be, it depends how you lost in that first game. Uh, a lot of times, penalties actually sits with me worse because I feel like I could have won. If I had a really off game, even if I just take a quick break, it allows me to kind of be able to, to reassess and be like, okay, I got to reset. As you see some of the highlights here, and Hezer starts off 2-0. And remember, this game is going to end up in extra time. We saw the penalty kicks together, and a lot of credit has to be given to Pachotto. And I, I talked about this early on in the show, that this was one of those big matchups that I'm sure neither of them are happy to have to start out the competition. And you have Peixoto now losing his first match. He has to make like a five or six win run. But I think Peixoto is one of these players that could actually do it because mentally he's so strong. He's been playing FIFA for like five years now. And he's always making that top eight, top 16, top four, kind of Moaba-ish in a guarantee, way. If I'm, if I'm an org, if I'm a club, He's the sort of player that I go for because he's almost a guaranteed top 16, top 8 player. I actually feel that he's one of the most understated and underrated FIFA professional players, period, of all time, really. Because he always is in the conversation, but for some reason, he doesn't come into that same narrative of being one of the best. And I don't know why. I, I've been up here plenty, and all I do is talk about him, and he gets results. We were mispronouncing his name for three years. That's probably why people confuse who we're talking about. <laughs> that was the penalty shootout victory there for Hezers. Catchy in his corner as the coach as well. Yeah. How nice is it to win a penalty shootout like that, Grav? Yeah, it's the best feeling out there because maybe you didn't play that well, maybe it went to a 50-50 decision. And if you win those matches, you just forget about them. You know, you're in the second round, you forget about them. Get a little bonus of belief. I don't know if you feel like that, but if I win in penalty kicks, I feel like this could be my tournament. Yeah, definitely. And if you, if you lose it, you're just, it's in your head for the mm -hmm. whole day. But if you win it, it's like, yeah. This is it. I'm thinking the second round. A player who didn't need penalties, mm -hmm. Anders Vergang. He'd almost finished the game in the first leg. We're going to tell you the story of how this matchup did progress through. Mike, you were loving what you're seeing. I'll this. tell you the story. A lot of step overs. You're going to see tons of them, tons of goals. He just puts you in pressure positions all game long, and most of the pros don't. They don't make it where you're, you're disrupted in the same way. Again, a couple step overs, green time finish. And you could say, is it the step overs? No, it's his usage. It's how he incorporates them. The creativity, the way that he builds. He just puts you constantly in positions where you're not comfortable. He disrupts your tempo. Yeah, definitely. I think it's all about timing. 
and faking the step overs because every, like if you step you expect the step over to be done you you defend it it's a 50 50 situation but if he fakes it once twice and then he does it it just disrupts your tempo it's with purpose that's that's yeah. how i can say it a lot of people do the skills and this is the difference between a lot of times the pro players and then guys that are right there on the brink or even at home if you're more of a novice player you might do the skill, but you don't have the same certainty or choices behind it. You, yeah, you're not selling it the same way as some of the pros. No, absolutely. Uh, and I think Anders, look, no one wants to play. Nobody <laughs> wants I don't want to play. I don't even want to watch him play people sometimes. <laughs> I, I, I feel bad at the, other, at the other end of this. Yeah, somebody <laughs> who might end up matching him, uh, Nick Snap. What was Nick mm -hmm. Snap? He got the job done in a penalty shootout scenario we can show you the action from the second leg of gameplay it was 2-1 coming into it mike and then nick step started to rally and that is a matchup that i would watch over and over again i said maybe i don't want to watch it, but nick step is one of the most mechanical players left in the competition in terms of some of the gifted and talented forward when we say mechanical we look at the skills the cancellations all the extras that kind of go into the gameplay the, the intricacies and of course we had back-to-back -back extra time almost the exact same minutes as a go into the penalty kicks yeah, and we were talking about underrated players, and I would throw Nick Snep mm -hmm. in because you right. always think about awesome. Ethan and some of the English players, oh. and Nick Snep ah. is just five out of five. Perfection. Yeah, that's what we expect from these players, and yeah, potential Nick Snep against Anders. It's a mechanical play. Come on, mechanical masterpiece. Yeah, put it somewhere. I want to watch that. Take that title. Speaking of M's, time for the <laughs> Mastercard moment of the match. Mike LaBelle, you've picked something out in particular that you want to showcase here from the second round of games. We simply have to review some of the goals from Anders, and I want to talk more about the step over connoisseur, whatever nickname we're starting to brew here. It's just brilliant. And I, I talk about creating these moments of controlled uncertainty, where you're looking at the options, but look, he is watching those defenders. He's going to see if there's a misstep, and because the step overs allow you to change direction, whether you're attacking space or you're resurfacing or recycling, like you're going to see here with R9, goes to Dino, Dino to Rude Hullet. It just puts so many players under pressure. He's going to take that lane of space, and then he's going to assess who's open, who's not open, what do I want to do next? And he does it on the fly. He's one of the best micromanagers, lays it off to Koi, steps into space. Nothing you can do from there. Goalkeeper movement does not matter. And I want to ask you, just on the back of that, we see that clip, we see the moment, it's the Mastercard moment of the match. How much of that is premeditated, and how much is instinctual? Grab a instinctual. instinctual. Great question. I, 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 I wouldn't say that is is train. I wouldn't say you can train timing, because it's just something that he has in his mind. When when, when he was born, he had that in his mind. <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 he knew to step he over. You hear this? He knew to step over. It was over. just that right stick, left, right, <laughs> left, right. Yeah. Mike, much. Do, you, do you see him potentially slowing down, or is this just the Anders steam trying to get on board, tickets, passes, and rail cards? We've all said this was coming. We've known about Anders now for two, two and a half years. He wasn't of age to compete early on. I think that he would have battered the competition at that point. Yeah. And this could be his first breakout. We haven't really seen him in the finals yet. 2v2 didn't come together when he was with yeah. Umit earlier this season. We have not seen him on a podium just yet. I want to throw you a question. Mm -hmm. Do you think he's the most talented FIFA player we've ever seen? It's a great question. Let us know in the chat. <laughs> Let us know. Is Anders the most uh, talented FIFA player, mechanical FIFA player that we've ever seen? Somebody is going to have the job of taking him down. We can have a look at the brackets, how they currently are stacking <laughs> up here in the upper bracket. Mike, I'll let you talk us through it. Oh. Where is your eyes looking towards? Well, I mean, the, I'm looking at Ob Obrin and Vergen, who we didn't even talk about Obrin, who last year was phenomenal. The best Italian player, easily hands down. 1 6 0. You see the form there. Need and Levy, I'm looking forward to that matchup as well. Hezers and Nick Snev, the battle of the pen penalty kick situation and scenario. So hopefully we see a lot of goals in action uh, in that affair as well. But this is what we expect when you're talking about E-Champions League. And now when you go to the upper side, come on. If Omid and Tex is not the featured match, I got to make a phone call. I got to send a text message. Give me an email. Give me somebody to contact. That's happening. Uh, we also have the likes of Yilmaz and Stingray, which is a personal favorite for me. Two offensive players. I did talk to Stingray. He said he's maybe not as happy with that matchup, but I should have some open doors. Doors getting busted down. A lot of offense, a lot of pressure being put on both competitors. And on the other side of that bracket, it's not all doom and gloom yet, but one loss mm. away from being eliminated. Gravison, oh, some oh, really, oh, oh. really tasty losers bracket matchups to look forward to. Definitely, that rough through Olivoli is a game to watch. That could be potentially a game for top eight, but they're playing the first round of lower bracket. We see Kamal against Jotaba, the German against the Spaniard. We see Lex against Pepe, Jorge against Danny Visser. Potentially loads of good names going out, but Dulem Mike 
is a player to watch, a player who's been competing since FIFA 19, and I want to watch that. Something I'd like to add as well, not only are they pushing for that top eight, but every round you get more money. I'm not here about counting pockets, but if you're a competitor, that comes into play here saying, hey, I can almost double my money in every single round that I'm able to prolong this tournament. So you're definitely dialed in, you're focused. Everybody could use a little extra additions to the pockets. Definitely. Graveson, yep. on a scale of one to 10, how excited are you for Limit versus Tex? <laughs> 10. Well, you're going to be that commentary booth yeah. with Brandon <laughs> Smith right after this break. E Champions League action rolls on. What a featured match. You're going to enjoy this one. Limit versus Tex. Welcome back to the Champions League knockout stages here. You join us live in London for day one of the action. Slowly but surely, we are finding our final eight who will be travelling to Istanbul come the beginning of June. We're only in the upper bracket round two, but what a selection of matches we have for you, especially this one. Two players that were there in Stockholm last year, Graveson, that made it to the final eight, hoping they can go there again, but this time go one step further and pick up that trophy. Definitely. And we saw uh, they were the two of them were the f two of the out of the four semi-finalists in the winner bracket. And we see them matching yeah. against each other in the second round now. Top four. Top four crazy. last year, back again again. But it's not the only game that's behind us. We've got obviously Tex again to it behind us there. To the left of us, we've got Anders Vergang. I mean, how does Anders Vergang, by the way, seem angry when he's winning 6-1 in a game of FIFA? Is that just the level of perfection that this man is after against Obron, who didn't have the best week in terms of FIFA? He 
was unable to defend his crown in the Serie A, was superb last year, but then comes into today and beats JRG15, who was the best defensive player back in February, 6-0. I don't know what's happened there with Obron, I don't know what's happened with JRG. What a result for Obron, he must be boom of confidence going into this game of Anders. Yeah, definitely, and he has been lacking that confidence throughout the year, I'd say, and even in the e Serie A finals, but last year he made the top four in the World Cup and bringing that confidence back with a 6-0 result against Auburn, I think the, the confidence is there. And then over to this side of the bracket, again, keep in mind these are all upper bracket round two matches. Emre Yilmaz against Stingray. Both had very different journeys to get here. Stingray winning five goals to two against Ayer Mertau. And on the opposite side, uh, Emre Yilmaz, 8-2 win against Zulamai. But I do feel for Stingray because this match will be the fourth Dutch player that he's played so far in the Champions League. He played three of them in a row in the group stages. He thought, OK, I've had a break in the last two rounds of Swiss and then matches another Dutch player in the knockout stages here. So uh, safe to say he enjoys playing a Dutch player or two, does uh, Stingray. That's going to be another great game. Yeah, definitely. In Spain, we'll call him El Matador of Holland people, of Netherlands people. But yeah, Umut against Tex. I mean, we, we jumped like, between those matches, but this one, Umut against Tex. And, and the reason they match up on the bracket ground soon is because they both went three and two. They both went three and two in the Swiss stage. If one went five and oh, and the other was maybe four and one, there might be a different sort of scenario in the bracket. But they were both three and two. They came in against players that had a better Swiss end then. But as we know about these guys, they turn up on the big stage, Umit uh, beating Rafsu. Eight goals to four, and Texas, we followed a 2-1 win against Oli Bolly to be in this game. Keep in mind, if you win this game, you are in the big one, the qualification game. You want to, you know, want to know what Nicholas just told me like five minutes ago? For him, this match is the most important match of the, of the whole tournament. Because if you win this, you got two chances to qualify for the top eight. But if you don't, you just got to make that lower bracket run. For Nicholas, it's the most important game of the whole weekend. And just... In regards to Nicholas, how is he feeling right now? Confident. I mean, he's the Iceman and he, he won the tournament last year. So in a way, he just wants to go back to back. Can he do it? We'll have to wait and see. Yeah. I mean, so so far, so good for Nicholas, right? Currently hasn't conceded a single goal. Well, won his game 2-0 earlier today. You can see on the, on the screen, one minute 30 until we get underway for this upper bracket round two game. Some of the players, we said it before and we'll say it again. E-Champions League, I look around me right now, you're looking at six of the best players in Europe. If you were to get the V3 rankings up, you'd be looking at the top 20 for every single one of these players that is around us. These are finals, not upper bracket round two matches. These are grand finals in European major tournaments. And we get to see it this early on into day one of the tournament. And keep in mind, the next round is when it gets even more tasty because people are going to be eliminated, Grav. Yeah, yeah. And um, if you... If you're against the ropes in the, those kind of matches, I think you, you've got to put out your 100% FIFA level. And I think the, many people will do it because if they don't, they just go home. And in short, what are you expecting from this game, from these two? Fireworks? Uh, not really. Not really. I don't expect like that many goals. I expect like kind of whoever wins the possession battle will win the game. But I don't know. I don't know what to expect from Umut because Umut is just like a consistent player. Um, I think his build-up is not mentioned enough. It's really good. It's really, really good. Underrated, you'd say. Yeah, definitely underrated. But well, cannot forget he's the current world champion, and it still feels crazy that he doesn't even get it doesn't get mentioned that much, does it? He's a he's a feat free World Cup champion, him. He kept his nerves against Nicholas on a penalty shootout last year. We can confirm the game is ready to get going here in the Champions League. Upper bracket round two. What a game this is. They're in Stockholm last year, these two. They're in the top four of the Champions League last year, but now they're against each other. Who will be continuing on their path to Istanbul and who will be going down to the trenches into the lower bracket? Tex against Summit, leg one is underway. The first question I throw out to you, Grav, are we looking at a five-back, five-back, or is someone going against the grain? I don't think so. I think Umut might be using the five of the back, but I think Tex was using the 4-4-2 in the first leg of the first game, and I think he might stick to it. Because Tex used to play a lot of 4-4-2, 4-2-3-1, but this year he kind of switched it up with 4-3-2-1, with five defenders at the back. I think he, he's been more kind of a meta player now, which I think it's better for him. His Tex looking to bit of his first chance in the game. Alan Wyron trying to find the feet of damage. You know, it goes back to R9 in the end. And it's the first shot registered just five minutes in. And the Saar needed to make an important save. Corners be played quickly. 
Marquise Ioannine will look to just open up on that right boot. He has got that five-star weak foot. He can go left or right. In terms of right-backs, Grav, where do you come into this? You say you're in this tournament, each Champions League knockout, who would be your right-back and why? I would probably use Cafu, even though you you wouldn't use Ronaldinho or Pele. I, I would use Cafu because if you're using 4-3-2-1, I think it just opens uh, an opportunity for you to use a, a good offensive right-back. Clever pass, Marquisio, back to David Ginola, well played, Lucio. I love the way he said Cafu there, you've just thrown another right back into the conversation, Grav. <laughs> no, no Yaya Torre. Or Wesley Fafana, as we're seeing on this side. Or Valverde. I mean, it seems like everyone's just got a personal preference, haven't they? Yeah, pretty much, but uh, I'll stick to Cafu. <laughs> well, let's see. He might join you on that. Keep in mind, score restrictions in play here at the Champions League. Champions League. Road to the knockout players are allowed alongside for heroes and icons. Here's a chance. This could be Umic's first chance to goal. We're very composed, but even more composed at the back was Tex. We hear there's been a goal in one of our other featured matches. It comes from Anders against Obram. And when we can, we'll let you know which way that goal has gone. Here we go. Then Obram, Anders Vergan. This is five minutes in. It looks as if it's gone the way. Of Anders Vergang wins it back well there of David Ginola. Hullet punches into the feet of R9. Brilliant feet again. And look, it's all green. Anything in that box from Anders Vergang is timed to perfection. Step over, tick. Reverse elastico, tick. Green time, tick. Just perfect info. Well, speaking of chances, it's one now. Back to R9. That was a good chance. Big block. And a chance to break on the counter-attack. Ronaldinho will be offside. Tex has to go back the other way now. Try and work this one out. Keep it on the far-hand side of your screen. There is an overload there. Yep. Will he need to use it? Ronaldinho, there's the step-overs. There's the Travella. What are you making of this from Tex? He's happy to take shots from outside the box today. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's the way to play FIFA right now with Trivelas, with reverse elasticos, with shots. I agree with you. Well, Anders may have scored, but there's also one of the best players from Italy sitting alongside him. And I tell you what, he won't be proud of that one defensively. It's a long ball over the top, kept his calm, outside the boot, didn't need a time green there, did Obram. 1-1 all square here, takes him a chance, and a goal! I think that may have been Marquinhos. I'm not sure what he was doing there. Marquisio, yeah? Was it was, it. we'll see again on the replay, the Italian midfielder just driving forward and somehow squeezing up past Edwin van der Sar. And that was a weird finishing in terms of FIFA speaking, but it worked, so 1-0 for Tex, and I really like the, how he looked at the camera, the Tex, that's really, he feels confident. He might feel as kind of not being mentioned enough in this match against Umut, but, but yeah, that was a, a really good goal by Tex, and I really loved that direct look at the camera. The stare, man. It sort of feels like Grav when uh, Anderson and Obron started scoring goals, everyone has started to get underway. What do you make of that extra midfielder choice from, from Tex there? We've sort of got three midfielders in. I don't like it as much, but if he scores, what can you say? Cannot argue with stats. Like he just scored a goal, so it when, I, when I say three midfielders in there, I got slightly confused earlier because Yaya Torre is playing as a right back. Again, everyone has got their own personal preference. It's the weak spot in these teams. But the pros. It no, just we... makes sense as a as a player to use Yaya Torre as a right back. He's physically strong. He is quick with the ball. He has good passing stats, so it just makes sense. Would you use Alaba in your starting team? I think I would. He's like 92, I'd say. And uh, potentially, if they. He's a, new, he's a new player that has got the hype, and of course, for viewers at home that might not understand, the further a club gets in the Champions League, it does upgrade the foot item in the game. This is clever again for Mumit. Captain Villa bombing on from left back. Is there a cutback available? There was, but Tex read it well. But continuing that point, the four teams that are left in the, champ uh, the Champions League, they're going to have some pretty tasty fives that might feature in some of these teams. Tex on the counter attack, looking for a second in this game. 
R9 does get intercepted in the end. There has been a goal lacrosse in a Robert featured match. It becomes the way of the Danish youngster, Ronaldinho. Of course, it's time green. Anders Vergang leads two goals to one. And before we talked about the step over, mechanically done perfect. This was this time. R9, back inside, pull in, save! Andersar had to be big, and he was. Oh man, so much FIFA. <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to let you speak here, Graf, but everything's just happening. <laughs> Scores at the top hand, uh, top hand side of your screen, have a breather. Here are some of the results coming in as it stands now. These are all upper bracket matchups. Nicholas has conceded his first goal of the tournament, but he does lead. Nick Snip off the back of a penalty shootout, leads one goal to nil against Hezers. Neat, you'll be happy to see that one, Graf. 4 2, he leads in the first leg, and we'll have a chance of a breather now. Half time. In our featured matchup, Tex leads Umit by a goal to nil. Any of those those results at the top hand side of the screen surprising you? Uh, not not really. Not really. What's the surprising me, but it shouldn't surprise me, is Tex defending. He has defended like three or four 1v1 situations perfectly, which is not easy to do against Umut. And, and the one thing he's done there as well, Grav, is he's, he's been patient, hasn't he? You'll never see that from Tex so far. He's not diving into anything, and there's something for those at home that are listening. Just be so patient in the defensive moves and wait for your opponent to make the first move, then match it up. You saw a couple of times, match the passes, predicted the passes. There was a teeny bit of goalkeeper movement at one point where he had to predict that too. Just all the small intricacies that, I mean, look, the best players have them. <laughs> We're lucky that we can sit here and watch them. I would like to ask a question to the chat in general. I wouldn't know Who's the favourite here beforehand between Umut and Tex? That's a really good question to answer. Because you're talking about Tex. Honestly, if you put a poll out, I think you'd be in for like a 50-50. Well, I wouldn't know what to say to that question. I wouldn't know the reply. Back on the way for this one. Umit still hunting for a way back into the tie. Alawira back to David Ginola. who will go on his own with the Frenchman. A couple of step overs as he looks to find a gap between couple of Texas defenders, but again, plays himself out of a spot of so well. I think there has been a goal over in the, the Stingray and Ray Yilmaz game also. We'll give you the lowdown on that as soon as we can. Ooh. Good feet. Marquisio, the only goal scorer so far. Said about patience, Gravison. Yep. Put no further in this build-up. Yeah, Torre. Ronaldinho will bring the flare into the attack, just couldn't turn. And a chance to break Ginola. Nice build up. Spreads it wide to Alawira, who's got the pace. Has he got the numbers, though, in the attack? Yeah, Torre, surely not from distance. Punches it to the feet of Ronaldinho. It's another massive save from Van der Sar. And the build up is there for Umut. Let's see the corner kick. Corner. This is Umit. Where's the options? Where's the RB, RB Leipzig shirts? Tech's doing well just to organise the midfield and defensive line. Make something go back the opposite way. Good defending. Come at me again, says Tex, as he wins the ball back. 30 minutes left in his first leg. Still only one goal in him. Upper bracket round two of the Champions League day one. That's what you are watching right now. Clever. Ronaldinho, step overs, match well by Wesley Fofana. Tex player switching is incredible, out of this world. That player switch to Fofana is extremely hard to do. And if you miss it, it's just a goal for Umut. So, yeah, player switching when you're reaching these kind of situations, these kind of matches against the best players in the world, they are so precise. They don't simply miss one. Yeah, Torre. This is Tex down the byline. It's a dangerous area to be. Bit too long he held that foot. But just couldn't find an option. Wins it back well. Possession back to Umit. The pressure after possession loss is, is really important as well. And I think that's one of the of the key ingredients to, to Tex's way of playing FIFA. Oh, no, in a running race. Will he get the right side of Wesley Fofana? Yes, he will. Ball roll through the legs of Van der Sar. Nothing. The Dutch goalie can do that time. I mean, Equalises back into the tie against Tex. But speak about 
composure there. Ball roll through the legs. Didn't have any room to play in. Just a simple tap in from Ronaldo and an easy goal. But yeah, so many times we don't talk about mechanical standard players. Sometimes you just get a ball roll, tap it in, and an easy goal. You say simple, Grav. I think it take about a year for me to uh, <laughs> to try and work one of those out. But he didn't have any room to manoeuvre him. But still, to pull that off, incredible for a moment. Well, there was another game on our featured stage. So we haven't given you any updates about it. Stingray against Emre Yilmaz. There's oh. one player that hasn't been asked many questions of, and it's Emre Yilmaz. He won nil down against Stingray. And Stingray wasn't done there. Now, but Landside Wave finds a second, 63 minutes in. Stingray looking absolutely superb at the moment. Loving the celebrations <laughs> as well. Ah, oh, the crab. El cangrejo, as we call it in Spain. This is good. This is a good one. Pull it for Umit. Oh, he goes on his own. He doesn't need anybody else. Umit leads by two goals to one. With maybe a bit of a unconventional finish from Hullet. Ball roll outside the boot, as easy as you like. Two goals in ten minutes for the world champion. He made the right decisions. Maybe you expect a direct shot from Hullet. Maybe an extra pass to Ale Goran. He just ball roll and a, and a quick shot. That was a really, really good goal by, by Yuma. It doesn't look like really hard to do mechanically, but it's just the right thing to do. 2-1. Here we go. Takes in the air! Hello, Iron. He's so good at making these sort of last ditch runs for Tex. Here's some scores for you. Nicholas, 3-1 he leads. Marwan, 2-1 down against Antonio Radega. Herzers leads 2-1 against Nick Sneb. Daniel Seven of Hamburg against Kurt Adalo, 1-1. And the Spaniard, Neat, leads the German, Levy Finn, by six goals to two. Vamos. <laughs> Eight goals in that first game from Neat. That was a really good first leg, obviously. One to watch. Keep in mind, there's only eight games that are underway as it stands right now. All of those are in this side of the bracket, the upper side of the bracket. You win this game, you go into the qualification match. You win that, you qualify for the Champions League. It's as simple as it sounds. We didn't see any substitutions, right, as much, which is weird, because you usually expect many substitutions. I mean, it's 60, 70, maybe 80, but it kind of a uh, Ancelotti kind of no substitutions way of <laughs> managing your team. Last play of the game, maybe? It looks like it's going to fall to text the last play of the game. And it's going to make him rework it all the way out the other side. Had it time to follow now. One minute of additional time. Yeah, Torre, can text get. One uh, more late chance. The idea was there from Marquisio, unfortunately able to provide the all-important touch. That game is done. Let's jump ships if we can over to Obron against Anders. That's still in the first leg as we hear right now. On one of our other featured stages here at the Champions League. Takes off for a quick break. He'll be back in a few minutes to get this second leg underway. Yeah, and Anders looks kind of frustrated. In a way. Well. We've jumped over to the game now, Gravison. Yeah. He does lead 2-1, so frustration because he potentially wants a bigger scoreline, but he is winning. Maybe frustration because he expects perfection on his side of things. Especially when you've just won 7-1. Ronaldinho couldn't find R9. That could have easily been 3-1. You saw some reaction there off camera, Gravison, because you can understand why. That goes into the feet of R9. It said, you know, a certain goal. That game's in full time. And I believe, with that in mind, all the games in our feature stage are at full time here. And we're going to go off to a quick break now. When we get back, the Champions League continues in the upper bracket. Tex against Umit. Tex trailing by two goals to one. Can he turn it round? Only time will tell. We'll see you in a few minutes.
halfway point of this upper bracket round two round. And as you can see, someone has got a little bit animated, but the surprising thing is, we're seeing both reactions of Anders Vergang here. When the goals are going in, and then when it's just not happening for us, you can see there, that was one of the chances he had to score an easy goal, which in his mind, any other day, it is a guaranteed goal. But the storyline is, Grav, he's winning. He's three, you know, he's two and up in the game. I know it's only a goal in front, but that just shows the levels and the levels of what he expects in himself. Yeah, definitely. He expects perfection from the step overs, the timing, the angles. And yeah, pretty much everything is kind of 2-1, 2-1, 2-2. Well, let's have a little look at the uh, the fixtures of, of what you may have missed for those that haven't seen. Emre Yilmaz against Stingray is, I mean, what? What happened? <laughs> yeah, what, what happened over there? <laughs> I mean, I hope that's not a typo. Last time we checked in, Stingray was leading 2-0 uh, with 28 yeah. minutes left to play. So, yeah. wow. Uh, Emre Yilmaz. Tim Bullitt. Tim Bullitt. Nicholas Lee's four goals to one against Gio Bundy. Uh, Mawan the Moroccan, unfortunately, trails by four goals to against Antonio Eredega of Germany. Umit leads Tex 2 1. That's our main featured matchup. Hezers, one of the six Italian players here, leads Nick, uh, Nixner by a goal uh, on the 2 1 aggregate scoreline. 2 2 between the German and the Frenchman, Daniel and Kurt Adilo. Levy Finn, there's been goals in that game, but Levy Finn trails uh, by three goals in that one. I mean, you speak to Nick more than me. Um, he's one of, your t one of your teammates. He seems up for it today, doesn't he, Nick? Yeah, and it's weird because he got late here in London. I think he arrived at 3 in the morning, something like that, because okay. of, he took like a, a late flight. And I, w I was thinking, like, maybe he's going to be tired or something. But I don't know. You don't know what to expect from Nick. He's kind of, uh, I don't know, sometimes he plays really good. Sometimes he's tired. He doesn't play that good. But when he's on point, you see, six goals in one leg. Maybe he's been popping a few Pepsi Maxes. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's got him. Fired up for an incredible bracket run. If he wins that game, he's one game away from a Champions League, a Champions League final in Istanbul. Back underway for this one. Umit against Tex in case you missed the first leg. Umit leads by two goals to one. Tex did take the lead via Marquisio in the first half, and then Tex was able to turn the game. Sorry, Umit was able to turn the game on his head. I wanted to ask you, if you're... Obrun, you're playing against Anders, and you know he's getting kind of tilted. You, I would play the mental side of things. Maybe not being an sportsmanship. Are you saying like. that you're going to put, put a five at the back, Rav, and you're going to keep the ball? Yeah, and no, I, I wouldn't skip the, the you do replays. Everything. Yeah, pretty much. Like, not in an offensive way, but I would play the mental side of things, for sure. His Tex should win a free kick there, referee. Because Ronaldinho does go down to ground. What can we see here? 23 meters out. Here's Ronaldinho going to step over for Texas. Is he going to play short? Yes, he does. Into Alawira, who's in the box alongside so many Oof. players. Yeah, Toro pushed off the ball. Referee plays on. I have seen Tex hit them directly into the back of the net. We saw that at the EA Sports Cup earlier this year. There is probably a little bit in this game as well, because if you remember the 2v2 game between Anders Umit, Diogo and Tex, you remember what the scoreline was in that game, Grab It was an absolute blowout, wasn't it? Yeah, crazy. And then Tex did the, the under celebration. Maybe if Umut beats him now, he'll do the same. I don't think so. He's a respectful guy. I appreciate the story you're building, but <laughs> let's, let's wait and see. <laughs> no, not happening. I don't think it's happening. I can assure you, Anders might be doing the celebration <laughs> himself if he, uh, <laughs> if he goes and wins the next game. Here's Ronaldini about to hull it. Um it. Looking for a third goal. Other games have kicked off here. We can confirm it wasn't a typo. Emre Yilmaz is actually 3-2 up. What a ridiculous last 28 minutes he had in that game that we didn't see. I want to watch the replays later because that has, I don't know. How many plays can you want? Can you have like three, four? He scored three of them. It's crazy. Yeah, I'm sure Richard might like himself be breaking those ones down after this game. Moment with a chance to break for a third goal. Yeah, Torre happy to get back in his new position as a right back. Here's the latest from the other games in this bracket. Nicely done by Umit. Chance for a third. It's a terrible touch from Alawira. Unfortunately, does win a free kick, though. We could talk about the MVP of the match, Yaya Torre, right now, because he's everywhere. He's, he's not there now, unfortunately. Back to David Ginola. He was there. <laughs> Times it green. Now for a corner. Umit starting this second leg so well. 20 minutes in. Travella from Ronaldinho blocked again. It's good that we have credited Tex on defensively with how good he's been reading these blocks and the timing of his tackles. And Nicolas is, is winning 4 1 at the moment. 
How good is Nicolas when it comes to this knockout phase of the tournament? Just experienced. The pressure of all pressure, hasn't he, in tournaments, Nicolas? Pull it. Tex now. Back to Alawire and back to R9. Great save again, Van der Sar. It was nearly a double green time finish scenario there. First one was blocked in the edge of the box and the rebound. He nestled into the bottom corner. Wesley Fafana, player that a lot of pros have hyped about coming into this E Champions League, proving his worth again there. Well done at the back. Tex. Trying to find the perfect triangle. The building from the build up from Tex right now has been consistently good. And I'm seeing. <laughs> I love him so much. Frustration. <laughs> to the left-hand side of me. Obran Anders, something's happened in that game. We'll give you the low down as soon as we've got it. But we have more reactions from Anders. Big reactions. Ginola. Back to Captain Thea. Here's over looking for a third towards the back post. We're on nine. He's there for Fana. That recent boost he had into the quarterfinals for Chelsea. What makes him a viable option now at the back for these pros? I think he's tall and his champions and stats are good, so he can defend the German cross as well. His defending stats are also good and he's quick, so you don't have that many options. And I think if you're not going for, I don't know, another option like Alaba or something like that, Fofana is a good, a good option for you. Tex, Ronaldinho, went for an interesting Javela there from the edge of the box, went to corner. We see here from Tex, played short. Ronaldinho again, all the step overs in the world. Still Ronaldinho. Ronaldinho still oh. for, for Tex. A bit wins it well. There's been a goal in the other game. We said Anders against Obron. And I can tell you right now, it's the Italian champion of last year, top four in an E World Cup, who has equalised on the aggregate scoreline. Three minutes in, Obron is up for this game, Graveson. That was a great cross and that was a great finish as well. The composure was there for Obron and he equalized the match. Maybe he's gonna play the mental side of things now against... Uh, Alawira, okay. tell you what, Graveson, he hyped Yaya Torre up. He has just clutched up again there. He's, he's been consistently good as a right-back. Would, he, he, would, would, would he be second in line for your right-back option or not? Yeah, yeah, I'd say yeah? So. yeah. But first, it's still Cafu. Still Cafu. <laughs> There's been a goal also in Emre Yilmaz's match. He was 2-0 down on the 65th minute. Ended up winning the first leg 3-2, and he has scored again. Brilliantly well done there. Ronaldinho into our nine. A phrase we'll be continuing to say today and tomorrow. 4-2, Emre Yilmaz leads. With that build-up, with those step-overs, you just can clap and redeem with because that one was amazing. You've seen, like, the level of FIFA build-up in the last few years. You have, like, right now, like, what, eight, ten players who are just out of this world, who could be world champions like five years ago, but now there's like six of them, which are amazing. Here's Umit. Oh. Ginola, back inside to Hullet! And just like that, Umit will find a third in the game and just create a little bit of breathing space. 3-1. And yeah, he, you could say he was lucky because he was a rebound, obviously, but the first... But it's how you react on the rebound. And he reacted like it was a millisecond. It wasn't even that. And the pass from Capdevila to the striker was amazing. 3-1. Wow, what a reaction, eh? Oh. A little bit. May have been fortunate with the bounce there, but you're right, how he reacted. He was so composed. Still to work the chance, wasn't he? Into the perfect position. And now it's all to do for Tex as the... The half-time whistle goes, it's not really a better time to score, is it, Grav? Last kick of the game in the half. A current FIFA World Champion with a two-goal advantage here. Text with it all to do, otherwise he'll be going into the trenches, into the lower bracket. I mean, you can never count Tex out. And if you're talking about Majors, World Cup, ECLs, you cannot count Tex out. But, but he, he feels like he's lacking something on the attack side of things. But, but yeah, it's sex. You cannot count it out. Yeah, well, this one's in half time at the moment. As we said, we just saw an update from Emre Yilmaz against Stingray. He's leading four goals to two. Any more updates from Anders against Obram? There was a goal in the first three minutes in that one. And that one slowly but surely approaching half time there. It looks as if it's 2 2 
on the aggregate scoreline. We'll keep you up to date of all the games as they go in. Keep an eye on the top hand, top right hand corner of your screen for the latest results too. Who will be going into the qualification match and who will be going into the lower bracket? There's an update, as we said. Has there been a goal? Opera. Oh. There is an update. It's live right now. 33 minutes in. And the player who had the, un probably the most unbelievable FIFA season last year. He may have been a bit slow last week in Italy in the East Serie A. He's picked up the pace here in London. He is up for it. Leads by three goals to do against Anders Vergang. And the Italian vision was there, like Pirlo in his very days. Like, who saw that pass? Only over because for sure I didn't see it. Like, wow, what a pass. Just looking across him as well, Graveson. So composed is Obram. He's young still. He's like, what, 20? Something like that? Which is crazy. He plays like he's been around for, what, five, six years? Well, 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 here's Tex. Back to Ronaldinho, Alawar, and can he twist and turn? No, he can't. Falls back to David Ginola once or twice. Tex recycles so well, but still finds Lucio in the way. I've just heard an even bigger roar, by the way, from the Anders Obron game. And if you're an Anders fan, unfortunately, I don't think it looks very good. No, it doesn't. It does not. Obron doesn't look like a person who screams that much when he scores goals. Well, 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 this is what you missed. Obram is loving this high line that Anders Vergang is playing and he is picking him off. 35 minutes in, he has got a two-goal cushion in the game now. And the composure was there. He just waited for the... Oh, this is getting oh my days. spicy. This oh is getting my spicy. days. <laughs> I can't. I, I know this is our featured match. I'll put it against Tex. But we'll keep you up to date of what is happening between Anders and Obrad. I've just seen Anders Vergang stand up with a massive comnu, which means one thing. The Danish youngster has just scored a massive goal in that one. And here was the goal. We won't have the reaction for you, but we'll have the goal. Especially when Anders feels like his back's against the wall right now, Graveson. Let's have a look at this one. Captain Villa, back to R9. There's your little reverse Elastico. Time to green. Anders Vergang, back on it. Here's R9, building nicely for Tex. Can't pull his way round his man. So many good games here at the Champions League, but we're sticking with this one. Two players that were in the top four of the Champions League last year in Stockholm. And you were right when you previewed this game, Grav, in terms of, uh, although, yes, we have seen four goals, it hasn't been a massive scorer. Yeah, maybe keep the possession. It was about who controlled the game, because they are obviously both an amazing tagging players, but they, they just want to keep the ball for a bit because they know how good their opponent is, both of them. So, yeah. I was just thinking, you, you cannot catch a breath with all that's happening <laughs> around us. Oh, man. He can find one more. What position he'll be in. To be forward in front, Alawira. Nope. Tex again, last man, big tackle. Eighteen minutes left. Great run there from Ronaldinho. Ginola's queuing up in the box. Ronaldinho on the Travella, that's what he does! Tex! With a huge goal in the game. Finally, Ronaldinho stepping up with a Travella that was time green. He's been trying that so much in the game. Just waiting for one to click, Grav. One to be timed in the right area. Look no further. Pick that one out. Definitely. And now a pause. 17 minutes to play. And what Tex is going to do? He might change his formation. I don't think he will. Umut might go for the 5-4-1 at the back. But still loads to play. 20 minutes left, approximately, FIFA, FIFA talking minutes. Um, and we can see what's happening up on the screen. Well, any latest results for you, Nicholas? If you're a Nicholas fan, he looks to be one game away from a champion, the Champions League Grand Final. What a game that is, by the way. 6-5, Hezers leads Nick Sneb by three goals to two. Daniel Seven of Hamburg leads Kurt Adala by 3-2. Neat still in front, four, uh, six goals to four. Those are the other five matches that are taking place just in the backstage now. All in the same rounds, and all with the same objective. Has that goal sparked 
a new level of belief from Tex to try more of what we've just seen there from Ronaldinho. 15 minutes away. Trails by 3 2. Love it. Desperate to restore that two goal cushion. Which will help him just cruise through. Nicely done. He's on. No! With ice in his veins. Just what he needed after conceding, just to restore that cushion and that confidence. Easy goal, but yeah, that's got to be frustrating for Tex because he changed his tactics with constant pressure and they just, they just didn't click at the right moment. They just popped up like three or four seconds later. Umut was, uh, he had the ball in his opponent's half, and that was just like an easy step over, green time, easy for two goal. Well, let's leave this one for a split second. Anders against Obron. 4 3, Obron leads. It looks as if the Italian has scored again. Let's see the goal. Just after the restart, again, it's that high line that Anders is playing. Obron is just picking him off time and time again. It's another two goal cushion. And it could be another goal here for Umit. Everyone falls on the floor, it's off the post. It's a bit of a lifeline, to be brutally honest, for Tex. I'm not sure what happened there, but everyone fell over each other. Quick reaction from Obron, though, Grav. He's punishing so well the offside traps of, of Anders with simple passes. And yeah, it's working for him. It's working for him from the, the mental side of things because he's, Anders is getting frustrated but he's just punishing every single offside trap of Anders. Ronaldinho, Tex, reverse Elastico, just trying to cook something up in the box. Mm. Mm. Looking across there, Emre Yilmaz still in the lead against Stingray. Oh. This might be Tex's last chance, isn't it? Let's just please keep this in mind, Graveson. Yep. There's a chance. As we're building this chance in for oh. there's going to be a chance that we're going to be seeing Anders Vergang and Tex both in, a, in the lower bracket. Not against each other, of course, but they're both going to be fighting for survival in the tournament in the lower bracket, which means we will be seeing them potentially still tomorrow. Yeah, and we'll see them playing like four or five games of FIFA, which is a... Uh... Ginola. Tex desperate for some way back. There's just not enough time, is there? Any time has been played. Hullet will score. No, he won't. Full time of it. One game away from an E-Champions League final again for Tex. It's down to the lower bracket. It was such a nervy, cagey game between the two. But someone had to come out on top. Tex down to the lower bracket. Umit will be happy with that one. Just about got over the line and was able, just as he said, that massive goal, Gravison, just to restore the two-goal cushion really made the, uh, the big difference. Yeah, definitely. And it was like uh, a match or... Uh, who controlled the game more, and I think Umut controlled the game more, and when he had to punish Tex, he did it. Four times, four goals. And there's something about Umut and ECL. Whenever he reaches... He, he just loves the tournament, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, he loves it. I mean, he loves World Cup as well, because he won one, but we could potentially talk about a World Cup and ECL winner. Mm. It wouldn't be a bad resume. That's a storyline, to, uh, yeah. to have uh, for Umit. Again, I believe some of the games are still just concluding uh, alongside us. Emre Yilmaz will get the win against Stingray by the looks of it. Stingray, another UK player, will be going down to the lower bracket. Uh, on the opposite side, Obron against Anders. Still has a little bit of time left to be played. We'll keep you up to date with all of the updates there. We're going to join it very shortly. They're in a pause we're here as it stands. Do you want to give away any of those important tactics? This one could be a bit of a firecracker grab because there's not long left in the game. Anders is a couple of goals down. He's going to have to pull something magical out the bag here. If someone can do it, it's, it's, it's Anders because in a flick of a second, he can do a couple of stopovers, green time, and just equalise the game in, what, in five, ten minutes? But yeah, he's frustrated. He is frustrated. You can see it. And Obrum is, is, is kind of really patient, calm guy. 20 minutes for Anders Vergang to film two goals somehow. Here's one, maybe Ronaldinho back to R9. Are we about to see a comeback from the feed up? No reaction, chill. He knows he has 15 minutes to play. I like that. If he Anders. scores an equaliser, 
The cameraman can hear me. <laughs> Wait for the reaction. It's going to be a big, big celebration. What did you just say about Anders Gravison? In a second, in a flash, he can change the game. He triggered a couple of runs, a couple of easy passes. The timing of the ball roll was there. Extra pass, easy goal. There's so much time left in this for Rob Brown. He's going to be feeling the pressure. He's got to be. Six, five. Obron is in the lead. I hate to say it, Obron. He's not going to see this game out by keeping the ball, in my opinion. Has to try and score another one. Definitely. I agree with you 100%. If you want to keep the ball, uh, pretty much Bergen with the second-man press is going to do this. If there's one man you don't want to be up against the press with, Anders Vergang. Look how many RB Leipzig white shirts are trying to pick up the ball as they will now. Here's Anders Vergang on the home for an equaliser. Back to R9. Will interchange well. Can't get round the right side of Valverde. And look how many shirts are for. This is the risk that Anders plays with such a high line. Obron with a chance to conclude the game. Does well. Finds the back of the net. And that's the first celebration we'll get out of him. The smallest of fist bumps. But a huge lift of pressure off his shoulders. It's not over. It's not over. We're talking about Anders. We have 10 minutes left. That's a really good play from our room. Two goal lead cushion, but it's not over. I'm telling you, it's not over. It's not over yet. No. Ten we minutes, Grav. Two goals. Anders Vergang. You're on the main stage, my friend. There's a time to shine. It's now. Ginola. Good defender. Look how many shirts are back defending. Trying to keep Obron in this game. Ronaldinho. He's clever. Unfortunately, Obron's even more clever defensively. R9, mm. the step-overs are there from Anders, but Obron just doing enough to stop him. Are we about to see Anders Vergan go down into the lower bracket? It'll be his first defeat he's tasted in this year's E-Champions League after a perfect Swiss run a couple of months ago in London. Quick goal kick played. Again. Superb defender, he's doing enough here to take minutes out of the game. Four minutes, two chances, has to go now for Anders Vergang. Well played again, Lucio. Is it over now? Uh, yeah, yeah, it is now, it is now. I'm afraid to tell you, it's over. Well, 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 Anders Vergang, it looks like he's going into the lower bracket. Obram, he's had a stressful last few days. Was unable to pick up the East Serie A trophy again in Lecce. No doubt that would have hurt, but he turned it into a motivation coming into this tournament. What a massive result this is going to be. He's going to be one game away from an E-Champions League final in Istanbul. There is simply not enough time for Anders Vergang to pull this game back. Even if he gets it with Arda now, he knows it. There's just not enough time. Look, it's the first defeat he's tasted. That's tough to watch, man. He's just 16. We cannot forget that. He's just 16, and there's a lot of pressure on his shoulders. So, still loads to play, but... Man, he's great. He's such a fan base as well. They're going to be there with him along this journey. He might be going down to the lower bracket, but he's not out yet. It's going to feel like it, you know... The tournament's crumbling around him. There's the full-time result. Obron will stay in the upper side of the bracket. And there's Vergang, unfortunately, is down in the trenches where he will be playing lower bracket FIFA, but he's not out yet. He's not out. No, no. He has, like, what, two or three chances? Well, he has only has one chance because if he loses his title tournament, if he, if he wins two or three games, he's still making that top eight. So, yeah, still a chance. The good thing is, though, it means that we could be seeing Tex and Anders tomorrow. That means double the watch time. It's not nice now being in the lower bracket. I think you said four games you've got to win. Back to back to back to back. You're playing elimination FIFA Graveson every single game. And that's good for us because we we could potentially watch Tex or Anders play four times. So yep. I'm looking forward to that. Well, guess what? We've still got three more rounds of FIFA to come here at the Champions League. But for now, we're going to throw over to Richard, uh, Mike and Ryan to break down what we just saw there. Thank you very much, Brandon and Grav. Great job on the commentary position. Ryan. I feel like I should start with you. You're joining us yeah. on the stage. Shocks. 
are happening here in London. Absolutely. It's obviously upsetting to see someone so dismayed and upset after losing. But he's still in the competition, but of course, huge wins for Umut against Tex. That's a massive, massive game. It's a massive statement as well. And of course, the other players that have progressed into the next round, that's the round that's the all-important one to qualify. Would you say predict the only unpredictable, expect the unexpected <laughs> here at the ECL? We've done a lot of these, Rich. We, we know that it's going to go that way. There's always going to be... This isn't about names or yeah. who's the most popular. It's not that type of contest. At the end of the day, it's competitive and each player controls their own destiny, which I personally love, yeah. but... At every tournament, I don't know exactly what's going to happen. If we just went off favors, we would say Tech's going to win everything. Yeah. Or Omit's going to win everything. And that has not been the case. Question for you. Anders, we just saw him, mm -hmm. obviously visibly distraught, losing a game. It's not the end of the road yet. Got to bounce back. Does he have the mental? He didn't suffer a defeat at the group stages. He suffered a defeat now. What are we going to get from Anders for the rest of this tournament? I have this famous quote. Tell me. Right. Yeah, I got you. I got both of you covered oh, here. You weren't ready, but I'm ready for this, <laughs> yeah. to do this. They say uh, losers criticize and winners analyze. So now it's going to be a matter of how he analyzes those games and takes that going forward. And him being distraught just shows you that he cares. Yeah, which, absolutely. personally, I'd rather always have someone that gets upset losing. Yeah. Like, if you're not upset losing the game, you probably shouldn't be competing. Mm -hmm. I agree. Well, one person who is still continuing to be victorious. We spoke to him earlier on the stage. He was 6-0, you could say, in the E Champions League. He's Emre Yilmaz. He was up against Stingray Jr. Mike, didn't start the best for Emre. It didn't matter, though. It's not about how you start. It's about how you finish. I've got all the cliches today. <laughs> and Stingray told me he did not like this matchup, didn't want it, even though he started out well. A lot of people are saying that Yilmaz is the guy to beat, yeah. that they expect him to not only get forward or push on in this tournament, but actually win the tournament. Yeah, absolutely. I think Emre Yilmaz is phenomenal, as you can see here, just the way he gets back into this game, not only trying to, to salvage something from the first leg, but even going on to win the first leg, three goals to two after being down by two. So it's a quick response from him. Being unbeaten as well is something that he wants to hold on to that record just to progress. It has that fear factor as well when you're unbeaten. Opponents, they, they're afraid of you. Yeah, uh, and I think that's a, a, a big factor yeah. as well. When you've got that mental almost one-up before the game's even started. You've played in a number of these tournaments, Ryan. Thanks. Don't have to go as far back <laughs> as we looked, did with Mike. Me, <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for the dig. I was just waiting. But he did it with his face. He zoomed yeah. in on his face. He's like, well, you've played in a bunch of these. <laughs> Um, <laughs> when you come into a game against yeah. Nicholas, against Tex, do you feel as though you're already like 1-0 down on the scoreboard before you've even kicked off? It's weird. I think it's the opposite. You sort of have a point to prove that you can still like compete with the best players. So when it's like Nicholas or Tex are up against them, you kind of want to make a statement. Whereas some players, they go into the games against... Obviously, no game's easy in this competition, but the ones that you'd expect to win. Those players... Some players tend to fall at those hurdles a lot more. I, for one, I'm one of them. I sort of... I big up the bigger occasion more than the other games, and yeah. And a player who seems to be phenomenal, F phenomenal. I like this. Make up some words for me. <laughs> yeah. Phenomenal on yeah. the big occasions. He's Obren. Yeah. He, he took Ooh. down crazy. Anders Vergang in a really, really fascinating match. Mike, we've got all the goals of the game, so I'm going to take a step back. You two. Talk me through what happened. Uh, and Ryan and I were discussing this just before they, they, they threw it our way, and we were saying that online, I think Oberyn's the only one that's been able to kind of get the best of Anders, uh, if we're not mistaken here, in, in one of the occasions, because he's been so dominant. And this game has goals galore, and I still think Oberyn is the best of the Italians, even though we have four or five Italians now that are really showcasing that they're at that top flight, that top level. And I love to see that that community's grown so much. Yep, absolutely. You're right about the Italian community coming on leaps and bounds across the years. I think they've made their mark in the scene as probably one of the top nations, as you mm -hmm. can see here, uh, a chance there for Oban to make it three goals to two, the pass across goal. It's a simple finish there, but I think this is where the game sort of started to, to lean away from Anders a little bit. He was, of course, up by three goals to one. I'm sorry, two goals to one, and then it just sort of ran away from him. And Oban does a great job of putting Anders in a lot of these uncomfortable situations. Something that Anders does so well against most of his opponents, where you're under pressure with these through balls. You see the rebuttal here, green time finish, of course, from Vergain. And, and he's going to battle and make these changes. It's something that we've seen as well with Oberyn that a lot of other competitors have struggled. Oh, that lovely extra skill move. I'm telling you, you do not have that in your arsenal. He did not put Anders on a pedestal. Yeah. I feel like a lot of the competitors, even with big names, are putting him as the next up. Therefore, they're playing a little bit different. Yeah, he's played the exact same way throughout every opponent, every game. He's, he's gone to play his own game style, gone to be decisive in front of goal, make the most of his chance. As you can see there, he's just mm -hmm. lethal in front of goal. In the build-up, he makes the right choices. And of course, that's something that you need at this highest level.
and he looks vulnerable. And I'm talking about Vergain here with some of the back line, some of the risk to reward. Yeah. He got caught out on multiple occasions. If you're watching these highlights, Obrin's getting him with over the top through balls, quick releases, direct through balls, and it's allowing him those types of 1v1s or even the extra pass for it to be open for a little bit of a square, and you're not going to miss from there. It's a difficult position to be in. Here you go, a lot of space to work with. Yeah. And is that because he doesn't fear anyone? He's coming in thinking, if I play my best, I beat you. Obrin's kind of a scary Italian. Like, I often don't get a reaction from him. I don't know. I really haven't heard him talk. There was audio so he celebrated one. He celebrated one goal there. Hey, the, this one. <laughs> yeah. This one right here. Yeah. I mean, just. Uh, He's a man of very few words. Such a good. We player. have a lot of animated Italians. That's not one of them. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, everybody now, else will go give you a hug and maybe even a kiss on the cheek. Not Obrin. He stepped with one game, <laughs> one game away yep. from the ECL. Anders is down there. What do you think? And is going to be like down in the loser's bracket, Ryan, It's quickly. tough to say because you saw how emo emotional he was, but I feel, I feel like he's got the ability to bounce back. As you said, it's a, a lot of it tends to rely on the mental game as well. Does he have what it takes? He hasn't been in this position before. He's won every game. This is his first loss, so, yeah, he needs to bounce back. Well, one player from Red Bull Leipzig is going to be down in the loser's bracket. The other is flying high. Umut, come on to the stage. Welcome, my friend. Great performance, <laughs> great performance against Tex. Um, what were you expecting going into the game? Uh, I, I know, OK, uh, we are um, one of the best players uh, here. And uh, I know before the match it will be very, very tough and uh, it will be a 50-50 match. And going forward, is there anything that you guys have prepared? I know you guys have so many different resources in terms of a lot of the competitors. RB Leipzig so invested from the esports end. I kind of want to always look like or, or look at what is that prep look like in terms of uh, the events and, and player preparation? Yeah, uh, my coach is analyzing everything. <laughs> like, uh, he's analyzing, uh, first of all, my first opponent, Rafsu. And after that, he also analyzed, uh, like, Oli Boli and Tex because, OK, uh, I have to play uh, against one of them. And uh, so um, he, he showed me everything what uh, Tex uh, could do and what he's, like, normally doing. Of course, during the game, it's diff uh, difficult to think about everything what, uh, what he showed me. But, uh, of course, he said to me, OK, over the wings, it's uh, more easy to come. So I, I tried to. To, to come over the wings. And walk us through these highlights here. We obviously see you, you get the rebuttal there, you even out everything. What's happening? What are you shifting? You see, hold it here on an overlapping run. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I like to send my players through and play uh, many through balls here with the L2 shot. I think the L2 shot is uh, one of the best ways this year to score. Uh, I have to say my first goal was a little bit lucky uh, that the, this shot goes in. But uh, I think overall uh, the winners uh, deserve to hit this goal also with the rebound. So uh, the game also could uh, go with the other side. But um, I think in the first 20 minutes I didn't play it good. But after that I played really good. I defended really good. Here you can see a traveler shot from uh, Tex uh, with Ronaldinho. Very, very good. And here step over, green time finish. And after that the game was done. Yeah, of course. Of course you went down by one early on in the game. Did you sort of getting a bit nervous because of that situation? Do you think you should change anything or did you just want to stick with your game plan? Uh, no, I thought, OK, um, Tex is really, really good in the offense, but uh, I'm also good in the offense, so I can also score many goals. And I knew, OK, he will also score many goals. I, I thought uh, the score will be higher, yeah. uh, not only six goals, but uh, yeah, at the end, I'm happy with the score, so yeah. Um, you're now one game away <laughs> from the ECL knockouts. Is the pressure building? How are you feeling? Of course, uh, after every game I have pressure, um, everyone is expecting uh, that I'm winning, so I hope uh, I can uh, get to this expectation and uh, I win my last game. I really don't know against who I'm playing, like uh, I have to check after that, I think Radelia or Van Basten, so um, I'm... I'm um, yeah, looking forward. Well, I know as a world champion, time is money. So I'm not going to keep you for too much longer. <laughs> However, I I'm want you to run. break us down the uh, Mastercard moment of the match um, with Mike LaBelle. Talk me through this divisive moment in the game. Well, I'll set you up. I'll set the stage. And we're talking about where you're triggering these runs with Rude Hullet in this case, but a lot of the midfielders. And it allows you openings uh, on the virtual pitch. And I guess my big question, I'd love for you to walk it through for everyone. When do you know to trigger the players? Because you are taking a risk when you send the center mids, obviously, to become kind of attackers. I don't know when, I just do it. I, I'm not thinking about what I'm doing, I just do, and I hope that it's uh, working. So I just um, send Hullet here because I see, okay, when he's not uh, selecting his player, I can send him through, and when he's selecting his player, I get a little bit space, so I have time uh, because he's taking his left back to run with Hullet, so uh, I have uh, play, play, uh, space to play to the other side. Right. That's the difference. 
maybe you as well, Ryan. You think. <laughs> I knew it was coming. He does. I knew it was coming. He, he does. <laughs> we think about it up here. Umar, thank you very much thank you guys. for your thank time. You. Get ready for the uh, final match coming up for you very shortly indeed. Fellas, we're getting into this bracket. We're getting deeper and deeper. Mike, we've the, got some nitty -gritty. qualifying matches right around the corner. I mean, you can't go wrong with these. You got Yilmaz, who kind of looks like that, what is it, the immovable object uh, going up against the unstoppable force with Nicholas here in that, that opener. And you got Omit, who's going up against Antonio. Looking forward to that matchup, of course. And then if you scroll down, you've got Hezers versus Daniel. And then you've got Neat versus Obrin. I almost oh. wish that Graverson was oh. here to brag a little bit for Neat. But that is a matchup of all matchups as well. Ryan, when we look further into this bracket, we go down to the loser's bracket. Mm. Anything there that's really taking your fancy? I mean, whoever plays Anders is going to be a must-watch game. Absolutely. But also Texas down there. Yeah, and even the game before that, the deeper shows are up against Montaxa. That is a huge, huge game. And of course, the top three games on the left are Dullamike up against Imatau, The Stranger up against Danny Pitbull, and Van Basten up against XL Tom. Those are the featured matches that we'll probably hone in more on. But so many big names down there already in the loser bracket. But it has to be this way. I mean, you're already dealing with the top 32 players in the world. But on those top three, I'm just looking at the stranger and Danny Pitbull just winning e Serial. He'd be very disappointed to go home early. Tom would be super disappointed to not make a run in this tournament. A lot of people look at this as the biggest event for the year. And you don't want to be two games in and two games out. And now you're walking home or you're going for a little vacation around London. Well, our featured match will be Dolan Mike up against Imer Tau. Dolan Mike, he was 0-2 before he turned it around earlier on in February. Can he pull something out of the fire once again? Leah and Ryan will be keeping you up to date with this one.
This is the first time Dolan Mike has ever gone this far in a tournament. First time he's ever gotten to the third day of a tournament. Attack after attack after attack from the German. To our nine, one more goal would finish this. Dolan Mike, congratulations. But now I won, it's just uh, feeling is better than ever before. Dolan Mike is the wonder kid out of Germany. This man is 9 1 up. 10 1 up. Don't score. Don't score. Come on, please. Dolan Mike is a man who has no mercy. Grand final time in the virtual Bundesliga. Could be an electric start here from Dolan Mike. Cut back inside. 2 0. Polinio. Is there one more pass? Yes, there is. Dolan Mike is in dreamland. Dolan Mike will be the virtual Bundesliga champion. Welcome back, guys, to the first round of the lower bracket. What a video that was of Dolan Mike, who will be our feature match today. And we can expect some very intense, exciting things from him. Thoughts? Yeah, Dolan Mike has been in and around the scene for a number of years now. Of course, winning multiple championships in the, the virtual Bundesliga and foot champions cups as well. He's performed at the highest level. And again, today he starts off as he started off the previous phase with a loss. But this time he can't afford to go 0-2 and two because that means elimination. But he needs to start performing straight away and he's got the ability to do so. The, the young man, of course, he's, he's had the, the experience of, of competitions, whether it's winning his first round or losing the first round. He knows what it takes. But of course, his opponent does it. I'm as well as we run through some of the other fixtures. Of course, the other featured matches are The Stranger up against Danny Pitbull and Van Basten up against XL Tom. Of course, this is a loser bracket game, an elimination game. So the loser is eliminated. And in order for these players to reach the next stage, they need to win five games in a row. What's really interesting about the matchup between The Stranger and Danny Pitbull is they actually matched up against each other in the group stage stages, Danny Pitbull leading the Stranger, three goals to one. As we take a look at XL Tommy, lost 4-3 earlier on today against Antonio Redea. So that was a close game, of course, losing in the latter stages of the second leg. So that's a painful one to take. But XL Tom coming off of a victorious run in the E Premier League, losing in the final, but of course, performing extremely well. And he's, he's someone that's been very consistent throughout the years. Up against Van Basten, seed number 28, lost 7-2 to Marwan in the previous round. So that's a resounding scoreline. So he'll be hoping to, to prove his ability on the biggest stage of all. Up against XL Tom, that is a massive, massive game. Looking over at the matchup between Danny Pipple and The Stranger. As mentioned before, Danny Pipple and The Stranger matched up in February in the group stages. That was the only loss for The Stranger and Danny Pipple leading that. So he's going to look to do a double or nothing over The Stranger. Yep, absolutely. He wants to, to redeem himself after losing a close game against Nicholas. But The Stranger, as you mentioned, he's a veteran in the scene, genuinely. He's been about for a number of years now, losing narrowly 7-6 to Giovanni in the previous round, of course, coming in as seed number 24. So again, he's somebody that's got the know-how, he's got the ability, and we hope he can do it again in, in this game. I think both very experienced players, but paying some attention to our main stage game between Dylan Mike and I'm Myrtle. Again, both very, very well-known players, especially Dylan Mike. He's been around the scene for a long time, despite being relatively young. Yep, absolutely. He's accomplished a lot in the scene. He's one of the best German players that we have seen in the history of the FIFA Global Series. And that says a lot because the German scene, in my opinion, is one of the strongest, if not the strongest. So again, he knows what it takes to win competitions. He knows what it takes to win important games. And this is just another one of those. He needs to start brightly, though, compared to the other games because he seems to, to start off a little bit slowly. But I think once he gets into, gets into gear, gets into full flow, he's definitely one of the best players in this competition. Well, as we know, Dylan Mike having won VBL championships several times with Champions Cup in 2019. He's no stranger to winning, so I'm sure he's going to want to do that today to ensure that he doesn't go home before Sunday. Yep, absolutely. But it's not going to be easy coming up, up against Imatao, as we mentioned, just losing narrowly in the first round of the day. He's somebody, again, that's been around for a number of years. Now, he's got a lot of history behind him and a lot of support, and he knows that this is a very important game, and it's it's something that he could hold into the occasion and just embrace it, playing against somebody of, of a similar skill level. So he knows that it's going to be a very, very tough game as the countdown to kick off begins. We're getting ready to go into our featured matchup between Dal and Mike and Aymer Tal. Amartel, obviously being a Turkish international, would want to be at that final in Istanbul, his home country. Yeah. He wants to represent, um, qualified for 10 plus land events. 
but not won a major thus far in his career. Yeah, it just shows the, the consistency, but he's just lacking the extra step just to, to get his first win or major win behind him. As we go into the game, it'd be interesting to see if there's any changes because we were, were able to see um, that on Mike earlier on today as part of one of the featured matches. If there's any changes in, in personal tactics or maybe personnel in the teams, because of course that could come into play. Of course, losing the first round, maybe he starts to think maybe this person didn't work for me in right back or in left back. Maybe this formation didn't work for me, so we could change up some things coming into this game. Tell us a little bit about the play style between Imertal and Dolan Mike and, and what we can expect from both, play both players going into this match. I think based on the, the scenario that we have right now, they both know that they don't want to make mistakes to cost them. I think it's going to be a tentative first um, half, I'd say, coming into this game. I don't expect there to be a blowout scoreline, well, at least initially anyway. I think both of these players will play the clock down a little bit, just see what their opponent does in terms of creating chances, creating opportunities going forward and, and what formation they use because I spoke about the, the prominence of playing 5-4-1 or 3-4-2-1 and I expect both of these players to play the same. Definitely. Well, Imertal having been eliminated in the E-Champions League 2022 in the second round of knockouts is going to want to look to go even further this year and as mentioned being a Turkish, Turkish international he's going to want to represent his country at the final. Taking a quick look in one of our other matches, Stranger actually has led Danny Pitbull one goal to nil. And what a great start from him having lost to Danny Pitbull in February. It's a huge start. There's still a chance building up here for Mertal on the edge of the box hit. Good goalkeeper movement from Dynamite there, just sort of covering all options there, moving the goalkeeper back and across the goal line to stop an almost certain goal there, but as we spoke about the goal there from Stranger, just quick passing in around the area for the shot. And this chance there from Amertau comes to nothing. Taking a quick look again at one of our other games between Van Basten and Excel Tom. Van Basten leading Tom one goal to nil as well. We've seen a kind of Tom knows that he's very good at this game, but starts off a little bit slow sometimes. Yeah, I think for me anyway, Tom's been one of the, the most consistent players throughout the, the FIFA seasons. He hasn't had the, the rich run of, of form that he did have from FIFA 20 and FIFA 21, but he's still amongst one of the best players in in Europe and, of course, in the world. As we see this chance from, from Ayman Tau, it could lead to something. Quick twisting and turning, but no space opened up there. Of course, his opponent, Van Basten, for XL Tom, is sort of an unknown quantity, so you don't really know what to expect. I doubt they would have played um, in the past or much at all in the past if they have, so... so it's sort of a, a weird position to be in for Tommy. He doesn't have too much information about his opponent, other than, of course, he's, he's done enough to get to this stage, so he's a, a top, top player. Exactly. Both of them going 3-2 in the group stages. So, like you said, similar caliber. Dolan Mike on the attack here, looking to find some space with, with Ronaldinho. A ball roll scoop to find that space, but can he get the shot away? Perhaps a one pass too quick that gives I Martel the possession back. It's a good ball in here. R9 does have some space, but can he find the goal he tried? Yeah, just the a little opening there for the Fidesz on the edge of the box. Wasn't timed green, but that's something you have to look out for, those options down the wing. Of course, they can play the pass inside. They could they could play a lot. They could use a creative run, but they could also take the, the finesse shots or the, the Travellers we saw. We saw Tech score one against um, Uma in the previous game as well. We've seen a lot of finesse shots going from the likes of Nicholas, who likes to, to explore those options as well. Good ball there through to Ronaldinho. Finding some space here and wide open green time leads 1-0. Dolan Mike will love that goal this early in the first leg. That is a big goal. You saw the space open up from the triggered run with Ruud Hullet. A pass into him, into the area, a pass back and of course the green time on the weaker foot of Alaron into the corner there. To give him the one goal lead, that's a very bright attack there from Dolan Mike and it's a perfect start for him. Martel going to want to maintain the same possession that he's been making and again not make too many mistakes. Do you project this being a close game between the two? Yeah, I definitely do. I think both of these players I uh, spoke about earlier how they're obviously extremely good, but I just feel as if, I wouldn't say nerves necessarily will play into it, but I just feel as if they don't want to make any mistakes because I felt as if in that first game for Dalla Mike, if it's, if it's being hard, I feel like he just made a few mistakes which led to goals, and I think he wants to iron out those flaws, which could make him play slightly slower. But of course, it, FIFA's made, or the opponents anyway, it's sort of based on 
on matchups and play styles. I think that plays a key factor in games, and I'm not too sure if these players have played each other before. Well, I think that's what happens when you get to this level of FIFA as well. Often mistakes are exactly what lead to conceding. Like we've seen so many times, looking over at the matchup, 1-1 draw, but Stranger actually takes the lead 2-1 again. Like I said before, he's going to want to have that redemption on Danny Pitbull. Danny Pitbull, of course, coming off of an e A win literally, what, two days ago? Yeah, so he would be coming in very, confident. very confident. Exactly, yeah, but he's had two tough games to start off with, with losing, of course, to Nicolas Tuno in the first game of the day, and now down by two already up against the Stranger. This could be a chance here. Trying to find the space, R9, but not quite the space that he wanted, perhaps a... I think he'd done a little bit too much there. I think he didn't expect the, the chance to open up there that easily. There's a lot more space than he anticipated, and again, just rushed the, the pass forward there. Dolomite comfortable with the one goal lead. Finding R9 in the box, but defended well by David Alaba. We love to see David Alaba in these sides, of course. to our nine a great pass through to Captavia straight to the goal line but defended out by Dolan Mike so you're gonna see any custom corner routines switching at the near post there but not enough trajectory to get past the first man but we saw there with the build-up the player lock here could send Dolan Mike in a goal expect our nine to find some space didn't quite expect him to take that first shot but did and saved well by van der Sar. This is going to be sensible from Dalla Mike here. Approaching the end of the first half, a couple moments left of the game to be played. He doesn't want to give away possession, just going to wait and buy this time to see if a space can open up. And of course, there's no added time, so it's straight into half time. Dalla Mike leading one goal to nil against Aymer Tal. I think he'll be happy with that. That's a good start for him, considering how his first matchup went today and didn't have an easy way to the knockouts uh, in the group stages as well. So. He'll be content, but again, like you said, I'm Rattel, all to play for. There's still a leg and a half left. Any changes made by these two? Um, I'd highly doubt it. I don't think there's there's much to change with the, the way the game's going. Of course, it's been very close, very tense between both of these players, and I doubt there's going to be any changes going into the second half. I'm Rattel looks calm. Cool, collected, knows what he has to do to get the job done. Similarly, Dylan Mike, also calm, cool, collected, having, being up a goal. Mordell looking to find that space with our nine, takes the shot. Perhaps something we've seen a few times already, maybe too early. It's tough to Not say timed. because if that's time green and of course goalkeeper isn't moving, tend to see those goals go in. So it's an angle that you can shoot from, especially if the, go if the goalkeeper steps forward there. I thought the pass might have squeezed through there for Aymer Tau. But of course, hindsight's a wonderful thing. Maybe he could have taken an extra touch or, or looked for a pass across goal or, or anything. But it was good goalkeeper movement from Dunn and Mike just to, to close the angle down. He's been really good with his, his goalkeeper movement so far this game. We see a lot of these passes for Dunn and Mike going down the wing, utilizing those wings a lot. Being very decisive with his passes. Not wanting to get up, give up possession, but he does there. Gets it back quickly. Alawiren in the box. Can he find the space? Through to R9. He does. Takes the first time shot with R9. 2 nothing. That's a big, big goal from Dalamite. They're making use of the space in the box. Baiting a, a run down towards the byline, but cutting in slightly and playing a pass across goal there for an open finish there with R9 into the corner. It's now two goals to the good for Dalamite. What do you think Amartal's handling the pressure at this point, knowing that, you know, he still has a lot of time, but as we mentioned before, this is an absolute do-or-die game. 
you lose, you go home. Yep, exactly. I feel as if he's played pretty well so far. He's created a few chances. I don't think he's playing badly at all. But again, it's uh, it's narrow margins when it comes to the, the top level in FIFA. Just a powerful run there from Dunamak towards the byline. Looking for the pass across goal, but wasn't able to find anyone. And as you can see here, just the, the structure of a, a back through, a back five is... To counter-attack against it is, is very difficult because look how quickly the players get back into position. They're already set up as a, a flat five in defence. Offensively, they offer support and the, the overlapping run with the wing-backs as well. You can trigger runs, which a lot of players do with the centre midfielder. There's a lot of, of avenues to attack in the, in the formation. You wouldn't believe so anyway if you have a uh, five at the back. Definitely. Well, we... What do we say, Ryan, typically about two goal leads? Yeah, of course, the, the cliche is it's never safe. It's probably the most dangerous lead to have, but it's... It's difficult in FIFA to, to maintain any lead, let alone a, a two-goal lead. And of course, especially with there being two legs of two legs of play to, to deal with. So yourself as a as a player, being in the position of Amartal, what would you do? How would you feel? But before we get into that, let's take a quick peek at the matchup between Van Basten and Tom. Yeah, this is live, of course. Uh, it could be a chance building up for Tom, but it wasn't meant to be good defending. But Tom is still down by one goal against Van Basten, so there's still a, a little way to go as we were able to, to look into the game. For, for Tom, he just needs that, that little bit of, of confidence in his game. He needs to trust his ability and, and believe he has what it takes to, to perform at the top level because, as I said, he's one of the best players in the world, and he's shown that across the years. Well, Tom, obviously, coming off of an E-Premier League final um having lost in the final but a runner-up is is nothing to scoff at i would say so he has that confidence he's played under the lights on the stage in recent weeks and i think one goal is uh will be nothing that he hasn't seen before Of course, there are other games going on. We're able to, to have the luxury to, to hone in on some of the other games going on. That was almost a chance as well. Rapsu up four goals to one against Oli Boli. That is a, a big result. Montaxa 2-1 up as well. We have Lex down two goals to one against Pepe. Lex, if I'm being honest, is one of the players that I looked at as someone you could focus on to progress into the latter stage. I think he's incredible, but he started very, very slow. Taking, uh, Talking a little bit about Pichotto, he's down 2-1. So again, elimination games here. On are leading two goals to one. Two games that we saw a couple rounds ago, ago against different opponents. Ali Bali trailing four goals to one. Another surprising scoreline, maybe a chance here for Dell and Mike, but doesn't space, quite get the shot away. The space seems to open up a lot there when he drives straight towards the byline. He's not afraid to, to carry on running. I think because there's so many options to to utilize there, whether it's a, a cutback or a player lock or a German cross. He sort of thinks Dallemite's going to do that, but every time he's driven towards the byline. But it's just missing that striker because he's always making the runs with the striker. There's no one else in the box there just to, to get onto the end of it. Could be a chance here for Imertal, but Dallemite says, nope, not today. Good over the top ball to Ronaldinho. Has some space, doesn't quite have the players up. And Amartal will get there in time to regain that possession and clear that out. Yeah, I think similarly to, to how Dunham Mike ended the first half with possession, I think I wouldn't be surprised if Amartal does the same thing unless a chance like this could open up. Captain the tackle there as well. Chance here from Alawire, and it does go in. We've seen that all too many times, close to the 90th minute. Gets a goal back, as we said. It could, he could come back, of course. I thought that, that tackle there was slightly missed time from Dunhamite. Could have given away a penalty, but of course the pass was enough to open up there on Alawaran's right weaker foot. I think Amardal's going to be really happy with that. Ending this first leg with at least a goal. Yep, absolutely. It gives him a, a lifeline, or even bigger lifeline, to know that there's still... A long way to go, and it's only a, a one-goal deficit now, potentially going into the, the second leg. But, of course, we still have potentially one last attack in this game for Dullamike. 
Have you played against Dolomite before? Yeah, Dolomite is someone we played across. Yeah, even in the in 2v2 formats as well, he was part of the group I was in um, earlier on in the Masters tournament. He's a fantastic player as well. He's very good going forward. I think that's probably his, in my opinion, his strength. Obviously, he's very good defensively, but I think offensively is, is where his strengths are. But that is the end of the first leg of our main stage game between Dolomite and Imer. Of course, reminder, this is an elimination game. So the loser is out. The winner progresses into the second round of the loser bracket. So that is going to be a, a long route into the top eight. A long route that not sure you want to be there, but taking a quick peek at the Stranger versus Danny Pitbull. The Stranger leading five goals to three. Yep. This is live as well, of course. Eight goals we've seen in the first leg. Crazy. Of a game. This is a ridiculous scoreline so far. Again, I sound like a broken record. I've said this like four times already, but these two matched up. So it's really interesting to see, especially Danny Pipple coming off of such a big win earlier in the week in the East Serie A. Having uh, conceded five goals to the stranger is surprising. Saw the jump was whipped in there. Saw the, the triggered run from Rude Hullet darting into the air. That's something that honestly is one of the, the most frightening things to deal with when you see him making the darting run into the box. Of course, our other feature game was between Tom and Van Basten. Tom did lose the first leg, one goal to nil, so he needs to, to bounce back going into the second leg. But this game, of course, the stranger in control as it stands. Seems as like there's a little bit of a team press going on from Danny Pitbull just to try and force the stranger forward. And there could be some space for maybe one last chance here for Danny, Danny Pitbull to defend. And he does enough there just to stop it. And the stranger takes that first leg, five goals, two, three. A lot to play for for all of these players. As we know, Tom has come back from several in the Premier League, so maybe we'll see him do it again. But before we get into the second leg, let's quickly take a break. Don't go anywhere. what you call it, football transcends all languages and unifies us. The UCL Global Native Jersey stands for exactly that. The jersey will officially launch on April 25th, and you'll be able to also collect this jersey in EA Sports FIFA 23 Ultimate Team. Make sure to pick one up at stores or in-game and share the moment using the hashtag Global Native to unite with other fans of the beautiful game. You can now pre-order the jersey exclusively on the official UEFA Champions League online store by scanning the QR code below. 
Welcome back from the break. Of course, we are here in our loser bracket round one. We saw some crazy results in the first games so far, in the first leg of the games, I should say. Dalamak up two goals to nil against Ima Tau. We have The Stranger up five goals to three against Danny Pitbull. And of course, our other feature game, Van Basten leading one goal to nil up against Tom. But of course, the main man we're focusing on is Dallin Mike. Performing how he needs to do in this round, of course. Starting off very slow today, losing up against Emre Yilmaz by resounding fashion as well, Lee. I think it was eight goals to two, so that's a heavy loss to take. And it shows a lot of character to be able to bounce back so quickly and perform well. Well, a heavy loss to take, especially in your first game of the weekend, when everything's on the line, like, you know, do or die, like we said, going to the final in Istanbul or not. And uh, this game, we'll see exactly that. We are in our second leg, so Imerdal has all to play for. Dolomite leading two goals to one. One goal, that's not yeah, exactly. a lot to get back. Yep, yeah, 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 I forgot there was a, a late goal as well. It was 2 that was 2 1, of course. Amatar scoring late on in that game. Of course, this is a, an, an elimination game, and you spoke about how, how important it is to start. Well, I feel as if in this tournament specifically, you already know your opponent coming into this for, for days or weeks beforehand, and to lose. The first round is very, very detrimental because, again, as a player myself, it's something that you look forward to. You've already sussed out your opponent. You've analysed their gameplay. You've already thought about how you're going to perform against them. And to lose the game is is a very tough, tough result to take. But again, at this level, you're not going to be able to win every single game and you need to be able to take the losses when they do come. And Dunham Mike is somebody that's very, very professional, very, very confident in his game style. As we see, great dribbling here from Aymer Tal, trying to find some space but it's good defending from Dalamite. I pointed this out a few times today and in previous competitions where some players choose to play without a coach. Obviously yourself as a player, do you per prefer to play with one or without one? And how does that affect the mental of the player? Um, it depends. I don't actually... Uh, actually my, honestly, you could ask me this next week, it will change. My <laughs> opinion changes on this. I feel as if having a coach is very, very valuable. He's able to to help you, not just in the, the game perspective, but of course the mental side of things. You need someone that can just keep you level-headed, can sort of just little reminders in the game. I don't need something that could be micromanaged or mini um, um, bits of feedback throughout the game. Just something where, even as simple as, oh, it's the 42nd minute, don't rush the attack or just something little like that. I think is very, very key to have a coach behind you. But mainly as for Umar, we spoke about earlier as well on stage, he has his coach who's able to just dissect his opponent and, and do all the analysis for him. It sort of takes away that the other part of your brain working throughout the game, wondering what formation your opponent's playing, has he changed anything? You don't have to worry about that because your coach takes control of that. But I guess on the contrary, the advantages of not having a coach is, you know, it's all for yourself. Yeah, exactly. No one behind you, you don't have to, to do anything. But again, some players, it, it works against them because sometimes your coach could be used just to, to slow the pace of the game down a little bit or maybe between pauses or could remind you to take a pause because we know how easy it is. You fall into a trap of just wanting to restart the game as quick as possible if you're losing. This could be a chance for Dullum Mike. Ooh, a great chance. Pulls the goalkeeper out. Dullum Mike takes advantage of that opportunity and goes up three goals to one on aggregate. One nothing on the night. It's a great ball over the top there. I spoke about the triggered runs, making the use of it. Pass across goal for an easy finish. And his two goal cushion has been restored early on in the second leg. That's a big, big goal for Dullum Mike. Well, we see very little celebration for him. Just a, a quick sip of his water, but I'm sure. He will be elated looking back on scoring that goal early in the first half of the second leg. Does Amartal have the suits, the tuxedo kits? I think he does. Yeah, I think he is using that, of course. I love that. <laughs> maybe it's a favorite kit of his, but going to need it to maybe give him some sort of some boost of luck here in this game say. because he needs to, to get back into this as soon as possible. Maybe wasn't quite the luck that he needed right there, but hopefully, maybe it's some superstition that he has when he's down using the, the tuxedos will bring him back. We'll see. Still, like we said, two goals, not a huge, huge deficit to come back from. Good way possession there, sort of easily from Aymertau. Dalamite's going to try and make the most of it here with the step overs into space. I thought that pass was going to be dinked over into our nine to create a chance. And again, possession almost given away. There seems to be a lot of rushed moments in transition, but the space opening up here. Look at the back post run there from R9. It seems to be tracked really well. It's good defending there from Dalamite. 
We've seen a lot of differences in the play style of this match versus the last match. This one's a little more end-to-end. -end. A potential chance here from, for Dylan Mike, looking for the space with Ronaldinho again, but a lot of pressure from Imertel. Taking a quick look at our game between Danny Pitbull and Stranger. I believe Danny Pitbull might have gone up a goal. Because we're able to take a look at the replay here. Played across goal, another simple finish there from Danny Pitbull, just tackling the Stranger in his own half. And it's now five goals to four. Could that be a start of a comeback there for Danny Pitbull to try and get back into the game against the Stranger? Nine goals is crazy, by the way. A lot of goals early on in that game. Of course, there's still a little way, or a long way to go, I should say, in that game. Over three quarters of the game still left to play, and there's been ten goals or nine goals already. So that is a... Do you credit the... I don't even know if you credit the attackers there, or do you credit... Or do you scrutinise the defending there? It's a bit of both, because there seems to be a lot of goals that are from unforced errors in that game. But like you were saying at the break, at this stage in the competition, in an elimination game, to have that many goals is, I don't know, would you say unheard of? I would say, I would say it's very, it's very rare. difficult to, yeah, I'd say it's rare because again, a lot of players when you're in this position where your back's against the wall, you have to win and a loss eliminates you from the competition. You kind of just play a little bit slower naturally. It sort of feeds into that play style. Martel looking to close the gap in this game, similar to the way that Danny Football is closing the gap in the other game. It's building up here for my Martel here. The step overs win. Kafu in the right back position. I think there's been a change of formation. Is there going to be a, a goal here? The heel to heel drag through the defenders. It's a slice of fortune, but it's a bit of luck that he needed to get back into this game now. It's the kit. <laughs> yes, yeah, three goals to two now. Level. 1-1 one, one in this game, but of course the all-important score is the aggregate one where he's still losing by one and needs to get back into this as we take a look there. The heel, the heel to heel drag there through the defender. I don't think there was a, a tackle put in there from Dalamax. It's all jockeying around there. But you expect to, to win the ball back, but he just needed to press tackle in those positions. And it's an all-important goal just before half-time as well from Aymertal. And I'll get the, the momentum he needed. Excuse me. Channeling maybe my inner Michael Owen here a little bit, but that's why a two-goal lead is so dangerous, because you score one goal, and then there's only a one-goal deficit. It really is. As we're able to take a look at all three of the featured matches live right now, as you can see. Danny Pitbull up, two goals to nil against the Strangers. Now 5-5 five, five in aggregate. That's 10 goals. That's crazy. Already, that is a lot of goals scored. And of course, Tom against Van Basten is still 1-0. That is a, a very, very tight game so far, and it's a, an all-important one. It would be in my opinion anyway, a huge upset to see Tom eliminated this early on in the E Champions League. But there's still a way away before that happens. He's still got a, at least a few more chances in that game. This could be a, the last attack of this half as well, Leah, for Aymertal. Could he get another goal here at a perfect moment? Having the possession, the odds are in his favour. Just needs to find the space. Needs a little extra juju from the kit. Thought the step over was going to get into the space there, but it was good defending from Dallin Mike as we go into half time now. 1 1 in this game, 3 2 in aggregate. Dallin Mike still in the lead. Managed to restore his two goal lead, but it was cut short just before half time from Ayman Town. I don't know, I, I highly doubt there'd be any changes between the two, but I think Ayman Town probably would set up a, a tactical variation where if things are the same or maybe potentially worse as the game goes on, he could switch to constant press, switch to a tactic that would allow him to to try and push more bodies forward. As we're able to see some of the live score lines, Deeper Shotter up against Monsta Montaxa is 2-2. Jota by 5-4 up against Kamau. Lex still two goals down, or 2-1 down, I should say, up against Pepe. JRG losing 4-1 to Danny Visser, who we saw earlier today. And I am Rafsu 7-4 up against Oli Boli. That is a huge, huge result there. That would mean Oli Boli is eliminated. Bearing in mind, he was 4-1. He's coming in as seed number four, I believe it is, as one of the players that had an incredible record, and his only loss was to Anders, and he's about to be eliminated on the day at zero and two. That is a, a massive, massive upset. Especially with a scoreline like that, that, as we were just saying, to have a scoreline like that at this stage is 
quite outrageous, but a good over-the-top ball there to Ella Wyron. Green timed, calm as you like. We see the emotion now from Dylan Mike. Important goal, that one. Definitely. You can see the attack building up there from the triggered run with Alawara. And I was very shocked there that Amata didn't track the run. You can see the, the attack taking place. There. It's a ball over the top there. The keeper movement as well wasn't enough. And it was calm. It was composed. It was green timed. And it was into the bottom corner for Dallin Mike. He takes the lead now. Four goals he has scored across these two games. He has his two-goal cushion back now. He's up four goals to two. That is a... A very, very important goal to score. You can see a little bit of the frustration in the face of Imerdal. At this point, are you changing anything? Um, still not changing anything yet. I'll have something lined up in terms of, a, as I said, a constant press or maybe a 4-3-2-1 or a 4 triple 2 You could maybe go team press in-game with the, of course, the D-pad tactics. But I, don't, I think it's way too early to go constant press. You've still got 40 minutes or so left to play. It's, it would be, in my opinion, rash to, to go full out attack right now. We will see what Imerdo can do to get this back. This place class pass there. Dylan Mike regaining some of that possession. Down the wing as we've seen, but out. And a quick uh, update from our other game between Van Basten and Tom. Van Basten does take the lead in this match. One goal to nil, two nothing on aggregate. As we be able to dissect the goals. We look at the replay here. It's a driven pass into R9. It's a simple pass across, and it's a, a shot there underneath the goalkeeper into the corner. Two goals to the good for Van Basten. XL Tom down by two goals going into half time there. He needs a turnaround, and of course, he can do it. He's got the ability to, but Van Basten, that is a huge result if he's able to pull this off. Another chance here for Imer Tau, and it's twisting and turning in the box. I thought he slightly overplayed it, but he's done enough to find that angle to get the shot at goal. And now it's again, Leo, he's pulled the deficit back to just one goal between him and Dalla Mike now. One goal, I mean, at the end of the day, all that matters is if that ball goes in the back of the net. And for Armerdal, it did, like you said, one goal. That would be a, quite the comeback for him if he's able to pull it off. Yep, absolutely. And he'll be feeling a, a lot more confident now because he, would, he might feel a slight element of fear from Dalla Mike thinking that he doesn't want to give away the lead again and potentially it could give him a boost of confidence knowing that there's still over 30 minutes left to be played for him to try and get one goal to equalise or maybe two goals to even potentially win it if the scoreline does remain the same in terms of goals scored for Dallin Mike. But I think for Dallin, there's still going to be opportunities for him to find space. He doesn't need to... An opportunity indeed could be one of those right here. Saw our nine in space at the top of the six-yard box but defended very well. Another chance here, a mistake from Imerdal that gives Dylan Mike the possession back. Beautiful whipped in cross there. Saw the triggered runs there. You've got to be aware of those for Imerdal. He still hasn't manually tracked the run there, but it wasn't meant to be. We saw the, the chance there with Dylan Mike towards the byline. Just cancel it, canceling the Lacroqueta into a pass there, intercepted from Imerdal. Fortunately there for him. Imerdal building up play here. Looking to, to get that goal back to equalize this. Can this be the one? Maintains a possession. Wow. Not a penalty. Uh, oh, my goodness. What is going on here? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> At first, I thought it could have been a penalty. Then the ball... Stopped. Managed to ricochet back to him <laughs> and then gets trapped underneath him. You always almost certain, certainly feel as it when, when the, the ball seems to be trapped in the area, you almost think, of course, I'm going to end up conceding from this, but... Dalamite does just enough. There's 20 minutes left to go now. Now the, the clock is ticking. I think these are the moments you look towards changing something as he gets possession back there. Dwindling in possession from Dalamite. Can I might have pushed forward? There seems to be a lot of gaps opening up here and he's chosen the wrong option. The pass was on, but it wasn't executed properly. We've seen what that last goal did for the confidence of Imertal. He's playing with a lot more intensity to get that goal back. He also knows he's running out of time. A non-timed shot from Dylan Mike in our nine. Saved and out for a corner. A pause queued up, like you mentioned, Ryan, making some changes now in the latter 15 minutes of this second leg. Do or die. Yep, I thought that was a, that was a, a great attack they built up from Dylan Mike, utilizing the, the driven passes, building up towards the byline. 
playing it back across and the, the fizzed pass back into the box. He's done everything perfect there other than the green time shot, which could have led to a goal in at the near post. But as we said, 20 minutes or so left to be played in this game. Some exciting things happening in some of the other matches around the studio as well. We'll get updates on those as we continue. But like we said, 15 minutes left in this one. We'll be able to catch the end of the other matches, luckily as well, to see who is advancing and who is going home. Able to look at some of the latest scores as well. Rafsu still up 7-4 against Oli Boli. Pashoto's losing 3-2 to Montaxa. As we see the finesse shot saved by the goalkeeper movement. Lex still down two goals to one. Danny Vissa 4-1 up against JRG. That is a massive, massive bounce back as well from Danny Vissa. We saw him on the main stage. 5-6. So Kamal, another ginormous scoreline. Intensity in the build-up from Imertal. Dolomite looking to perhaps get that cushion back, but not make any mistakes. He doesn't want to concede at this time. Our nine's in the box there. Oh, that was a lot of space opening up there for Dolomite to take advantage of that. I don't think he'd done necessarily anything wrong there, but he just couldn't find the opening. It was well defended. I think Imertal sort of sussed out how Dolomite tends to, to run straight towards the byline. The space opens up for the through ball in the middle. He's opted to play it down the wing. Ten minutes left to play, Leah. Mallorwyron into some space here, looking for the clear-cut pass. <gasps> oh. oh! Listen, if that went in... I feel like we were going to see the equaliser there from Aymer Tau. There was a few options he could have taken. Taking a quick peek at some updates from our other matches on these stages up here. Tom. Got the penalty, scored with R9. Van Basten with a red card. So that gives a huge advantage to Tom in the latter stages of the second leg for him. Absolutely. It's going to be a, a very, very nervy last 20 minutes for Van Basten to defend. But for Tom, up against 10 men, he definitely has the, the foothold in that game now, the personnel advantage. So can he make it count when it matters most? But of course, in this game, we still have 10 minutes left to play. Dunamite up by one goal against Ima, so I have to keep reiterating, this is an elimination game. The loser goes home, the winner advances into the second round of the loser bracket. We mentioned before that the loser bracket is uh, no easy feat for these players. Five rounds, I think. Chance here from Dylan Mike. Perhaps not quite what he wanted. Teed up the volley there for Peter Crouch, of all people, in at the back post there because you can see the subs being brought on from Dynamite, trying to just shore up the game and using Peter Crouch as an out ball if things go. Hayward is able to just play it over the top and he's giving away possession. The last five minutes for Ayman Tal to push forward and he's given it straight back to Dynamite. So this time Dynamite will try and be a bit more... Oh. oh my God! You rarely see mistakes like those at stages in the game like this. And Dolomite will have to be extremely frustrated at that mistake. Wow. I was about to say, I'm sure he's about to keep a bit more composure and possession. Now he's learned his mistake from giving it away genuinely five seconds just before that. And he's cleared the ball straight into Aymer Tau. That is a horrible goal to concede. Horrible. In one of the last stages of the game. Fires it straight against someone rushing attacker there. Outrageous. Uh, that's tough to take. That is a morale knocking goal to concede especially this late on but of course he just needs to reset just needs to, to focus again because he still he still has possession now straight from the kickoff he could generate another attack to try and just get the goal back and I'm sure that'll be all important but of course 4-4 four, four on aggregate now wow that is a <laughs> that is a tough goal to concede late on you know I wasn't sure my anxiety, my blood pressure was increasing because I was like, why has he cleared it yet? <laughs> Dolomite looking to solidify He's giving the ball anything. away. There's a minute left for Amatau. If he can get the ball forward here, if there's enough time just to generate one last attack, the clock's ticking. I don't think he's going to be able to, to get it past in time to create that last attack. And this will be it, surely. Oh, my God, the rest played on here. Does Dylan Mike have a the chance? The space is open! <gasps> oh my god! <laughs> Out 
outrageous, outrageous to concede a goal like that and then score a goal like that in the, literally the 93rd minute. The shush as well to the camera for Dallin Mike. The ice in at the back post. Peter Crouch of all people. You have Perfect. to feel for Imerdal in a, in a situation like that. I'm surprised the ref didn't blow the whistle there. Right? It's, part, it's in his own heart. I'm very shocked that that hasn't happened there. But again, wow, that is a huge, huge goal for Dallin Mike. It sort of redeems himself for making that vital error just a few moments ago. And that is one way to be eliminated in a tournament. That is a... A tough one to take for Aymer Tau because, wow, to concede genuinely the last kick of the game. Huge congratulations to Dallin Mike and, of course, commiserations to Aymer Tau. But we can take a look at another game that was going on in our featured match. It is the end of the game. We saw there 1-1 in this game, which means Van Basten wins 2-1 on aggregate against XL Tom. So Tom is eliminated in the first round of the loser bracket. That is heartbreaking to take. Heartbreaking indeed. You have to feel for both Tom and Imertal to, to go out like that. What a roller coaster of emotions for both of them. Con scoring a goal and then conceding a goal like that in the 93rd minute to Dolan Mike. And then for Tom getting that penalty, the red card, having that little bit of hope so close and, and to go out with such a close deficit is very, very unlucky. Yeah, exactly. Of course, Tom would be, be upset about that. Um, for him as well. He's, he's prepared a lot for this tournament, but it just wasn't meant to be. And of course, you have to give huge congratulations to Van Basten. He's done what he needed to do. Bounce back from losing, of course, earlier on today and winning the first round of the loser bracket. So he progresses on. He still needs to win quite a few more rounds to, to try and reach the top eight. But of course, you don't really look that far ahead when, when you're in this stage. It's each game as it comes. And yeah, he progresses into the next round. Well, I think Dylan Mike and the rest of our winners will feel good going into the next round of the loser's bracket. Um, having not gone home in a potential elimination game, and obviously congratulations to them. Um, let's talk about the game that we just saw for everyone just tuning in. Uh, outrageous. Yeah. Outrageous. I, <laughs> I think it would have been a bit unjust if, if Dynamite did lose. I felt as if he did deserve yeah. it overall, the grand scheme of things. He created more opportuni opportunities to score. He took most of them when, he came, when they came his way, but that mistake there could have been horrible because because if you yeah. end, if you go on and end up losing that you look back at it when you get home or even straight after the game and what, think, what could have been exactly what was, what I, was doing? I doing i could have just cleared yeah. the ball but yeah yeah he dwindled in possession got got tackled basically from his goalkeeper clearing it out and then scored the last kick of the game there which is yeah that's a huge win to wild. take wild well speaking of those goals and the goals in the other game let's throw it to rich mike and grav to analyze those last three games <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very I'm much. Just trying out Leah and Ryan. That's what he did to the monitor. I'm you know, not the monitor. Little... I'm not the <laughs> monitor. Um, what a game. What a game. I mean, Grav, do we see scenes like that anywhere else other than the ECL? No, just the ECL. I mean, I don't even know what happened because he a qualified. Of errors yeah. what happened at the end of that game. I mean, it's what happened in the first round of losers because you can expect some mistakes, but I didn't expect the monitor to get slapped. <laughs> what was that? What was that? Mike. Peter Crouch, the Champions League. You in love real to life, see it. You love to see it. Brings up unlikely heroes. Peter Crouch, right now, he's going to be in every single player bench <laughs> coming off last minute. I call him two meter Peter. What a pop off. Pop off of the day. And also, those are. I, I've done this before. I don't know about you. I've done this through the weekend league because, of course, I'm not at the tournaments, as you remind us at all times. <laughs> uh, I would send Peter a message, like on social, just a thank you note. When things like that happen, you just got to let them know, I appreciate you, thank you so much for delivering for me. An incredible. back the love. Yeah. yeah. You got to pay it forward. Incredible performance <laughs> from Dylan, Mike. We can see the extended highlights of that match right now. It went long, it went late, but Mike, it was great. It was an incredible game. Uh, start to finish, uh, as you're going to see a lot of goals, and players are gonna have replies. An extra pass there, green time finish. Always taking a risk there, Dolan Mike on the board early. You see the step forwards, and I will say this about Dolan Mike's gameplay in particular, it can be kind of sporadic. We were talking about it a little bit in the back room, but you, you never know exactly what you're gonna get, but you know he's gonna go forward, and he's a very attacking player. Just a lot of risk hoping for the reward. And we're talking about how, when it comes to high scoring games, Dolan Mike feels kind of comfortable because he's not kind of those players where Neil Neil yeah. doesn't know how to attack, oh, but that's oh, oh, that's tough to watch. Oh. Oh, that's tough to watch. The celebration, the energy, and I want to... Mike, comment on that. What happened here? He's delayed it. on the release. Uh, 
uh, it, it didn't work out for him, but he kept the composure. Beautiful cross. Who else gets a <laughs> noggin on it? Peter Crouch, and, and the monitor doesn't stand a chance. <laughs> little dap, a little love for everyone. There it is. <laughs> love it's for everyone. It's literally the 93rd minute. <laughs> oh, the shush, shush as well to the, the camera, camera as well. Fight. It's the shush the to the camera. The in the back pole. Peter Crouch of all people. <laughs> oh, what a moment. No possession, by the way. No possession play at all, to your point here. This is not a guy that sees out games. He's going to keep going forward the entirety of the matchup. He's minus five goals. He's just throwing everybody forward, bro. On the Champions League so far. <laughs> and he's still alive. He's still going through. He was zero and two in the group standings. He went three and two. He was zero and one, went down to loser's bracket. If he pulls this off, he's the ultimate <laughs> underdog player, Graveson. I hate to bring it to you guys, but he, if he plays, if he keeps playing like this, it's not going to go well for him. Like, he might win one, two, but I don't think this is the kind of game style that's going to make you progress. And sure, I got to tell you, I got to tell you. He says it's not sustainable, but this has been his gameplay from the beginning. Remember the youngest Foot Champs Cup winner? Same type of thing. I mean, it was throwing it back some years. We're looking FIFA 19. But 8-7, 9-6, those type of matchups usually favor him. And he's going up against Vergain. There's going to be a lot of goals in that. It's just going to be a matter if he can defensively stop the wonder kid from scoring. Yeah, and that, that's going to be an interesting match. First match tomorrow, right? First match tomorrow. Just, I got it. I got it confirmed. First match tomorrow. Uh, we'll have a look at the bracket very shortly indeed. But there's numerous games taking place. Um, just goals all mm -hmm. over the place. Goals, extra time, big sort of season-defining moments. Danny Pitbull came out. It was 5-3 down in this game. In the second leg, Graveson, he put on a masterclass. Yeah, he definitely did. And um, we saw a lot of mistakes on the strangers part of the of the pitch, but yeah, he kept composed. It's gotta be difficult for him because it's it's kind of difficult to actually go win a tournament and then in a two days notice you are playing again and you're not playing that good and then you you lose a match, you're in the lower bracket. But he kept his composure and the second leg was amazing. I mean, five nil against a stranger, a player who won for like multiple FIFA tournaments back in the days. So yeah, an amazing performance by Danny Pitbull. Uh, yeah, go on, this is the biggest shift that we've seen with Italian players. Grav and I were both discussing this as well. When we got into FIFA Esports the earlier years, FIFA 17, FIFA 18, there was really nobody other than Denuso and Principe. And then now we have a whole new age of a community and it's supported by the streamers and the content creators. You see them here, they come out to support their guys. They got coaches and they have so many pro players that are competing not only to get to tournaments but actually to win those events. I think it's been the biggest shift that we've seen from a nation in competitive yeah, FIFA. Definitely. I would say in FIFA 19 you saw Ercaccia, you saw Cosimo Warnier kind of We had a tease. Step, yeah, we saw kind coming. of they stepping in. But then in the online format, just everyone kind of popped down and obviously Serie A plays a huge part of this. Yeah. Absolutely. One of the biggest disappointments of this E Champions League falls to the hands unfortunately of XL Tom. Tom Lee's one of the fans' favourite coming in to this tournament. He crashes out at a 0 and 2 record. Mike, where did it go wrong for Tom? Well, when you're looking at E Champions League, this is a tournament for the brave. It can get harsh very quickly because you only have those two games to make it happen. If you're not able to find your form, you're not getting the results, you're going against the best of the best. We got to remember, this competition starts with thousands of players. We, we end up where you're dealing with a, a bracket or a stage where you're looking at 64, 128. You're down to 32 here. Now we're fighting for the final eight. These aren't random guys that are playing online. These are the best of the best in Europe. In fact, some of these players moved. They shifted their entire lives to come to Europe to compete in this competition. And it was, they were two, like, against Antonio Radelja, just a four or five result. Now against Van Basten, one, two result. It's just like so, so, so thin margins, but he's out of the tournament. And these are the stats that will accompany Tom on the way out of the E Champions League. 19 shots, 1.4 XG, just didn't really click for XL Tom. I'm sure it's not the end of his season here. However, the e Champions League does continue. The loser's bracket does continue. We are starting to make some matchups final. Mike, mm. that top game mm. in the loser's bracket. Talk to me. It's mark your calendar. Yeah, this is happening right here. You don't want to miss this. Get your popcorn ready. Vergain versus Dolan Mike. You saw the energy in the room. I'm sure that's going to be one of the featured, if not the featured matchups. I also want to see Nick Sneb versus Rafsu, something that jumps off the page. Tex is in action. Maybe didn't expect Tex to be here. And then Stingray and Danny Visser, two players that I'd like to see go head to head. And those games will be taking place tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So make sure you come back. However, so I said, right the now, calendar. circle it. Mark the calendar for 
six minutes time oh my because we're going in to the winner's bracket the qualifying games Emery Yilmaz versus Nicholas 99 FC arguably the most formed player in the tournament against the most consistent player in the tournament Graveson which way is it going to go I think it might go to Emre Gilmans half because I just think his play style is so too consistent and I think it suits a potential match against Nicolas. Now the one that I really want to ask you about, we've got Neat versus Obram. Neat's your guy, but Obram is looking unstoppable. What are we saying, Graf? Neat. My heart says Neat. <laughs> Mi corazón. <laughs> Mi corazón. What's the head uh, the head ah! <laughs> He's double dipped on Neat. That game will be coming up in about an hour's time if you wanted to keep action you do. of Hezers or Daniel as well. Right now, the reigning, defending E Champions League champion <laughs> is in action. Nicholas 99 FC on the main stage. Do not miss this. Brandon Smith and Jaime Alvarez will be your commentators for this qualifying match.
Well, welcome back to London for the Champions League. You join us at no doubt one of the best and most important moments of today's broadcast because people will be qualifying for Istanbul, the Champions League finals after this round. Myself, Brandon Smith and Hamay Alvarez have the call of this one. And it's someone that you know very well. We spent a lot of time with him in the last weeks and across the last year. Nicholas 99, the defending E Champions League winner, is just behind us right now against Emre Yilmaz, the player that is still unbeaten in the E Champions League in a match to qualify for the E Champions League finals. What a game. What a game. I mean, we, we have Nicolas. He's been on form lately, I'd say. He's been consistently good through FGS 1, 2, 3, e club uh, playoffs as well. And we have Emre Gilmas. He's as young. He's so young. He's like 17, 18, and he's crashing online tournaments and land tournaments in yeah. the ACL. So I don't know what to expect. I expect a lot of goals, and I expect a lot of changes in formation, tactics, instructions, and stuff. But like a result, I don't know what's going to happen. Well, these are all the fixtures coming your way from this round. Emre Yilmaz against Nicholas, Antonio Redelga against Umit, Hezers the Italian against Daniel Seven of, uh, of Hamburg Esports, and then Neat, one of the only Spaniards that seems to be left in the tournament against Obron. These are all matches that will qualify for the E-Champions League. It is worth saying as well that if anyone does lose these games, they do remain in the tournament still. They drop down to the lower bracket. It's not an elimination situation, but how good would it be? End of play today, going back to the hotel, knowing, look, I haven't got to play again tomorrow. I've qualified for the E-Champions League. I've, I've guaranteed myself more cash. I believe I've got a suit fitting on Monday for, for the finals. What a scenario it could be in after just three games. Obviously, if you can, you want to win this match and avoid the potential match tomorrow because you just got to rest today, go to the hotel, get some proper sleep. Tomorrow, maybe go shopping, do whatever you want. And then on Monday, the, the try new suits and stuff and then fly to Istanbul in a month time. If not, if you lose today, Ah, it's not that good a sleep. <laughs> no, it won't be the best sleep at all. Let's talk about this game in a little bit more detail. It's a, it's a Bundesliga clash, you can call it. It's Frankfurt against RB Leipzig. Antonio Redelga, he's just gone about his business. Very quietly, some big wins. He hasn't been on the main stage today. He's been playing in the back room a lot of his games. But what a test he has in front of him against a player that just came off the back of a, a virtual Bundesliga club championship win. A player that just beat Tex in a really jam-packed game. Four goals to two. Um, this one plans to be fireworks. Yeah, definitely. Antonio has been, as you said, quiet in his stuff because, like, we didn't talk that much about Antonio, but he's top eight of the tournament right now. So, yeah, definitely a tough match for him because he's playing Umut. I'm sure they've played in the Bundesliga someday, uh, maybe a couple of times, but I wouldn't want to be matching in a potential game to qualify for the final of, of the ECL, I wouldn't want to match Umut. Definitely. No, definitely no. not. Well, this is our featured matchup of the rounds, Graveson. No surprise, Nicholas with a great chance. As you see him just hyping himself up to qualify for another E-Champions League final. He lifted the silverware last year in Stockholm. Who's in his way, though, is Emre Yilmaz. Why this game excites me is because Emre Yilmaz isn't going to sit back, is he, Graveson? He's going to take the game to Nicholas and he's going to be in his face, attacking, creating chances. And one thing we know about this guy, he scores a lot of goals. In his last game against Stingray, he went 2-0 down in the first leg in the 60th minute. We left the game, went to a break, came back in the 25 minutes that were left. Emre Yilmaz scored three goals. This man is a machine. Definitely, and he's consistent with his build-up. German crosses, triggering runs, uh, lob through passes, you can expect everything. And then he said his help that he read times a lot of times. That's that's no, that's a lie. He green time shots every single time. And Nicolas, obviously, he's gonna keep the ball, trying to maintain the control of the game. But I don't think he's gonna be able to do it against Emre. Well, the one thing about Emre Yilmaz, I wouldn't say he's the perfect defender. Like, no. superb going forward, as you said, you know, mechanically incredible. Someone who's mechanically incredible defensively is Nicholas 99. Well, here we go then. At the end of this game, someone will qualify for the E-Champions League. The first two spots, who will they be going to? It's Nicholas against Emre Yilmaz in the E-Champions League. Upper bracket round three, AKA qualification matchup. Two legs of FIFA coming your way. Who will be the first name on the plane to Istanbul for this year's finals? He's had quite a way, hasn't he, Nicholas, to get this game underway? Vamos allá. There we go. I mean, phew. we expect fireworks in this match. We expect. Now, I want to talk about Nicolas' coaches. Last year, he had Fer Aspe 
a brilliant coach, a mastermind, and this year he has Juanma, a Spanish guy. He just manages to keep to pick, keep, keep picking perfect coaches. You know, I talked to Juanma millions of times about FIFA. He really is a mastermind. Just to get your thoughts on that as well, because fr from my account, obviously, Fur was a coach for Nicholas for some time. They got to the stage where, like, I think, look, we've had a great run. Let's just go our separate ways. And there was no bad blood there. It was a case of just moving on. And then for a time, Nicholas didn't really know, I think you know better than me, who he wanted to sit behind him. I know Juanma was with David Sanchez at Guild, who was Nicholas's teammate, and now seems like he is the coach. What, what's been happening there behind the scenes, and, and how is that relationship with Nicholas and Juanma? I, I think Nicholas is comfortable uh, without a coach or playing just by himself, but uh, Juanma did a great job analyzing Nicholas' games, sitting with him, working hard. So Nicholas was comfortable on his own, but he said, I want to try Juanma for a couple of tournaments to see how it turns. It turned out good. And now there you have him sitting just beside him. And it's a tough one being a coach, Nicholas, because what can you tell a player that is just so good at the game? Nicholas kicking from left to right in the first leg here in that white strip. And from right to left in the team, Hulik Kim. Emre Yilmaz, another surprise package that Team Hulik have been able to create. They're just a, a talent factory of the Dutch Esports organization. We've been talking about this in FIFA, what, 21, about Team Hulik. They just keep. Even Getting online, even in the online era, Grav, when Levy the Vier was coming through, winning tournaments. Oli Lito had a spell there as well with the guys at T-Bull. It still does get involved from time to time in boot camps. Here's a chance, a power shot! Ooh. Expect that from Nicolas a lot. Did not expect that. And this is a great, I mean, dear, wait and see. Well and, then. The, and this is all one man. Nicolas. It's normally a genius from these moments. What have you got this time, Nicholas? Cleared out well by Ginola. Still a possession for Nicholas. You remember last year at the e Champions League, such a big part of FIFA last year was about set pieces. That is what games were decided on last year. And if you remember rightly, there was just so many creations that Nicholas had. Here's a chance for him. Back to R9. It's headers and volleys in the box. Just about keeps it up, does the icon. Speaking of icons, there's Hullet. Back to Yaya Torre. Firmino of all players. Ginola, a couple of skill moves. Pulls out a great save from Van der Sar. Corner this time played really quickly towards that front post area. Ginola did get it time green, just didn't get the connection. And I'm going to comment on that because that was that made a huge difference last year. You remember Nicolas was kind of out of the final in a way. He was just going to lose against Matias Bonanno because he didn't know what to do. And then he scored two set pieces in a flick of a second, and he was and he won the ECL. So yeah, definitely a huge part of Nicolas' game style and gameplay. Even if he's in a game, Grav, where he seems like he's in a nil-nil scenario, he'll just pull out something from a corner. Emre Yilmaz, though, what can he pull out from here? Ronaldinho, brilliant feet. Oh, wow, Emre Yilmaz! I said he could pull something special out of the bag. Look no further than that. His first attack in the game, and he leads Nicholas by a goal to nil. That was a great L1 speed boost. The croqueta was there as well. And then I think Nicholas kind of uh, did a bad player switch and then he panicked with the second man press there was something in there that was red as well time red maybe a slight bit of fortune maybe well let's go across to the other game that's currently underway there's only two matches that are playing right now Antonio Radega against Umit Umit did take the lead we hear three and a half minutes in Hullet scoring that goal and then Ooh. seven minutes later it's a running race you can see R9 just driving forward as Antonio Found the one more pass, actually, very clever. Found Ginola, 1-1 one, one there, 11 minutes in. And the, we were talking about the L1 speed boost on members' behalf. Antonio's one was mechanically perfect on point. And yeah, we are 1-1 one, one in this match, in that match, 1-0 in this match. Oh, man. The build-up. Emre yeah, Yilmaz. Ronaldinho, he's doing so many skills and animations that even Ronaldinho is getting lost. I want to see what's going to happen because every Jitma's build-up might be the most consistent out of the whole tournament, but then Nico's player switching and anticipation is probably the best one as well. So I want to see and wait out what happened. Whoa, that's a nice press. Ronaldinho, here's Emre Yilmaz. Somehow the ball just sticks to his feet. Speak about being good mechanically. Wow. 
we always say it, don't we? Ronaldinho, there's players in the game that just have their own animations, their own way that they do skills, the own way they move around the pitch. At one point there, it looked like the ball was stuck to the feet of Ronaldinho and he just could not get near him. As we jump into a quick pause now, Nicholas, I think needed just a bit of a break. Yeah. I want to see if they change their tactics or formations for a bit. Because I know Nico has been using 4 4 2 and 4 3 2 1. Uh, and I know Emre also changes a bit between formations. So it's curious because Emre kind of paused the game, but I think Nico needed to pause more. So. And, oh, and what happens in this pause? So early into a game, what, what, what's being said from coach to player? The thing is, like, I think Emre is looking for those 1v1 situations every single time. And Nico's kind of panicking in a way with player switching and second man press. So I think Juanma might be telling him something about that. And then if I were Ember, I would just I wouldn't say a word to him if I were his coach because he's just been playing perfect. Well we didn't see a Dutch player in the final eight last year in the Champions League, so it's another little storyline there building for Emre Yilmaz. Had a great run last year in the FIFA E World Cup. That was when we really saw him step up. He was in London last year at the playoffs where he qualified for the World Cup and then just continued to dominate in that tournament in Copenhagen. That form has continued over to this year. Valverde is his right back of choice. Do you know, oh wow, this is super FIFA! Keeper makes one save, can he make a second? No, he can't! Because Emre Yilmaz is just too quick to score. You remember round three, we talked about it's not only the rebound, but how do you react to that rebound? First pass. It's just simplify, simplify, simplify. AK, an extra one more pass. But the first run, we've got to talk about the first run, uh, Hame. So clever, so creative. What do we say? Emre Yilmaz was going to take this game to Nicholas, and by God, he's done that. Yeah, definitely. And he's not afraid of Nico. He triggered a couple of runs. Uh, he's just getting the ball back. I mean, perfect FIFA on his behalf right now. He's not done yet. He wants a third. He might get one. Captavia, Emre Yilmaz on the hunt. What's key now is Nicholas does not concede again. Just been speaking about how good defensively he is. One thing you know about Nicholas, you never write this man off. Especially in DCL. Oh, Bobby Firmino wants to forget about that. Nice press. And we would definitely want Nico to keep the possession a bit more because he's attacking too quick at the moment. And I think he's losing the ball too quick by being a bit too aggressive. Firmino. Nicholas, desperate for a goal or a way back in the time. Well played. David Alaba. Partners alongside Lucio in that back line. As we said, Valverde, the right back of choice this time. Unlike Emre Yilmaz now, just have a breather on the ball. So fast pace up there normally. Yeah, definitely. And he's probably having the last play of the first half. It makes sense. Because you want to, you want the first half to end like this. 2-0. Oh no! Oh, well, here we go, Nicholas with a half chance. Still is alive. Yeah, Torre back to Ginola. Can he turn? Mm. Superb defender. I will tell you what, Emre Yilmaz has played that first passage of play so so well. I mean, I question marked him defensively. So far, he's kept Nicholas at bay. We hear there's been goals in the other game of it against Antonio Adelja. What's been happening over here? It is Antonio that took the lead, 35 minutes in. From what we hear, the current world champion of it, right on the stroke of half time. He's loving the ball with Hullet, by the way. He loves just getting down the ball. I put on a plate for David Ginola. We haven't seen a great deal of in terms of scoring goals so far here with the Champions League, proving why he should be in these teams. 2 2 evenly split over there. Yeah, and he had the chance to pass the ball twice. He didn't. He kept his composure. And when the passing lane opened to Ginola, he 
just pass it, tap in. 2-2. Two, two. Great goal. I don't, I don't know if we're going to see Nicolas changing his tactics. He was using the 4-3-2-1. He might be using 4-4-2 or maybe 5 off the back now. But he got to change something up, that's for sure. Back on the way here, Nicolas. Not the best of first half. So remember, there is a second leg still to play. So much FIFA time left. Power shot teased there by Nicholas. Happy to take those risks. Nicely done, R9. One touch FIFA on the edge of the box from Nicholas. Still has possession. Bobby Firmino! I mean, that ball was travelling with speed. And it was time green. Maybe just the wrong player. Yeah, he's tried that twice now. First time, no time finishing. This time, green one. And that's close. I don't think he's going to miss the third one. Yilmaz, his first chance to attack the second half when he gets on the ball with this man. Just watch. Yep, magic is going to happen. As he wins a corner. Shinola, pull it. Alawira, speaking of skill, speaking of flair, four white shirts around him, still finds a bit of space to work and manoeuvre him. Emre Yilmaz, what are you cooking up this time, my friend? Yaya Torre's even getting involved. Punched into the feet, Alawira and back inside to Ronaldinho offside. I think what's so impressive in the attacks there, Gramson, he could just speed up when he wants. From 0 to 100 miles an hour in, in one pass. Yeah, definitely. It's like chill, building out the play, and when he reaches that place of the pitch, he just quick passes, 100%. Yeah. Well, that's his chance comes forward from Nicholas. There has been a goal in the other game, we'll update you as soon as we can, player lock not used there, there has been a goal, it looks like he's gone the way of the current FIFA World Champion, looking to make it back-to-back, -back. E-Champions League Finals, here's the goal again, Cap de Villa, can't get back inside, forget R9, Hull it made the dart and run into the box, and uh, Umit trying to just stamp some authority on that game. That was unlucky, because Antonio kind of defended it, but his player didn't intercept the ball. R9. Pushed off the ball by Lucio, as you were saying, Gravison, sorry. Yeah, no, no, Antonio tried to intercept the ball, he couldn't do it, but I think he defended well the play. So, unlucky on his behalf. It, it didn't look like the ball should have went to Hullet there, did it? Mm. On the replay of that goal from him, he's not going to complain. He first can get a goal back here. Certainly set up the last 25 minutes. The perfect way. Ember's defence has been really, really good. He has been, and again, I'll, I'll be honest, I thought it would have been a bit leaky. It hasn't been. This could be... This could be even worse. Player lock. Back post is there. So is Park Ji Song. That's a right back. Who uh, looks to be, yeah, the, the foot here of choice for Nicholas as a right back. So many different options. Yeah. Keep an eye on. These ongoing runners, Ronaldinho, R9, keep an eye on them on the edge of the box. There's Ronaldinho, there's Emre Yilmaz. Good defending. The second man press was, was there. But... Oh, man. Those tackles has been really good. Obviously, formation change for Nicolas from 4-3 to 1 to 3 defence at the back. What do you make of that player of the Ayatore? He's coming in as a... As an... I like the idea there. When he wants to play a five-back, Nicholas, Yaya Torre comes as the centre-back, and then when he wants to change in game, he's got a CDM there that could be box to box. That makes sense, yeah. And you'd be happy for him to be a centre-back? Yeah, definitely. The thing is, uh, Tuga kind of, I wouldn't say invented, but the 3 4 two, one came into the scene because of Tuga. And Tuga uses uh, the right back or the full back as the middle centre-back to cover the German crosses because they're much quicker. And I don't think Jaya is going to be that quicker, that quick on these German crosses. So in short, you're basically trying to utilise the pace of a, a midfielder that a centre-back just won't have. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Very clever. No surprise that someone like Nicholas has picked that one up. It's Di Natale of all heroes that has come on the pitch. Oh, stamina bars dropping from Ronaldinho, but the skills aren't. Di Natale with the ball at his feet somehow. Still Di Natale, back inside into our nine. Great goalkeeper movement from Nicholas.
can we see here? Still, look at the close control dribbling. I really like what Ember is doing. Because if he passes the ball, Nicolas is always cutting the lane passes. But if you kind of... Oh, that's off. a massive win. This could be 3-0. Well recovered. Whoa. Ember is playing like... He's not afraid of Nico. That's what you got to do. If you're playing against Nico, Tex, Rumut, one of these kind of long-standing good players, just got to go forward like he's doing. Just tackling, pressing. You cannot be afraid against a player like Nico. Another aggressive win from Emre Yilmaz. Is he looking for a third? It could be cut back inside. Great save from Van der Sar. But you're absolutely right. A lot of people come into a game, a qualification game, we must add, against a, a FIFA eSports icon, you could even argue. And you'll just be a bit intimidated, won't you? He stopped being like that at all. We said he would take the game. He's done it again. Another strong press. Emre Yilmaz wants a third. He's not done yet. Oh, oh no, great feet. Back to Di Natale, fresh off the bench, can the Italian for Hero have his involvement in this game? Just, he's just teasing with Nicholas. Pull it. Fate to power shot. Oh. I mean, that would be perfect, wouldn't it? Team Hullet, Hullet scoring the thirds. Good oh, what a way to win the first leg. We could talk about many things that Ember is doing right, but I think the pressing side of things is, is, is the best one. The pressing has been insane. Nicholas hasn't even shot us in the show. He's not let Nick, uh, Nicholas play. He just has not allowed Nicholas to even score a goal. It just looks like he's in the zone. So composed as well, Romain Yilmaz. We had a little interview at the start of the show with Turkish Airlines. It just seems like he's loving his FIFA at the moment. Still unbeaten in this tour, we must add. The only player unbeaten in the Champions League, so what I mean by that, went 5-0 in the group stages back in February and still remains unbeaten here. There is still a second leg to come in this one, but Emre Yilmaz in the driving seat with a two-goal lead. What can we say? We could just clap at the moment because he's just played the perfect first leg. But as we said before, we're talking about Nicolas, current ECL champion. It's just two goals. You cannot count him out yet. I think the one way we describe this, Graus, is you can play perfect FIFA against any FIFA player in the world, but can you do it over two games? That's why we have two. That's why, that's why we have two legs in FIFA. Again, we'll have to wait and see if that is possible for Nicholas. There is a second leg to come here at the Champions League, and it will be coming up after a very short break. Who will be going to Istanbul? Who will be getting that first ticket on the plane? We shall see very soon indeed. We'll be back in a few minutes' time.
back to London for the Champions League. This is the big one now, as we said. You may have just seen Nicholas against Emre Yilmaz in the first leg here of this qualification game, Gravis. And we left the question mark before we went to break of, you can do well against Nicholas, you can do well against the Texan, and there's any FIFA player in the world, but we have two legs here in FIFA Esports for a reason. Can you do it across two legs? Because that's a big ask. That's a big And I think it's impossible to play 180 minutes of FIFA like perfectly. He has done it over 90 minutes, but I don't think he will be able to maintain this level of FIFA in the second leg. He might play good, he might win, but I think that was just perfection. And I can just, just on my hand, think of games where Nicholas has come back from, from the death against Mo Alba in the FIFA e World Cup. E Champions League against Matias Bonanno, when there was, I think, nearly a bracket reset in that, in this very tournament. So many big moments where Nicholas just always comes back. Another game as well, I think it was against Obran in, in the E-World Cup last year too. Last minute, Heaven. mentally, mentally, you might be thinking, he might be crumbling right now. I can assure you, he is not. He's thinking there is so much time left in this game. He's had about five minutes alongside Juan, the coach, to try and work that game out. Of course, as we said, there's two games underway at the same time. Umit has got a two-goal cushion. He went one up after three minutes, then went 2-1 down. What's so impressive there, Graveson, just flipped the game back on his head, comes into a second leg and has a very small advantage. Yeah, and I think almost he won the World Cup last year, but I think he was mentally destroyed in the ECL when he made the finals and lost twice. He didn't even win a game in that fourth phase of the ECL. And I think that's that gave him motivation for this, this tournament. He, he has to win at least this match and the next one to be at, the, at that potential final of the winner bracket. Because I think if you're looking to win the competition, at least you gotta reach the semi-final or final of the winner bracket, at least. Well, let's just talk about Emre Yilmaz on the flip side. How impressed were you from that first leg? Didn't concede a single goal, looked convincing, took the game to Nicholas, wasn't afraid of the big name that Nicholas is. And he's 19 game minutes away from taking the first ticket to Istanbul. I mean, I was as surprised as everyone in here and at home, I guess, because you expect big things from Emre, but when you, he's matching against the likes of Tex, of Nico, of Humut, you don't know if he's going to be able to maintain that level. And in the first 90 minutes, he has. Well, then, 90 minutes away from a ticket to Istanbul. His first ever E-Champions League Grand Final. It was his debut season last year in FIFA Esports, believe it or not, for Emre Yilmaz. Since then, a lot has changed. He'll be kicking from left to right in that Team Hullick strip. Nicholas, once again from right to left in the white. Two goals down. Is he going to be 3-0 down? Here's Ginola. Great feed. Back to Ronaldinho. Can't punch his way past Wesley Fafana that time. I would say... Oh. Again, he's just so precise in the tackles. Emre Yilmaz. Pull it, tries his best to push that pass, and it gets a, a pause cued, not from Nicolas, from Emre Yilmaz, eight minutes in. I would say Nicolas has changed against to the four defence at the back. Let's see if it works out for him. What a defence, man. The corner to come in will jump off that, not to give away any of the tactics here, but what does an early pause like that indicate? You, you think that Nicolas has changed something coming into this game? Yeah, uh, I think they're both like said, probably Ember, I don't know. I wouldn't think he has. he's making some tactic changes. I just think probably some setting things or something like that. But people at home, they play foot champs, they play division rivals. They know how hard it is to defend the byline, which is practically impossible this year. Ember has defended it like six, seven times perfectly. And I think like that shows the, le the level of commitment he has put on the defense side of things. Well, you can think, can't you? You can't actually remember a chance where Nicholas has got down the byline. I think it was the, the first the first chance of the game, like minute three, four, something like that. From then on, zero. But the thing about a player like, of Nicholas's quality, he's got like a list of all the ways he can score goals. And when he gets to the right bottom, you'll be looking at free kicks and corners, such as this. What can Nicholas do here? He's had a pause to think about this too. Corner goes in, Hullet is there. There was nothing fancy about that one. Just a time green header that just did not connect. Nicholas on the hunt for a way back into the tie. That's a nice, well-worked chance. There's the byline. There's our nine. 
back to Torre. Doesn't use a power shot, but thought about it for a split second. Wanted a free kick, will get the free kick. Does he want to play it quickly? I'm going to say power shot. He does, he plays it quickly. Firmino. Emre Yilmaz waiting patiently. Is there a gap that will appear for Nicholas to exploit? Roberto Firmino. Nicholas, one of the only players to actually start the Brazilian. And again, Emre Yilmaz just does enough. And as every minute ticks by, they'll be thinking on one step closer to Istanbul, but not the goal, he certainly will be! Alawairan makes it 3-0 to Emre Yilmaz. He's just punishing him every time. And he's finding an answer to Nicolas' second man press, which many people don't. The left seat dribbling. You said it like before, in the 80 minutes something. Left stick dribbling of Emery Gilmas has been insane. And this in this situation, like in a couple of times, the left stick dribbling was out of this world. Well, if he scores again, whoever's working in Turkish Airlines might as well start the booking process. Because <laughs> he looks as if he's going to be taking the first seat on the plane. How crazy is that? 3-0. With his first real attack of the game. And guess what? He wants four. Captavilla does get very fortunate there. Is there a cutback for goal number four? Ronaldinho scoop turn. Should have been a pen. If we're being completely honest. But the animation just didn't work his way. And is that the small fortune that might come back to save Nicholas? I'm sorry, but that was a scoop turn there from Ronaldinho. Uh, should we call it VRA, maybe? <laughs> Definitely. It's not made its way to FIFA Esports VAR yet, but <laughs> who knows? Let's check in with the other game quickly. That is still nil-nil in that one. Umic leading four goals to two. Remember, that's also a qualification game. As it stands, Umic and Emre Yilmaz taking the first two tickets to the E-Champions League finals. There's only eight tickets available. Keep that in mind. I really like in this phase of the tournament how the players from the west side of Europe match up against the players from the east side of Europe. They kind of clash and collide. It makes it interesting. Well, it's the first time we've seen these two match, haven't we, really? Yeah, I think it's the first time they're... I think they played online, but it's not the same playing online than playing in the ECL. Line. Compared to, yeah, yeah it's a qualification match, you can argue. Different. Just this change of attitude towards the game that Yilmaz can have as well. Like now, happy just to take minutes out. Let's edge towards, let's edge towards half time. Yeah, and he's still yet to concede the goal. <laughs> Which is crazy. We knew how how good he is on the, the defensive side of the offensive side of things, but we didn't know he was going to be able to maintain this level of of defense throughout the the whole leg. And if I'm not mistaken. World Cup semi-final last year it was Umut against Emre, right? I think it... You'd be correct on that. So potentially. Hello. Didn't connect there. Goals got in, we hear. Umit against Antonio. Vidalgia. And it looks as if Antonio has got a goal back in the game. Oh, oh, oh is that going to go in? Oh, he does. No, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ronaldinho first. Then Ginola has a crack, it's the post. And then, pretty fortunate. Ronaldinho at the back post somehow squeezes that one in. Only one goal between those two, but you are right. If you look at on the, between this radius we're standing in right now, you've got three of the top four players from the World Cup last year. And the other one, Obrun, is playing in an he'll hour. Be your, he'll yeah. be your next. <laughs> yeah. Consistency is key. Across a new game, too. Yeah. That's why they're the best of the world. Because you a player can pick in a tournament, but to maintain that level throughout the years, are you able to do it? I wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't able, but they are. They are able to do it. And what is the difference there? Is it just a mindset shift? I would say commitment to the game. I'll say the love of the game by itself. And it's just yeah, the hunger, isn't it? Yeah, it's a commitment is the work, yeah. 
Well, the net rate Yilmaz. If you haven't been watching this game, you'd look at the score and think, well, this looks pretty plain sailing. Hasn't been that. Emre Yilmaz has taken this game to Nicholas. And look, look at the press. He's looking for goal number four. Will he get it back to R9? It's beautiful FIFA! And he was so close to a fourth. If that was time green... Gigi. Potentially could have been Gigi. Another goal has gone in, Umit against Antonio. Oh, if you're an Umit fan, close your eyes because Antonio oh. Ronaldo has just scored again. Clever FIFA this time, Ronaldinho working for the goal and working Van der Sar around the box. Game on over there, by the way, 4-4. We will capture both winning moments. Here's Nicholas. Bobby Firmino will get a second time at it, but Lucio will also. Half time, Emre Yilmaz 45 minutes away from an E Champions League final spot. And I'd say play by play, if Emre is able to cut the byline every single time, play by play, the confidence on Nico's side just goes lower and lower and lower. Because when you reach that potential play, you're thinking like, last 10 times he just tackled me, won the ball. So the 11th, what am I going to do? Nothing's working for me. And I think. On the mental side of things, it just drains a little bit, play by play, your confidence. So how does Nicholas play out this last 45 then? In terms of minutes where goals need to go in, what time does the first goal need to go in? Now. <laughs> just now. Face up. Face up. Now in the, in the 50 minutes, 55, as soon as possible, yeah, definitely. 4 4 two in the tactics, so he's just going for the game. Three, now. three goals is not that much, but when you have not scored a goal, it seems like a, a milestone. It works both ways, doesn't it? Nicholas gets the first goal, starts to build some confidence, puts the seed of doubt into his opponent's mind. Mm. I can't believe my eyes. I'm hearing roars over to the side of me. Umit against Antonio. He's beat the goal in it. Remember, it's 4-4 last time we heard from it. 45 minutes away, Emre Yilmaz. From an E-Champions League final. Stopping the defending E-Champions League winner from getting there. Prior to the, the upper bracket, it's Pardee Song. Nicholas looking for a way back in the tie. I'm not sure what happened there. Well, we heard of Raw Graveson. This is why we heard a roar on the stroke of half time. It wasn't Ronaldinho again, was it? R9. Brilliant feat. I don't know how he's kept the ball there. Back to Ronaldinho, who has scored a hat trick in 45 minutes. Umit, he might be going down to the lower bracket as well. No one is safe. Embry safe <laughs> with the way he's playing. Nicholas, can he find a goal? A way back in the tie. It's just always a player in the way. I think he's playing better with the 4-4-2 at the moment. But it leaves a gap on the defence. So you could see Embraer scoring the goal. Pull it. Massive switch of play. Finds Valverde, Emre Yilmaz scores again, game set a match. Falls Kylie back to Hullet. No, it doesn't. The 4-4-2 will now allow Nicholas to just have two options up there in terms of R9 and the Ginola, but now just to interchange a couple of times. Yaya Torre, no way. Fancy the finesse from that far out. Nico needs something. Maybe his fullbacks to go in attack mode? I don't know. Maybe a goal? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a goal, but I don't know. I wouldn't know what to do if I was in Nico's shoes right now. He's back into the team pause again. We can't obviously see all the change we're making, but you can somehow zoom in on whatever device you're watching on. You might be able to see a bit more. Yeah, we cannot see that. Man. What changes he's making. 
Maybe ask for a Pepsi Max. Or two. <laughs> On the flip side, Antonio Rodriguez still leads. Five goals to four in that game. We could be looking at Nicolas Anumit going down to the lower bracket. Keep in mind, there's also some other names in that lower bracket. Goes one's Anders and one Tex. Man. Tomorrow that could be fireworks. Yeah, it's going to be fireworks. It's going to be a crazy day of FIFA. But that's what we like. That's what the Champions League is all about. Emre Yilmaz might have saved the best two-legged performance of his season until now. Oh. I'll tell you what, he's a very brave man. <laughs> it's time to go, Nicholas. Plan A, plan B is not work. Plan C and D, we're working down the list. Firmino, Ginola. Another defender stands in the way from Team Hullet. What about this time? Pull it. R9. Is there a goal? There's a way back in the tie. Finally. For the E-Champions League current. Defending champion. He's been waiting a long time for that one, Graveson, but somehow squeezes it in with R9. Now, now we know what you gotta do to score against Henry. You gotta do a step over, then a fake step over, then a <laughs> three first time passes, then a double. Just let me get my pen a second, Graveson. <laughs> what was that? Try and write that down. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, oh. well, well. Umit equalised, you can see on your screen now. 5-5 five, five in that game. There's a comeback there. Is there a comeback here? It's that seed of doubt, Graveson. I'm sure you've experienced it before, leading in games. Your opponent scores one goal, you know they're pressing for the game, you know they're going to be aggressive. How would you now see out this next 20 minutes? 5-4-1, and pray for the best. <laughs> because in foot champs, they equalise me every single time. <laughs> well, Emre Yilmaz will be doing just that. Yeah. Nicholas on the hunt. We're going to keep both games open for the time being. You can just see the timings of him. It looks as it stands like... Umit against Antonio Rodelgia is going to finish before this one, if there is a full-time result. Obviously, we may be going to extra time in that game. Const Cap Constant press is, is working out for Nico at the moment. Oh. Nicholas. Still no way through. David Alaba. Be careful. Oh, what a Long ball. ball over the top. Emre Yilmaz could conclude the game now. This is perfect. It's even better defended. We have to boss the game. Cadavilla is going to be off the pitch. Maybe Alabasin. We're talking about centre backs. We had Lucio, we had Fofana, we had Marcus. We didn't see that much of Falaba, but he's been well, good. He, I think it's the, the, the recent bump that he's had onto his sort of Champions League foot item. Obviously, I think there's another upgrade to come when Real Madrid confirm their place in the last four. You think by the time you get to June, Graveson, you know, the Champions League final will just be around the corner. Some of the potential players we could be seeing that. Yeah, the thing is, real life, is gonna, Alaba is going to be able to stop Haaland. <laughs> That's a tough question. I mean, Arla <laughs> might get something special as well along the way. Which could make him into a monster. <laughs> we'll see. We shall see indeed. We're into the final ten minutes, by the way. Antonio Redelha against Umit. That's an all-square matchup. This one, 14 minutes left to play. Emre Yilmaz leads Nicholas by three goals to one. He's in an unbelievable position here. So frustrate Nicholas, take time out of the game. And even score another goal. Let's see. Well, there's many FIFA players oh. that create miracles. Is Nicholas about to make one? Alawiran! Well, time in green. What a massive 10 minutes this could be. It's time for the Iceman to show up. And on. 
on this side. It looks like they're off to extra time, or is there late minute drama for Antonio? Redelha, no, there isn't. Extra time needed between these two. 5-5. Five, five. It does mean that we should hopefully catch both endings of the matches. What a game that is between the two Germans. Oh. And what a game this one is! <laughs> if you have to shoot it, do not go anywhere! <sighs> Ten minutes left. Still all to play. And every single time you kind of create a storyline about Nico kind of maybe losing the game, kind of going out. He just does this. Just one goal behind. How many more times can he do it? Can he do it again? Yes, he can. Emre Yumas. Ronaldinho offside. It's all falling to Nicholas now. Has the Iceman still got ice running through those veins for another season? R9, back to Ginola. Alawiran, surely not again. The Saudi Arabian will drive down the byline, will put pressure on Valverde, wins a corner. This is where he needs to be clever. We've seen it before in the Champions League from these exact moments, set pieces. Four minutes left. Are we looking for a 3 3 scoreline? Keep an eye on Hullet there. Towards the front post. Hullet's there in the air. And Emre Yilmaz can counter attack. Has to play this one sensibly. All in a running race against Captain Look at the pace of Captain He's got zero stamina. Or are we just going to see Emre Yilmaz be really sensible here and see this one out? He's got possession. Two minutes left plus additional time. Nicholas will get one more chance if he can just get a foot on the ball. Or is Emre Yuma's going to put this game to bed? He does not need to go forward, go back. Is what anyone watching from Team Hullet will be shouting right now. Clever. Two minutes left to be played. Emre Yilmaz looks as if he's going to his first ever E Champions League Grand Final. And who does he beat on the way there? The current E Champions League winner, Nicholas 99. The Netherlands will have representation in Istanbul as Emre Yilmaz gets the job done. Congratulations to that man and Team Hullet. What can we say? Just GG's. We gotta give it to Emre. He's been playing consistently good. He's been smashing his opponents in the Swiss format, then in the first two rounds of the knockout stage, and then he had to face Nicolas. Really tough game. He managed to keep the possession, 3-2. And he's through to Istanbul. Well, 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 let's jump across in a minute to whatever else is happening in extra time here. Extra time between Antonio Radelha and Umit. 5-5 five, five in extra time, Umit scores. And we're going to join that one live, I believe. Yep. Well, the latest news there, very quickly. Oh. Nicholas down into the lower bracket. Emre Yilmaz, the first player to qualify for the Champions League. Yep. And now we're going to see the ref blowing the whistle, probably. And we'll have 15 more minutes of FIFA. Oh. Penalties? Not again. <laughs> Penalties for a qualification spot. Oh. At the Champions League. What a game this has been, as we said. Two huge German names. A player that has won a world championship, has been to the final eight, been to the final four in the Champions League. I remember being in Stockholm this time last year, seeing in the back room Predator Thief for Umit in tears when they lost in the in the in the finals of the Champions League of how much this tournament means to them. Definitely. On the pedestal of FIFA Esports tournaments, the Champions League is just so high up on there for so many pros. And then a couple of months later, images passing through my eyes of Fer just hugging Umut out of this world after winning PKs to win the World Cup. FIFA. Esports, what can we say? But yeah, 15 more minutes to play. And we've got to concentrate on that. 11 goals so far. <laughs> Keep in mind, by the way, Nicholas is not out of the tournament. He goes down to the lower bracket where he now plays without any second chances. Keep in mind as well, Anders Vergang is in that lower bracket, Tex is in that lower bracket, Nicholas is in that lower bracket. 
big names. 15 minutes all to be played. Constant pressure. Mehmet will be doing everything he can just to take his time. Thanks to back it up Marquez, actually. Oh. He's good keeping the ball, but you've got to be very careful. This is smart. Because I don't think it was constant pressure, I think it was team press. This could be a huge mistake. Oh, no. There it is. Antonio Rodelha, this is your time to shine. Now he's already scored five goals against the current world champion. Why can't I score a sixth? Harry Chiu even comes in off the pitch. I haven't seen him for a while. Alawiran. Yeah, yeah, Torre. Alawiran again. Back to Harry Chiu. The foot here is interchanging so well. Nice defending. Just has to stop him one more time if that. And he's off to the Champions League. This is weird. No constant pressure. This would be a huge mistake on Antonio's behalf. Oh, just calm, isn't it? There's no need to attack. Switch it from side to side. We'll take another goal if it pops up or emerges. Doesn't need to score again. I mean, people are even thinking, go on, score, score again. He doesn't need to. Added time to follow. And it looks as if, isn't it? Or oh. not. Might be on his way to an East Champions League. This is the last chance of the game. Score, we go to penalties. Antonio Rodelha already scored five against the current world champion. One out of six to the tally. Has to be perfect now. Back to our nine! With the last kick of the game. 6-6. Six, six. He only needed one chance. Penalties to the side of spot in this year's E Champions League finals. You won in PKs, no? There you go. Penalty for you. <laughs> what a goal. Speak about pressure. Penalties. Here we go. Win. And you're off to Istanbul for an E-Champions League final. Ronaldinho steps up first. Oh, Panenka down the middle. Ronaldinho again. Maybe a Panenka. Left side, right side. 1-1. One, 1-1. One. One, one. Let me just scores there. Antonio Rodelha of Frankfurt with R9. Two from two. We had middle, we had right. We're going to see right again for R9. No, left side of things. 2 2. Perfect pen so far. E Champions League away to one of these two. Up steps Yaya Torre. He does score as well. We have seen no misses. Maybe Ruth Hullit will be the first to miss. Yes, middle saved. Advantage. Will it be four from four? Saved by Umitz. Needs to score this one. Does David Alaba. Umitz steps up, he does score. Even again. Ale Waran, Antonio. Could be put, yeah. Has to score. Can not miss Umitz. Saeed El Awairan, from his steps up, does score. Sudden death on the cards. Oh, Kiwul, is he going to be able to do it? Saved! Umit, you score! And you're off to an E-Champions League grand final. Up steps Captavia, and Umit makes it two years in a row. A man that could hold his nerves from the spot, no matter the occasion, no matter the tournament. He will be amongst the best eight in Europe at an E-Champions League grand final. <laughs> I, the scenes, man, I love this so much. Just six months ago. Six months ago, we're doing it in a FIFA e World Cup final. <laughs> six months later, ECL qualifying for Istanbul. Oh man, the scenes. Well, well, well. The ground was shaking with her jumping like that. <laughs> Sometimes FIFA Esports tells a story. That game certainly did. 12 goals in it.
and you can see exactly what it means to that man on your screen. He is off to Istanbul. RB Leipzig will have representation there. And you can just see a man that could just, you could just tell in that face, he knows he's there. He knows he's got a chance of lifting the silverware. Yeah, and last last time, he actually lost in the semi-finals and then he lost in the loser bracket. Is he going to be able? He had a second chance this year to make things right. I think he will make it right. Well, 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 if you have just joined us, guess what? We've still got so much more FIFA to be played here today. That's only two spots that are... That are in, set in stone, sorry, for the Champions League. Uh, you might see a plane on your screen. They're just in the corner. That's what those two will be on with Turkish Airlines <laughs> to the e Champions League. Emre uh, Yilmaz is there. He beats Nicholas and an Umit on a penalty shootout. As I said, those players are not out the tournament. They go down to the lower bracket now. You can just see some of the, uh, the shots after what has just happened. Players simply cannot believe what has happened. Um, and I can show you, you might not be here now, but Anders Vergang will be happy for his team. He'll be in the backstage just seeing him at qualify. Definitely, definitely. And we're seeing a lot of big names tomorrow, a lot of potentially big matches as well. Anders is playing in the, the first game of the day tomorrow. And let's not forget, we still got games to be played today. We still got round six of games. Uh, we had... Potentially two more players qualifying for Istanbul in just like a couple matter of minutes. Yeah, in the, ne in the next hour, as you said, Gravison, two more will qualify for, uh, for Istanbul and eight will be eliminated from the tournament. That's it from the commentary booth. We're going to get our breath back after an incredible penalty shootout. Over to Richard and Mike. Oh, I tell you what, this is it's getting a bit intense, isn't it, Mike? You can't write better games. Come on. You got oh. back and forth. We got penalty kicks. You got extra time. You got close affairs. You got Nicholas almost forging a comeback that nobody saw coming. The man was battling, he was a warrior. I just, I can't deal with it. Hold on, hold on. Talk <laughs> we got me. one more round. Talk so we've me. seen the loss of headphones. Yep. We've seen a monitor get slapped. That I chair, it's not chair. gonna work. You can't yeah. sit in that chair, it has to be replaced. I think we need a controller. Uh, the unlikely is the controller hasn't gone downhill yet. Well, this is what they are fighting for. A place on the plane to the top eight, to the finals of the E. Champions League, Emre Yilmaz. We have to talk about Emre Yilmaz. We're going to have time to talk about Emre Yilmaz because he just did something that not many people do. He silenced Nicholas for about a leg and 75 minutes. Nico then with the constant pressure came back into it, but Emre proving he is the real deal. I'm so impressed by Yilmaz, even more so in the second leg where Nicholas starts battling back. He's forging that comeback. But the way that he was able to see out the last 10 minutes or so, which is so difficult, you got that constant press, you got to play with all the experience in the world, and you can tell he's starting to flow finally. It took him a while to get going, but he figured it out. It was too little, too late for Nicholas. You see some of these highlights here. Uh, and I'm just so impressed with Yilmaz, because last year, you got to remember, it was his rookie season. Beautiful green time finish there, steps through. At that point, we're all starting to question. You need to start putting some respect on Emre Yilmaz's name. I don't think I took any of it out. I didn't disrespect the man. This is We're respectful guys here. I, I'm, we're gentlemen. I am very respectful. All right, He's that unbeaten. Not happen. He's unbeaten. The man who potentially is the one to dethrone Emre Yilmaz on this perfect streak. We know who it's going to be. You start it's asking. going to be Umut. Yeah. He's Whoa. got to be there. We got to see Umut's extra time and penalties right here. Mike, <laughs> this was the last kick of the game. This oh, was I'm so impressed with Antonio too. Look at the build up. This is the only time he touched the ball. Remember, Umut was holding the ball. You see the double step over there, a couple scissors. R9 finishes it. You think he's going to carry some of that into penalty kicks? We've seen Umut have a lot of success in penalty kicks over yep. the years. Mentally strong, the reaction, the pop off, the block, the save, the everything, the all this. inclusive package. Give it to me. I said, Dole, Mike had the best pop off. I don't know anymore. I don't know, it's up for debate. Uh, we lost him. I feel sorry for the camera. You were chasing him, chasing him across the venue. I mean, that's what penalties does for you. That is the, the moment when you book your place at the E Champions League final. It doesn't get much better than that. And I've had the pleasure of being in a position where it took me on, and I've also faced, unfortunately, the sorrows of being on the other end. And sometimes you don't recover. But congratulations to both Yomaz and Omid booking their seats, and I, I deservedly so. Yeah, I mean, I mean look, that, that game in particular, Omid now, he moves on, he's mm -hmm. picked up an E World Cup. Could he be the one to pick up this E Champions League? We know he's gonna be there. It hasn't been done. I mean, we will see what happens here, but if you have both the majors, because I consider the E World Cup yep. and then E Champions League, those are the two majors. If you can make that collection, you have that stamp of approval, you can raise your hand, you can talk to all the FIFA gods and say, I'm that guy. I run the show. Two more players. We'll be looking up <laughs> to the FIFA gods saying thank you very much.
Two players will be booking their place. We'll have half the bracket ready for you. Obren, Neat, will be your featured match alongside Brandon Smith and Ryan Pessoa guiding you through. Will it be a Spaniard? Will it be an Italian? Find out after the break. Well then, if you just missed the Champions League, trust me, you don't want to miss this. Myself, Brian Smith and Ryan Pessoa guiding you through our last round of action for today. But guess what? We're back again tomorrow. More places on the line. You had the pleasure of watching that one in the back room. <laughs> yeah. What did you make of what we just saw? Here's the bracket in the lay of the land of what we just saw. We can confirm Emre Yilmaz Umit are both off to the Champions League. Yeah, absolutely perf um, perfect performances from both of those today. I felt as if the, the Emre Yilmaz game, it did finish 3-2. I felt as if he was in control for the large majority of the game. The Umit won, however, 6-6. The last minute goals, the penalty shootout, there was a lot of drama in that game. And of course, the two games we're going to be focusing on. Hezes up against Daniel Seven and Neat representing Ducks and the Spanish community up against Oberon. That's again a massive, massive game. We just keep in mind as well some of the names that have been, uh, obviously have lost games and have dropped down to the lower bracket. Some incredible matches there, penalty shootouts. This is our other game that we will be keeping an eye on now. One of these two will be ticket number three on the plane to Istanbul. And I'm excited for this one as well because Neat is a player that has had an incredible FIFA career, but we haven't seen it outside of Spain, if I'm being brutally honest. He won the Ida Liga on two different occasions. We've seen him in 2v2. We haven't seen great, great deals of him in 2v2. And in 1v1, he's popped up at events, but he hasn't gone really far, if yeah. I'm being brutally honest here, Ryan. But he is a superb FIFA player. He's still so young and achieved so much. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's fair to say he hasn't done it in, the, in terms of the global performances. But amongst the FIFA community, when we speak about Neat, he's one of the best players to play against that we played against. He's honestly unbelievable. Aubrey as well, another one of the players in the Italian community that holds that is held at a high regard as well. And he's someone that I think he, I wouldn't say disrespected, but I think he flies under the radar a little bit. Of course, defeating Anders as well early on today. That was a massive game. So the emotion from Anders. But Oberon, I think, is a fantastic competitor. This game is, is huge, not just for what's at stake, but just the matchup in general. Yeah, well, as we said, that'll be ticket number three for the Champions League. This will be ticket number four. And I think if we're brutally honest, looking at the 32 players, we might not have said these two to have had it done in day one. Maybe in day two, Ryan, yeah. for a lower bracket, but not in day one. And that's just because of, look, the rankings, Hezzers, superb player. We found him during the online era uh, throughout the COVID period. He popped up, won one of the first qualifiers in Europe. 
incredible player, plays for AZ Monza, coached by his teammate and catcher. Or on the flip side, we have Daniel of Hamburg Esports. Look, rank 30, rank 22, both didn't have the best Swiss rounds, Ryan, yeah. but they got the job done. And is anyone other than me speaking about their Swiss rounds right now? No, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. They, they don't care. What matters is now, as you said, what matters is now they've done the job to get to this stage in the bracket. And of course, if I'm being honest, I wouldn't have predicted either of the opponents to, or either of the players to be at this stage. As you said, they could have qualified tomorrow in day two, but day one to get it done this early on is commendable. So, of course, guaranteed there will be one of those progressing into that stage. We seem to have those sort of upsets, though, that fly under the radar. I remember last year with Snakes as well, reaching the top oh, yeah. eight. Yeah, that was a massive, massive call. I don't think anyone would have predicted that. And I think for Daniel Seven, he's performed so, so well. So for him just to perform on the biggest stage of all now up against Hezers would be massive. Well, let's speak about both the individual results that he's to have had on the way here. Obron beating Anders Vergang. Yep. The only player to have beat him in the E Champions League so far. Obviously, we saw how distraught Anders was to have found himself in the lower bracket. But for Obron, was silent all game, was taking all the celebrations. <laughs> yeah. He just stood up at the end. Just <laughs> stood up at the end and gave us a little go. fist bump to say, look, I am buzzing to have won that game. Um, on the opposite side, let's speak about Neat for a little bit more. As we said, he's a two-time Ela Liga champion. He went back-to-back -back in Spain winning the virtual league there. Such a clever FIFA player. So many moments I've seen of him in Spain. Just these really clever goals. Expect skills, expect flair. That's the sort of player he is, isn't he? Absolutely. And the extra passes as well, the little intricacies in and around the area. 61% average possession. That goes to show he's not afraid to keep possession in those key moments. He'll wait until the space opens up, wait until the opportunity arises and doesn't tend to rush his attack. But in my opinion, after playing against him in many practice games he is phenomenal around well, the, the area. opposite side Ryan Obram as I said 72 hours 72 hours ago he played his league finals in the East Serie A got knocked out unfortunately in day one it was a massive shock to the competition but he's used this tournament as a great motivation for him he's yep. come through had some big results and in the back of his mind now, he can forget the Serie A for this time. What a year he had last year. Last year, he was top four in the FIFA E World Cup. He won the Serie A. And, uh, you know, people describe him up until Danny Pitbull winning the recent uh, Serie A as one of the best players in Italy. Absolutely. And that's what I said about him flying under the radar. You just listed some of his accolades. And the fact that people don't associate him as one of the favourites coming into this competition, I think is slightly disrespectful based on what he's accomplished. I think he's one of the best players that we have in the E Champions League and that we have in Europe. And I think there's no better place to show it than the E Champions League. Yeah, well, he's coached by Hollywood, who some will know is a, a very popular content creator, but not just that, a very decent FIFA player as well. Coaches the national team alongside Xseeds uh, Esports players. 20 seconds away we are from getting these matches underway. Our last round of action here at the E Champions League for day one of the tournament who will be joining Umit and Emre Yilmaz on the way to Istanbul. Just a quick word on Emre Yilmaz, by the way. What a player Whew. against Nicholas as well. Just yeah. took the game to him, didn't they? Those first, I'd say, obviously the first leg and then the first 60 or 70 minutes of the second leg were unbelievable. It felt as if every time he attacked, he was going to score. I'm going to put you on the spot here, Brandon. Predictions for both of the games. Oh. What do you think is going to happen? I was going to do that to you, Ryan. But <laughs> yeah, I thought, you see, know I flipped what? you. I got I'm you first. Not, I'm yeah. not a horrible man, I thought. <laughs> but clearly you are. Um, Obram wins this game and on the opposite sides Hezers. okay I'm, I'm gonna i'm actually going this genuinely, is what you say i'm not gonna answer. No, no, the complete opposite to what you're saying i'm gonna say neat and i'm gonna say daniel seven's gonna secure a spot in the next stage well it's good to see you we're supporting isn't it yeah on, yeah, yeah. <laughs> on the commentary booth for this one e champions league qualification matches coming your way we will be focusing our attentions on this one neat of ducks against exceeds obram who will be on their way to an e champions league Takes place on the 7th of June. Two legs of FIFA in front of us right now. What an opportunity it is. And what a run both have had as well. One thing we can guarantee you in this game is goals. Obron, 6-0 win in his first game of play today. Then a 7-6 win against Anders Vergang, in case you missed that one, beating uh, the Danish Fiedom. And on the opposite side for Nita, 4-2 win against Pepe and then beat Levy Finn, six goals to four. Please give us fireworks this game. Please give us goals. Please give us attacking FIFA. There, there has to be goals, though. When is these two associated with any performance in FIFA? As you said, there's always a lot of goals in their games, and I feel as if this is going to be very similar in that sense. I expect a lot of goals. I expect it to be a close game, though, and I, I think that maybe it might be slightly tentative in the first half or, or first leg, but I expect there to be... A lot of fireworks, as you said, as we progress late into the, the last stages of the game. 
Well then, waiting to kick this one off. Let us know as well from where you're watching from your predictions on this game. Who's going to come out on top? Can confirm as well, just some names that have left the tournament for those that might be wondering. I'm Tao out the tournament, the stranger gone. XL Tom, Oli Bolly, Diogo Peixoto, Jose Balahont, Lex the French player and JRG 15, which by my accounts, uh, Ryan, means that there's only one Spaniard player in the tournament and it is neat. Those players might be out, but they'll be praying that they can have some representation of the Champions League. Absolutely, flying the flag high for his nation. Of course, and even if there was a, a loss here, they still have the, the loser bracket. So they have two chances, two bites. Can I just give you this one as well? Tomorrow, Anders Vergang against Dylan Mike in an elimination game of FIFA. Wow. How? <laughs> that wow. Is, that's a big game. That is a very, very big game. Right, anyway. Forget lower bracket for now. That's coming tomorrow. We have... Two more players to send into the Champions League. Obra made with an early start, defended off the line by Wesley Fofana. We hear there's been a goal already. Five minutes in, and it looks like it's gone the way of Hezers. It's a clever first time ball over the top. R9 in a simple running race, puts it past Daniel Seven's goalkeeper. And it's the Italian that has the lead here. He's Neat's first chance to get the ball forward on the flip side. Pull it, back to Yaya Torre. Show us that. Spanish flair, I'm sure we'll see a lot of it, but one in, in the other game, Ryan. It's a big start for Hezes as well. He's got uh, an early goal there against Daniel Seven. See a ball over the top here from Oberyn, trying to push forward, and it wasn't enough just to get over the defender for Neat there. Let's take a look at some of the, the players, though, that they've opted to use. I think, of course, they have three options in terms of icons to use. I think that's sort of a staple throughout the, the team there. You're going to obviously look to use R9, Ronaldo, Rude Hullet. I think the other option is probably out of Ronaldinho and Eusebio, both players using. What's your, what's your opinions on this man on the ball, Bobby Firmino? Does he do enough to get in your team or not? It's a unique choice. We saw Nicholas using him as well. It depends on the position, because a lot of players, if you're using a back five, you could utilise him in a right wing back position, because the right back or right wing back position probably is the weakest spot in the teams. Here's a chance, Neat. Trying to still work the chance. There's been a goal in the other game. We'll give it to you in a second. Roberto Firmino is still in possession. Cuts it back. Great save from Van der Sar. Quickly over to the other game. Hezers has made it 2-0. 17 minutes in. That is how you start a qualification matchup. It's a blistering start there from the Italian. He's got two goals up already in the first 20 minutes against Daniel. That is a massive, massive statement of intent going into this. this what a start. The key thing there for Daniel, just he can't let the game slip away before we've even kicked a ball in the second leg. Capdevilla, Cafu, speaking to Gravison about right-back options. He said Cafu would be his choice. Capdevilla wins it back nicely. Obran, is there a one more pass? Oh, Obran, stop it! Clever, clever FIFA. Perfect, Brendan. It's absolutely perfect there with the, the dribbling around the area, the heel to heel balls around the keeper as well for an open finish. A tight angle, but it does enough to find the back of the net. Such a tight area to manoeuvre him. But back to the point I wanted to make, Ryan, who would be your right back of choice? I'll be honest, it'd probably be Valverde. I think using a, an icon position in right back is, for me, it's not. It's wasted or? I wouldn't say wasted, it obviously depends on the, the player personnel that you have in the rest of the team, but, and it's all personal preference, but I would opt towards using an attacker. As we see build up here from me on the edge, I was going to say, it looked at, like it was an offside run there. Obram, enjoying having the ball on his left hand side. Back to R9, watch the, the far hand side of your screen in case he wanted to bring in. What a tackle that one is! From Obron. Lucio not holding back at all. Been so influential in that battle line for pretty much everyone that's used him. A lot of space on the right side if they're. Oh, no. Punch into the feet of Alawire and he can't connect onto that one. Only so well, but just seems to have an abundance of pace over any fullback that's in the way. Back to Yaya Torre. Little roulette on the ball. Patience is needed by Neat. And that's exactly what we'll have. 
Nice little hill to hill. Chance to break out. Well read. Or oh. not. What a save, Andersar. Lifeline save. That could have been 2-0 to Obron. It still could be. A couple of step overs. Ronaldinho. Great feet. Even better save. How many more times is Van der Sar going to save today, though? That was almost a, a huge mistake there from me. Trying to play it back to the goalkeeper. There wasn't enough power or trajectory behind it. And, of course, enough to bring out the keeper. Just to close the angle down. But just pay attention to the way Obron is, is attacking here. Just triggering the runs constantly. Player locking there to bring players back on side as well. If We have to talk about it, though. Terrible bit of defending, wasn't it? Look at the space here, but a little dink into Ginola there. Is there one more pass? Of course there is! Van der Sar to save the day again. Corner. Cleared away. Believe it or not, right? there's not been one goal. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, there's been two goals in this game. Hezers, do you realise this is a qualification game for the Champions League? It's not... It's not Swiss. 40 minutes in, 4 nil. he leads. Wow, it's a beautiful goal as well. Just quick passing around the area, trying to find the spaces in behind and making the most of those as well. The ball in there. Oh, what a play. Oh, nine, surely. Just that touch. The delay on the heavy touch there from R9. It made Nee make a decision with his goalkeeper and just allowed the shot to open up with R9. Two goals to Neil Obron leads. As you said, just a ball in there, the touch, slightly heavy, but enough just to, to make Neat make a decision. And an easy finish there for Obron. Two goals to the good now. And your prediction, Brandon, is... is... Do you want to change your prediction, <laughs> by the way, on the, uh, on the heads? The heads <laughs> it could be a comeback, you never know. Or do you want to change your prediction on, on both games? No comment. There's still there's time. It's there's time days. in this one. There's, like, there's still a little way to go in this one. The other game, four goals, though, is... What did I say? I said you can't let the game get away from before yeah, you did the first that leg. Early. That's the first half, Ryan. Yeah, that's tough four to nil. take. That is tough. Just in regards to this performance from me, for me, there's just been a, a few too many mistakes at the back. On the flip side of that, I mean, Obron's made it really difficult to work out how he's playing. Player lock. Skill moves, runs are being triggered. Just so much to think about. Yeah. Half time in front of us. Last attack. Is it going to be enough? The through ball, not enough to get in behind the defence of Oldbrin. And he'll play it out for the end of the first half. Two goals to the good for Oldbrin up against Ducks. Knee. It's been a. There hasn't been too many chances for Knee, in my opinion. He's had a couple situations around the area, but it's just nothing penetrating enough to break the defence of Aubryn, and it's been a comfortable first half, I'd, I'd say. Well, he has been a goal-scoring machine, hasn't he? Aubryn averaged around about six goals across the two legs. After a 7-6 win earlier today and a 6-1 win on his first game of the day for Nee. What's got to change? Because he, he hasn't been able to really get forward or he hasn't really been able to test uh, Aubryn so far. Yeah, I think, of course, with Nee, he's, he's here for a reason. He needs to trust his ability, and especially around the area, just to be a bit more calm and composed. Easier said than done, though, of course. But I think Obron's defended pretty well. He hasn't rushed out any defenders, and, of course, that if there has been any space, he's done well just to cut the lanes off himself. We can't confirm the other game. It's just started its second half. Still 4-0 to Hezers against Daniel Seven of Hamburg Esports. Remember, this is qualification FIFA win and you are in the Champions League finals. We're on the 7th of June. Eight of the best players in Europe will travel out to Istanbul for a chance to be crowned a Champions League winner and pick up $75,000 along the way. Next goal is a big one, Ryan. Absolutely. I think it would, of course, if it falls in Neat's favour, it sort of might shift the momentum of the game. But right. it looks as if it's going to fall in Obrin's favour here. That player look for the driven pass across. Just slit. There's a slide tackle there from Neat just to cut that angle across. Obrin's looking dangerous, though, Brandon. Very dangerous every time he gets the ball. 
in the final third. His transition is quick, is perfect. Hello. Well played short. 50 minutes in. Still 2 0 down. Keep in mind as well, if you lose, you're not out. Just down to the lower bracket for the first time. Need to see that creativity, that flair from the two-time Ida Liga champion. Just look at the back five set up here for Bobby. It just seems so it just secure. Just looks like a mess, doesn't it? Yeah. There's not a lot of space to open up. And of course, with the, the back five, having that extra centre-back allows you just to pull a player back or, or even track a run manually. The space there could have led to a pass there to Yaya Torre for neat, but... This could be dangerous. Long ball over the top, lofted into Ronaldinho. Clever idea. Able to find R9. So hard to break down. He's all brown. One thing I'm so impressed by him as well. It's just so calm, isn't it? You never really see him get agitated or on the flip side, really animated. So it gives me these similar tendencies that Nicholas has in his approach. The play in FIFA, this could be bad. That nearly was. Thought it would have been there for a flick on and Ronaldinho would have been at the back post. What has happened here? Have we got a goal back for Daniel? Yes, we do. It's an own goal in the end, it looks to be, but that's 4-1. Hez is still in the lead, but a goal back and a confidence booster for Daniel Ryan. Absolutely. Again, there's still a long way to be played in this leg of FIFA. 20 minutes or so. so maybe if you can get another goal just to, to bring it only to a, a two-goal deficit going into the second leg. Could pay dividends in his performance going into it as well. It sort of allows him to not have to rush. We're still looking in this. A big save. Big, big save there from Daniel Seven. I'm not sure if you move the keeper. Massive save, if he's conceded that, it would have been back to square one. Huge switch of play for Obram. And he has got numbers in the box. Cafu does enough. Too many times like this, Obram is just winning the ball back too easily. Not giving Neat any time to get out of his box. Player, a lot there used. Back to Ginola, he can't do anything. Lucio, again, has been the star, you have to say, along that back line. If he wasn't in the game, who would be there alongside him? It's not many options. Oh, I'll come back to you in a second, Ryan. Hezzers has just made it 5-1. Four goal cushion reinstated. Here's a chance on the other side of the game. No, it isn't. But back to the point. Is there a... Do we need to start leaning on icons, maybe? <laughs> yeah, that could probably be the, the option as we see it. Cross whipped in from deep, looking for the flick on there from Neat. See, his options in attack have been nullified dramatically. Just having that extra centre back in the back five or, or back three helps a lot. And he's sort of resorting to, to have, having to look for the German crosses. We see the triggered run there. Pay attention to Hullet, trying to get into the box. Good step overs. Knee. Oh, that's clever! The best opportunity we've seen for him so far, though, Ryan. What do we say about him? He's a very creative FIFA player in the final third. Has there been another goal in this game? Yes, there has. What a game that has been, by the way. S seven goals. Daniel needed that one just to stay in the tie still, heading into the end of the first leg. Back to this one, uh, Ryan, sorry. Neat against Obron. It's the first time we've been able to see Neat really create something like that. Yep, exactly. He hasn't had too many clear-cut opportunities, and the ones that he has had have come from the balls over the top of the little dinks into the area, whether it's for a knockdown or a direct shot, as we saw there with R9. It wasn't meant to be, but he has a corner. We'll see how effective corners can be this year, whether it's a, a one that's played short to the edge of the box or even whipped in at the near post. We saw Nicholas scoring one earlier on today. Well, well, well. Corner to come in. A couple of words between Hollywood. He said the coach of this team, he's been working alongside a handful of Italian players, but especially Obra, since he's been in part of XCD Esports, the Italian esports organisation. 
Di Natale comes on. So he is a usable for Hero. Do not want to lose possession there. He just delays it to get a couple more. Doug shirts back, back post. Cafu! Second be. time of asking. Back to Ardain wow. and still does not find a way through. You feel like Nia is starting to slowly find his way into this time. It's just falling to the wrong players. Not for Fahana, not Cafu. What a chance. What a terrible touch. Ooh. Just recovered. It's a massive chance. You could almost see it, the attack panning out there with the run from Cafu at the back post. You almost knew the, the whipped in cross was, was coming sooner or later, but it's a good save, the rebound. Again, look at the runs back post. They can use it as a bait, and it's played into feet. On a play. Goal! Be... Offside. Has to be offside. I believe. Offside indeed. Goal did not count. On this game, surely not an eighth goal. Mays live, I believe, as it stands right now. 89 minutes on the clock, Hezers looks to have ended leg one with a very comfortable 3-0 cushion, which could be huge, Ryan, because if he does switch off in the second leg, that could be enough to carry him through. Absolutely, is his performance in the first leg could be enough to, to see him through. If he if he does make a few mistakes, he can rest on his lower slightly, but of course, at this level, you, you never know. You can't count your blessings too much in terms of a three-goal lead could easily turn into two to one in a matter of no time. So even we saw earlier the previous games, in this round between Emre Yilmaz and Nicholas, it, it felt as if it was a, a game that was going to be cruised by Emre Yilmaz. But two late goals from Nicholas, and it, it turned out to be a, a closer game than it should have been. Well, that's one game concluded. Here's another one, as it stands now. It won't just be one Italian, it will be two Italians on their way to Istanbul, which I just want to say very quickly, it just shows the growth of Italian players that have come out of their their scene in the last sort of two FIFAs, I'd say. Yep. And that's helped with the league such as the Serie A. There were six players, Ryan. Six players from Italy that were here in the final 32. That's incredible. I mean, look, that's like nearly hitting German numbers. There were seven yep. Germans in the tournament. Like, it just goes to show just what, what's happened over in Italy in the last sort of 12 months. Yeah, absolutely. It's commendable, as you said. It sort of leans in towards their infrastructure domestically. They have a lot of, of tournaments for their, their players to, to take part in and, and make their name in the scene. A lot of, of repetitions between the players practicing, performing at the highest level. And it goes to show, as you said, a lot of representatives at the biggest tournaments. Of course, these are results from the upper bracket round of eight. We have Hezes 5-2 up against Daniel and Neat down by two against Oban as we go into the second leg. Well, let's have a look at the highlights from that seven goal thriller. I mean, we couldn't believe the scoreline here, Ryan. It's 4-0 at half-time in this game for AC Monza's Hezers. We can see all the goals that he did score. Eusebio actually gets a start for him. I mean, if he's scoring goals, I'm not going to play them. 30 minutes in, that happened. 40 minutes in, this happened. Great feet in the box. Ginola made it four. Then Daniel did score a goal back. Minutes after, Arnon added another one to the tally. And as we saw, that is how the game ended in the way. What I love about this as well, by the way, they're both teammates. Last week, Kanchi was playing in the East Serie A. Yep. It does change when you have a teammate as a coach, doesn't it? Mm -hmm, it because does. you're both pushing for the same thing. Yep, exactly. And he's someone that, that you could just rely on because, of course, they have the, the know-how in terms of how the game's played, the meta. They know how the game works. And obviously, they can provide their input, not just in terms of play style or things that's going on, but, of course, the mental side of things because that is something that does cost a lot of players at the, the highest level. But of course, having someone like a catcher behind you is always a, a great thing to have. Yeah, a player that actually went really far in the, uh, in the Champions League a few years back now. Funny enough, was representing AC Monza at the time. That is our, our second featured matchup. This is the main featured matchup. Neat against Obram. I mean, the, the positive thing here, Ryan, is look, last 15 minutes, Neat started to get a couple of chances. Yeah. Cap had a great chance, Arnold yeah. had a great chance. And as we keep saying, 2 0 not a score and you can't turn around. Absol easy. Absolutely. I think, as we saw, the, the last moments of the, the first half, or oh, sorry, the first leg, we saw that Neat started to buy his time a little bit more, create those chances, and he was creating the, the chances in a similar fashion. So maybe Oberon or his coach behind him could just tell him, all right, we noticed that the chances are coming from those, those triggered runs at the back poles. We need to to manually track it, but that's the difficulty, um, having to try, 
track those runs because you sort of give up the middle of the pitch and the driven pass into the strike is something you have to be cautious about as well. But again, that happens to to feed into the five or the three, four, two, one because you have the extra defenders. Well, 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 both games on the way. 19 game FIFA minutes from finding out spot three and four. The Champions League, who's going to be joining Emre Yilmaz and Umit on the plane to Istanbul. Could it be two Italians, or will there be? Another German or the first Spaniard to make it that far in quite some time. Obron with the first chance of the game, kicking from left to right. Ronaldinho over to Hullet. Lucio wins his battle. First goal's a big one here. But need to find one early. He's the onside. Cafu he is. It's a great run. Is there a comeback available? Cafu got to a point there where he had to make a decision, Ryan. Cut it back or go on your own. Corner. Played all the way back to Alawire, and that's nice on a play. Well done. I mean, that's Lucio. It was coming. It of was all com players, he's been loving the little dink ball. The little dink ball into the runner. It's a case of just trying to find the angle on the header that he's good enough to get past the six foot plus frame of Van der Sar. And there it is there. Yep, just a triggered run there from deep. And of course, it's the centre back Lucio getting in on the end of it to put it into the corner. And as you mentioned, that's been coming. We've seen that a few times in the first leg, maybe two or three at the, towards the end of it. We've seen it twice already in this second leg. And it was only going to be a moment of time before he got that chance, got that goal to get back into the game now. Brings the score line to 2 1 on aggregate. Well, we said the first goal was going to be crucial. What a confidence boost it seemingly has been for Neep. Who has averaged at least four goals or not? Chant up, but is there one more pass? Yes, there was, but Cafu proving his worth as a right back. Just doing enough to get in the way of the ongoing run up. Is this chance alive still? Yes, it is. Yaya Torre. Back to R9. Captavia wins that one well. In hindsight, was Ooh. the shot on there or was it. <sighs> that was a golden chance there. An absolute golden chance. Of course, this game has been going on as well. It's still live right now. 5 2 in favour of Hezes as we, we see a little bit of build-up there from Daniel, trying to trigger the run into the box, but it didn't lead to a chance. In this game, there's still a chance on the edge for Neat as well. Ginola, Elastico off the post! So close for Neat finding an equaliser in that game! You may as well start the booking application form. Hezes lead, six goals to two, a four-goal cushion. And I'll tell you what, we may not have heard from Ezes for a little bit of time now since those online qualifiers, but by God, he's returned, hasn't he? He looks like he's on his way to the e Champions League finals. Indeed, back with a bang from the Italian, showing his ability and why he deserves to be ranked amongst some of the best players in Europe. Some big chances at either end in this game. Off the post on one side. One more pass across the box that was blocked. Pull it. Good save. Ronaldinho. Plays back into the Uruguayan. Or twice, once or twice. Ginola, the idea was that. To pull away from the defender in the end. A very different game, this one. Chance run out. Dino off the one work again at the opposite end. I thought that was going to be a, a goal there from Auburn. Is it the time green just not making a difference there, or is it just really hard luck? I feel as if the goalkeeper movement there from, from me played a factor in that shot as well. Keep an eye on the run that Alawiran's making. Far inside of your screen. Doesn't need to use him, though. Bad pass from Obra. And here comes Neat again. Just 
tips over to a third of the game gone. Seems to be rushed there, that, that charge. Tried to driven it into the, the players in the box. And this could be a counter-attack. Big tackle, Lucio, not only superb at the back, he was a goal scorer. Was the only goal in this leg. Side R9, oh, yes, he is. No, he's not. <laughs> Looking across the board, the Hez is still in the lead in that game. Four goal cushion. Hazy Monsters, FIFA Pro, looks to be sending to the Italian club to the Champions League final stages. I sort of feel like these two players are like, you know, we have the, in FIFA Esports, those big names, Nicholas Tex. What these guys have achieved in the last couple of years, like, they're getting to that pedestal slowly but surely. Here comes another chance from Old Prime. Would you agree in terms of some of the accolades these guys have got? Absolutely. We associate them with the best players in the world. We saw about, well, you spoke about Auburn, his accolades even in the World Cup last year. I thought that was going to lead to a chance there. But as you said, with Neat, domestically, probably the best. Why do you Spanish. think it's not happened yet in Europe? I mean, it could happen here, but, but before this? It's hard to say. I feel as if he's had the opportunities. Maybe it's just about the... the I, I honestly don't know. It's hard to put a finger on what exactly it is, but he's still a fantastic player and he's still got... Even if he does lose this game, he's still got another chance to try and progress into the next stage, into the final eight in Istanbul. We're going to see the last attack here. Here we go, Obram. Back to Ginola, Obron still! Quickest to react in the box! Was David Ginola. And it looks as if the Italian is going into the break of a two goal advantage. It's beautiful dribbling there, a bit fortunate to get possession back, but it makes it count. The arrows are into the near post to make it 3 1. Uh, I think he even apologised. He did, did apologise. A little hand up gesture to the cameras. He knows there was a, an element of luck there, but again, I always say you have to take it. If it comes your way, you need to be be primed be, and be ready to take I think it. I'll be apologising. No, absolutely. If there not. was any Champions League <laughs> ticket on the line, yeah. but it just goes to show what character he is. 45 minutes away from each Champions League final, FIFA in your back pocket. I mean, it's crazy to think that two of the spots already could be going to Italians. Ryan. Yeah, yeah. we still got day two to work with as well but again we've really spoken tons about how the Italians have come leaps and bounds in the scene well absolutely deserve it to be there as well in the other game that one's slowly about to hit half time Neza is still with a four-goal cushion in that one. Daniel did get a goal back for a penalty I just saw in the corner of my eye. Neza is still in the lead there. So close to doing a couple of changes coming in. Neat seems ready to play Obram. Just wants to take his time a little bit more. Here we go. 45 minutes neat. It's not impossible. It's very much possible. The typical part is, Ryan, is how you try and break a back five down. Yeah, that's going to be the, the tricky part, whether... How do you do it? I always say to match it. However, there are some players that, that opt towards using a 4-3-2-1 or maybe a 4-4-2. Say there could have been a chance as well. The amount of triggered runs there from the you can see that he's trying to push the initiative just to try and push bodies forward. But these are the situations that happens if you do that. Ginola play a lot back to our nine. Opera scores again. You gotta say and he's got one foot on the plane. Look at the numbers, the amount of white shirts going forward back to our nine. 
It's liquid football. It's incredible. It's just a quick passing. The triggered runs there. Making the right choices there. Playing it back into one and in at the near post. He could have gone out at the side of the keeper there as well. Well, it's a perfect finish and it gives him the three goal cushion now. Look, it doesn't even come off the floor. Just driven past the keeper there in at the near post. And that is a massive, massive goal. I think that's it. Well, Marby Obron saying. Mariva Vidarci. To knee. As he is 4 1 up. Has Nee got that mental side of the game to try and pull himself out of this as Obron looks for another one? But I'm not sure how. He just like four white shirts there, Ryan, just charged in the box. And as much as he looked manic, he, did you write liquid was the word? Liquid football from Obron. I think that's why I was saying to potentially match the fiber because look at the options they, they have going forward. Despite being so structured in defense, they just seem to, to run back always and provide cover. So it's very difficult to play against this formation if, if you're not matching it, in my opinion, anyway. But there's still time left, 30 minutes to go. And that is not what you want to see if you're a neat fan of your neat himself. Giving away possession there, trying to switch play. A gift to Oberon, just so he can retain possession, recycle a little bit, try and find some gaps opening up. You can see the bodies forward, the gaps opening, because Neat has to push forward now. Team press looks as if it's been activated, and just look at the spaces here. The player lock, it wasn't meant to be that time, but you can just anticipate, right now, there's going to be so many more chances for Oberon, in my opinion, in this game. Dinkton, Cafu, back to I9 again. Firmino wins a free kick. Just wanted to have a little look at potentially who we could be seeing play against two. He run three be decided then. tomorrow. As we have loser bracket round two to kick off tomorrow with first. It's got to be here. Here we go. Obra, you score again. You're off to Istanbul towards the back post. Keepers, Mavisar's very brave. Cafu's on the floor again. Camp to be another big win. You can understand that he's got to go for the game, but there's gaps that are going to appear. Power shots! And Italy will be in Istanbul. As you just saw a little smile there, you might not have seen it at home. But you just saw Obram look straight across to Hezers, his fellow Italian, and they just caught a smile together because they know that they will both be on the plane. Istanbul will welcome two more FIFA players. And the list as it stands right now, Umit, Emre, Yilmaz, Obram, and Hezers. What a fall that is. It's incredible. To say that we haven't even... We have, we're not even talking about Tex. Yeah, exactly, Andrews. I was just about to say, they haven't, they haven't even, even qualified it. They've got tomorrow to try and progress into the next stage. We've already got four fantastic players securing their spot into the next stage, the final eight. It's a great finish as well there with the, the power shot. You have to remember that shot is manual, so he's aimed that perfectly into the corner. It's a perfect way to, to seal his fate into the next stage. Look at the space, the passing as well. Another one, Obram. Maybe not like that. I mean, <laughs> like... you, you can do that if you want. <laughs> yeah. I think what's so key now is for these players, Ryan, they don't play FIFA now, straight after the ones that have just lost I'm talking about. Yeah. They get to go home to the hotel tonight, Re reflect, review, and then wait for tomorrow to find out who on earth I'm playing through the loser bracket. Yeah, exactly. I think that's a key thing. Of course, for them, they don't necessarily know who they're playing straight away because there's still matches beforehand that need to be played. Keepers come out, the chip, the easy finish there is 6-1 for Oberyn. This is a massive statement here. A huge, huge statement. We saw earlier that the games to, to solidify the top eight between Umut and Rodeo, that was sealed on penalties. Nicholas 
against Emma Yilmaz. That was 3-2. This game, or both games we see with the Italians, it's been dominant performances. As we said in commentary, it just goes to show the importance and the investment of partnered Global Series leagues, such as the Champions League, such as in East Syria. The leaps and bounds that Italy have gone through, the names from the days of Tanuzo to Dagnolf to nowadays of Danny Pitbull, Obram, Ezers, the list goes on. It gets from bad to worse, unfortunately, for the side of Nee. He'll just be saying, get this game done, get me back to the hotel, and I'll see you tomorrow. However, in this game, Hezzers wants one more. 8-3. These Italians do not mess about, do they? Yeah, they don't let up at all. Despite the game being a foregone conclusion, they're still pushing on a product to try and score. That's a green time free kick there. Just jumped. A good, good jump from the wall there to, to put it behind for a corner. Well, we're going to see the conclusion of Hezzers first. We'll get the reaction there. Obron, another one! Yeah, go on then. Every game he's played in the knockouts, Ryan. 6 1, 7 6, 7 1. Goals. Yep. Goals, goals, goals. As you can see in the right hand side of your screen, Daniel knows from Hamburg it's back to the drawing board tomorrow in the lower bracket. A quick word on Hezzers. Phenomenal. A huge congratulations to him as well. As we mentioned, I wouldn't say he would have been one of the players where you would assume he would have guaranteed his spot on day one, but he's done it nonetheless, and he's deservedly done it as well in resounding fashion up against Daniel Seven. It's a huge victory for the Italian, and yeah, he'll be playing his fellow Italian, Obren, in Istanbul. Massive. Hezzers, congratulations. E Champions League finals, you will be there, my friends. And as he looks across the stage, that smile will be even bigger because he realises there's another Italian that will be sitting next to him on that flight. Obram, superb last season. An Italian champion, a top four in the biggest tournament of all. The furthest he's ever been in the Champions League final. Top eight guaranteed. Last year, it was all about German players in the Champions League finals. This year, it seems to be about Italians, as we can see so far. It's been a, a, a comfortable display here from Auburn. You have to give credit. He's made Neat look ordinary, which is definitely not an easy thing to do here because Neat is one of the best players in Europe. But it will be Auburn securing himself in the top four of the E Champions League in the winner's bracket. The first four players we have confirmed now in Istanbul, and it's a massive, massive victory. Well, there we have it. Congratulations, Auburn. After a disappointing week, losing in his national tournament, he will be very happy tonight back in that hotel. A massive congratulations to become four for the Champions League finals tomorrow from the commentary booth. We'll be finding four more of those names. There's the reaction we want to see. Obron, congratulations. Hezzers, congratulations. From myself, Brandon Smith, from Ryan Pessoa, it's back over to Richard and the guys to break down what we've seen today. Brandon and Ryan, great stuff. We've got our four finalists from the top four of the bracket. And you are joining us right now to break it all down on the Pepsi Max post show. This is the top eight bracket as it currently stands for Istanbul. Graveson, talk me through. Emre Yilmaz versus Umit and obviously Hezers versus Obren. Two Italians out of the four. That's crazy. Uh, we, we talked about Italians back in the days, how were the how they were a kind of a weak nation, FIFA talking. Now they are one of the powerhouses. But obviously we have Germans as well, and we have Emre, which has been smashing the scene. I, I would say maybe half these names are a surprise to you, and a couple guys making moves. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And we've got our four players also to find from the losers bracket, which will be taking place tomorrow. I'm very much looking forward to seeing how that starts to shape up. Well, fellas, we've had a great day mm -hmm. of FIFA Esports action, and it is right now a right time for ECL Showtime. This is where we give out a few awards here on the Pepsi Max post show. First things first, FIFA, it's all about goals, mm -hmm. chaps. I, I can't understate how important it is to be a big top goal scorer. And uh, it's just so many great opportunities, in all honesty, for all our players. Um, Talk me through some of the, the best moments from the day here, Mike. 
We've seen some of the skills, the intricacies, a variety of types of players as well. Ball roll and Van der Sar is nowhere to be found. Makes me happy, makes you smile. We had uproar, we had reaction. We've got Dino working, looking for an angle, finds an angle. Best side is the right side. You see the corner, it's converting. Yeah, it certainly is. Step over, screenshots. That's what we like to see. That's what you like to see. Uh, and I like those replays, you know, they're using a little bit of that hyper action. Looks good. <laughs> well, it's time to find out who scored the best mm -hmm. goals and who scored the most amount of goals today because we do welcome the top scorer award presented by FedEx. Any guesses for who you think it might be the top goal scorer, Grav, Mike? Heathers. Heathers. I feel like he knows the answer. I'm going to go Yilmaz, <laughs> but he knew that it was too quick. And there we have the top goal scorer, Oberyn. Heathers were fifth. Uh, 20 goals today, Oberyn did register. <laughs> the top goal scorer award presented by FedEx. No Tex in the top 10, Mike. He played less games. Yeah. He did. I'm, I'm yeah. doing the math here. I'm a logical guy. Yeah, Obron played three games, 20 goals. That's crazy. Out of this world. 20 goals. Versus I mean, the best players in the world. Playing 5 4 1. That's crazy. I mean, when you. I expected it to be Emery Ilmaz. I'll be honest. I feel like all his games were just blowing people out, and that just goes to show the quality of Obron registering 20, Mike. And, and like we said, the same, the shift with the Italians, I think, is what's so, so impressive. And everyone in the community being involved plays a big factor from the creators to the fans to the pro players to the streamers. Everybody is involved in that adventure or that journey of seeing Italy go from miss or less represented to one of the main nations. Well, Obron was the top goal scorer during the ECL knockout. Who scored the best mm. goal? That is the question that we will next find out. This award presented by Oppo, and it is for the goal of the day. Mike? Oh, give it to me. I know what's coming here. The oh, best pop-up of the day for me and the, the goal that decided the game. It was a definite winner. Who else? We're talking Peter Crouch from Ronaldinho. <laughs> you see this whipped in. Header, knock, pop-off. 92nd minute. It was GG. And it sets up a match for tomorrow where we're going to see the likes of Dolan Mike going up against Berge. Crouch, your goal of the day as well? Yeah, sin duda, cabezazo. That's a, that's a great header. But yeah, I'm happy with you learning some Spanish as well. But the but celebration yeah, of the, the day celebration, as well. the slap yeah. of the monitor. <laughs> it, it was everything, the search, I don't know. Yeah, what a moment. Dylan Mike once again proving that he can do it time and time again, Mike. Silencio. Ah. <laughs> I passed the Spanish lesson today, yeah. I'm just saying. Oh, my Spanish is getting a little bit better. Uh, <laughs> right now, time for the best player of the day, <laughs> presented by PlayStation. <laughs> There's only one man for this player of the day, and it is the man unbeaten throughout the entirety of the ECL so far, Emre Yilmaz. Put some respect on his name, Graveson. Definitely, 5-0 in the Swiss format, then playing against Dylan Mike, playing against Nicolas, and he just dominated every single game. Even against Nicolas, it was 3-2, a tight game, but I don't know, it feels like he managed everything. I don't know, I think he's our deserved player of the day, and I think if he keeps it up, he might be potentially the player to watch in the finals. Is he the favorite for the ECL knockouts? We've got four players to left to go Emre. in the he's finals. Is he the man to beat? It's hard to go against Omit. I just feel that way because he's the current reigning champion. I don't want to take that away from his plate. He earned that. He gets the pressure. He's been performing with the pressure. I would still say Omit's the guy to watch at the moment. Well, I can't wait to see who else will make it from the lower bracket. That's where we're going to be finding out tomorrow. Oh. It's starting to take shape. There's still a lot of games left to be played. Make sure you tune in tomorrow. There's some huge names still to find their place at the E Champions League finals, Graveson. Definitely. We're going to be watching, as Mike said, the Bergen against Dulin Mike, first game of the day, where we see many games. Uh, Levy against Danny Pitbull. We see Keturdila against Van Basten. We see Nixnev, Rafsu, Tex. Montaxer, Marwan, Kamal, Gio, Bundi, Pepe, Stingray, and Danny Visser. But then, if you go two rounds forward, you have as well Nicolas, <laughs> Antonio Ravelja, you have as well Nit, and you have Daniel Seven. So many big names and many games to play. I'm just seeing, we've got a potential Nicholas versus Anders Vergang tomorrow. It is going to be electric. Make sure you come back. Same time, same place tomorrow. The E Champions League knockouts continue. We'll see you then.